Okay, here is what it uses by default. Um, I've never actually looked at the default linker script. This is actually kind of cool. Sections. Our data. How is text showing up after? Clang. How does RO data end up before text? Oh, this is RO data segment. <sighs> God damn it, really? Does nobody care about, like, having a fucking section show up and just randomly get whacked into your file? Is that, so like, not something people care about? Like, no one thought maybe I'm a I should be a little bit worried if a new section randomly shows up in my file? No one fucking cares? No one cares that when you specify something, it goes to a default section before where you specified it? It's ridiculous. How the fuck do computers even work? Like literally, look look at my look at my fucking LD script. I say I I want the start of the shit here, put the text section here, and then it's like, "Oh, you know what? I found an RO data thing. You know what? I'm going to put RO data I'm just going to put it before your text section." Fuck it. I don't care. I'll just I'll just put it before. Even though even though you explicitly said, "Hello, please put the text section first. You know what? I got something new. I don't know what to do with it. I guess I'll just put it in front of everything." Like why the fuck? Like how would it not default to putting sections after that? Why would it why would it put it before the only thing that I explicitly specified? In fact, I said I want I want my text section or maybe this is not how this works. Maybe this literally isn't how this works. Is this the wild card? Can you put a wild card trash pile at the end? Well, I tried that. And then that got really pissy. Let me see if I can get the section address. Um, that. Text align that. If you want to align it to a 10 byte boundary, blah, 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 you could do something like this. Can I just literally specify the address? Maybe I'm just doing linker scripts wrong. Um... Okay. Okay. Jesus. I'm just trying to make this strict. Do the okay, so this is saying, "Hello, I would like the start of the section to be here." And there's a semicolon for some reason. And then here I'm going to say, "I want the text section to be here." 
Okay, apparently, um... Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem, buddy. That... That's exactly what I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> you piece of shit fucking script. Oh, you know what? Now I can put RO data afterwards because if a new section shows up, it will overlap and I'll get an error. This will make sure the text section ends up at that specific fucking location. Now I can do this. The dot is the address pointer. But like, if I do this, if I do this, then I'm going to have a big gap in my program. Nope. Nope. It's just putting RO data right at text, apparently. It just doesn't give a shit. Uh, so now, luckily, we can do this. We can put RO data here, and text will be at the start of the section. If, if anything overlaps with it, we'll get an error. Right? So if we end up making some data, um, int foobar is 5. Which will maybe make a data section thing, extern. Oops. Um, I mean, it's already extern, but no one uses it. And since we're building a binary. Okay, so foobar. And then that gets... Con oh, wait, there's a data section. And the data section showed up, but it didn't overlap, so it didn't matter. And then that ended up... Here's the data section. Five. We did it. We did it. Okay. It all makes sense now. We, we explicitly said, I want this at this location, which is at the start. And then if it can't honor it, then we have to manually specify sections. I'm happy with this. Um, okay. So then here's the code. XOR, compare, set zero. And then I... I'm no mathematician, but I do believe that this is potentially more complex than just doing a fucking branch. Can you remove the first line? Only have text and RO data? Well, that wouldn't set the beginning part of the section, so then I wouldn't have an anchor for text. Um, I'm surprised the compiler thinks, like, what's it doing? So, it did this, then it does the compare, and then it decides to do both of these at the same time. But you said an address for text? Well, I don't set the address for um, the base of the section, so something could potentially go before text in that situation. Because they could put RO data at 9,000. And I think we tried that, and I think they literally put RO data at zero. And then there's a shit ton of padding. What is this doing? This moves the conditioned code into here. Then shuffles. Shift left this does a sign extension it then shuffles then moves this in i think this is literally trying to put the 17 in place and fill in the exit code and the exit info all of these at the same time <laughs> i think that's actually what it's doing This fall through goes to C, which returns, and this one goes to 10, which returns. Is that really the fastest thing you can do? I mean, arguably, there's no branch here, so there's no polluting of conditionals. Mm. 
this feels pretty uh, sophisticated. Let's uh, let's let's add some add some jazz here, and let's say um, uh, March is native. Oh, AVX baby, AVX five twelve. It's using K masks. Oh, that's clean. Oh, it's doing a conditional branch. Wait, why is it doing a con now? It's doing a conditional branch. Um, compare that. So it compares with four first. Whoa! So it compares the result. Moves AL three. Okay, well that's fucking fancy. <laughs> that, that is fancy. <laughs> Thanks, Anonymous Cheer, with the with the ghost biddy. Yeah, that's pretty fucking fun. I'm all about that. I'm all about that. Holy shit. Dude, this is dope. Move AL3. Is that going to make it so it can turn this into a 17 fast? I I mean, I tr I trust that this is correct. That's some advanced shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say that my handwritten uh, assembly generation is not going to produce this code. <laughs> Holy fuck! Why do you have to remove the other sections and put text at the start of the compiled binary? That way, this binary, this text binary file. At literally at offset zero in the file, the first byte is the entry point of the program. Because if it weren't, I wouldn't know where to jump into the file. Because I'm not using an elf. This is a raw binary file. There's no header or information telling you where sections or entry points are. So it's very important that this tells me exactly. Um, it, it's important that this tells me exactly where. Uh, or I know exactly where to start execution, and I prefer it at zero. So now in this case, when it does this AVX shit, um, I can just include this, and this is my JIT code, right? I put this in my JIT, and then I JIT a new thing. I lift a new function. I JIT it. I then append that to the JIT buffer, and everything can just be wherever it is in the code. Okay. Um, okay, so that's looking pretty solid, so then I could go and, let's see, I guess, are we ready? Are we confident we know what we want to do? Are we confident we know how to make everything here? Uh, okay, the only hard part is we don't know... Oh, well, if we lift an instruction, if we ever make a go-to, anytime we make a go-to, we add the location of the go-to to the queue, and then we stop when the queue is empty. I think that's how we do this, right? So basically, we lift an instruction, we then put a go-to to the next instruction, and then we also add that to the queue. And then we go on, so on and so forth. And then, obviously, if something was already in the queue, we'll have a set of things already lifted. And then that way, we'll generate a function. So you're using a C compiler as a JIT compiler? <laughs> Is doing that and emitting C code easier than use, uh, linking LLVM? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I don't understand why people think LLVM IR is so fucking easy to work with. It's an absolute mess. It's a terrible terrible IR. Great optimizations, but the IR is an absolute pain in the ass to work with. It's really fucking convoluted. Okay. Because of fear or something, just everything. Just the fact that it's a superset of all architectures. 
it's not an IR in the way that most ILs are, where it's a subset of architectures, and it will expand to the architecture if needed. It's a it's a superset. There's literally like all the vector instructions and all the fancy shit. It's it's so 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 fucking complex. I don't think you have to use those to get a lot of the optimizations, but I would rather just write the C code and then have something that I can read and modify than something that's pretty much hard to work with except for generating it. Okay, so we need to make an exit code definition that's going to be identical between here. Uh, and I think everything here is fine. We're going to have that indirect jump pump sitting outside the code base. So I don't think we have any... I don't think we're going to have any assembly anymore. And if we have no assembly, that means our JIT will work on any architecture, which will be pretty fucking cool. Gotta say. So we do need the... Oh, we don't need the address of the jump table anymore. We literally just need the reg structure. Uh, and more specifically, we'll call this state... And we'll have uh, memory accessors in here. Okay. You guys ready? I think it's time. I think it's time. We're going to go grab the... Um, we're going to grab the emulator. Um, VSP source main. All right, how fast is this going to be? How fast is this JIT code going to be? Um, is it even going to work? Is there something in here that's fundamentally going to make this not work? Or is it going to produce too much JITs? Or are we going to lift too much code? Um... Okay. This is going to be cool. I'm fucking excited. I'm really excited. I might, if this works well, I might do this for vectorized emulation because this will get me some crazy fucking optimizations that I'll never be able to write. Like, I could write them, but I'll never have the time to really make good optimization passes. I should technically use LVMIR for something more complex, but I, I like how accessible this is. That means a lot to me. It really does. Um... Okay, test JIT. This is going to be this run emu, and we're doing it live. Test JIT. No corpus. We need nothing else other than this. Come on, Vim. You're really struggling with me today. Um, get the current PC. Check the alignment. Read the instructions. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, let mute queued is equal to a um, vec deck. And then let mute uh, visited is equal to a B tree set new. And we'll pull in B tree set and vec deck. Okay, so then we will do while queued dot len is greater than zero. Um, while let um sum PC is equal to queued dot pop. Um, okay, and then queued dot push PC as you size. And insert it into the queue. I fucking love, like, queues and graphs. I don't know, man. It's, it's like, really fun stuff for me. Uh, check alignment. So we pop a PC. PC's already a U size. Fuck it. Vertiger it. Let's go aggro here. Let's just have it already be a vert address. 
Um. Okay. Read the instruction at PC with execute permissions. So attempt to read it for execution. Print executing this. Um, we have no concept of the next instruction. So we just, uh, we're going to say lifting this. And we can cache like the per instruction stuff if we really want to. Update code coverage. We'll worry about that later. Load upper immediate. Okay. So memory. We need to comment all of these out temporarily such that we can run this. Have it chug through stuff. This is just so we can get it to build. And then... Um, we'll have the unreachable stuff. Um, okay, uh, what are we doing? We don't want a concept of next inst. We don't have one anymore. Um, next inst. Okay. This should now run ish okay 2068 push back and then this is pop front yes 2516 Okay, two and six, seven. We can figure those out later. We'll probably end up combining these into a better, uh, better setup. Two, one, one, four. I just want to get this to build. U64, 2096. Okay, and then here we'll do visited.insert um, assert. Visited.insert assert that we're the first person inserting this. Whoa. Duplicate. Um, queued PC. I think we're going to handle the duplication at the uh, queuing stage because the queuing stage actually needs to know that the other thing is there. So it shouldn't end up, we shouldn't end up ever pushing anything onto the queue when we don't need it. Build it release. And let's see what we got. Exec fault vert adder zero. That's true. We haven't set PC yet. Okay, lifting 100 cc, or 100 cc. Okay, so we're gonna make uh, let mute program is uh, string new program plus equals this shit, and here um sp test dot c. So we need to define the registers, I guess, will just be numbers. Honestly, I kind of like having the registers not be numbers, um, but I think we're going to have to do it. Okay, so we'll have include standard int.h. Then we have registers, uh, and this is actually going to be state, and we'll have regs. 33, and that is going to correspond directly to, well, we'll end up making a Rust structure where we put all of our registers, um, and I think 
Yeah, so here we have registers. So we're basically going to put everything in something that can be shared directly between Rust and this uh, C code. So regs 33, that's compatible with our current representation. Um, and then we will have a pointer to memory, which will be a uint 8t pointer to memory. We'll have a size t memory len. We'll have a pointer to permissions. Okay. What else do we pass to our JIT? We don't need the jump table because we actually handle that all in Rust now. So um, source emulator. We're going to use this as reference. Do the coding on that side. Uh, oh, eSource JIT cache. This is where we define our calling convention for the JIT. Um, memory and permissions. We'll definitely want those. Um, come on, Vim. Come on, Vim. Come on. Why do you do this shit? Vim, stop. Uh, you int 8t dirty bitmap um and i can maybe mark this no alias or something uh dirty bitmap and then u int 64t dirty Pointer to memory, pointer to permissions, memory length, a, the dirty list, which is unit pointer t, if we want to be more exact. Because it'd be kind of cool to see this working on 32-bit, too. Uh, memory len, the dirty pointer, or a list of the dirty things. And then the dirty index, which is a uint pointer, a size t, dirty index. We'll put this next to dirty. Then we have registers, which are baked in. And we have base of JIT cache blocks, which we don't need, and instructions executed. We'll do that later. So now we produce this program. We write this string. And then we do standard fs write um, program.c uh, program. Expect failed to write program. Okay. That should work. Now let's just have it build it. Um, command new clang 10 args. Um, honestly, it's pretty much everything in the make file. Just yoink this quick. Yeah, we'll just use clang plus plus args optimize for locally because you're not sharing this file, so we have no need to not optimize locally. Disable unused label errors. Warn as error because I like that. Fucking be loud. Um, Program.cpp. And we can probably do this in a cleaner way, like this. Test.o, c, test app, dot, status. Um, assert this. I think I need to put a little question mark on one of these. Expect failed to launch um, Clang++. Plus plus. And then dot success is the assertion. Uh, we'll just do let res is equal to this. 
and then assert res.success, uh, uh, client plus returned error. Okay, and then just close one of these, and I think this will be like pretty damn close. Did that succeed? That succeeds? Okay. Uh, so this is write out the test program. And yeah, this is program. Yep, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I was expecting that we'd get a uh, size T error. Thank you. Yep. Size T comes from which library? Uh, I don't think it's standard lib. It's not types, is it? Standard def. Yeah, it might be. I think it's standard def. Well, standard lib gets you it. Let's see if standard def does, because it's lighter weight. Yeah, standard def gets you it. Thank you. Okay. So now, that's building. Uh, create the object file. And we'll have temporary names for all these things in a bit. We just don't need them yet. Um... Then link the uh, program with the custom linker script. Honestly, I can just do everything in one go here. Create the binary, and then here, that's output, that's program, and then here we can do um, wltldscript.txt. And then this will output um, test. Static. So static, and then use this LD script. And I'm pretty sure that works. I can just go directly to it. Linker input unused. Oh, yeah, I don't want dash C now. ldscript.txt uh, There's a space out front. TLD script. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, is that why we weren't doing it in one line? Let's see if freestanding gives us what we need. No. Shouldn't F freestanding be getting us what we need? Um. No standard lib. No start files. Do not use standards. Are used normally unless that, that, or that is used. I thought freestanding was the, the good one. But apparently not. Like, I've used freestanding before, and I've had no problems. Do not use the standard startup files or libraries when linking. This is don't use the standard startup files. Do not use the C library. Okay, so this is the this is the fuck off flag. Nice. Yes. Okay. What does F freestanding do then? Because that's what I'm pretty sure I've used before. Not to assume standard functions have their usual definition. Okay. I'm all for it. I think it's just more correct. So no standard lib, F freestanding. Bam. Okay, so now... Um, now we want to, 
uh, create the binary, or this is going to be um, create the elf, and then convert the elf to a binary. And then this we'll do command new obj copy big O binary test to test.bin. Expect failed to um, launch obj copy. Assert res.success obj copy returned error. Uh, dot status. Come on. Nice. Now that means we have a test dot bin. Okay, let me clean some of this stuff up. Good dot text. Move LD script to uh, LD script dot LD. That way I can do this because I do this a lot. Um, test, test.a, test.bin, test.cpp, test.o, test.rs, test.so. The last, uh, we've been doing a lot of testing today. Get rid of moose, a.out, program, make file. Okay. That's looking cleaner. And then change this to ldscript.ld. Because I do remove text a lot. Star.text. And I wouldn't like to lose that. Do you use source control? Yeah, I do. I use git. Nice. Nice. So now we should have a test.bin, 36 bytes. Um, why is it 36 bytes? The fuck is in there? Notes. Okay. WL... GC sections. Can that fix that problem? Note build ID. There's a load section here. Is that 7F Elf? No. What the fuck is that? What is this shit? Hey, Milo, how are you doing today? What is this shit? It's the build ID. Um, this person's doing, like, exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Nice! Nice! It has nothing! Yes! That's what I want to see! <sighs> Fuck yeah. Um, int, or er, void, start, uh struct state state open curly brace okay now this will fail to build and then at the end here program plus equals close 
close the uh, function scope. This should build. Yes, it does. And object dump. Okay, what's the GNU property? The fuck are these notes, man? The fuck is this shit? I don't want any of these notes. Why do I keep getting stuff? Um... Strip that. Well, we'll just pass this flag to obj copy then. Get the fuck out of here. I'm hoping I can do an equals. I like how that looks more. Get out of here. Test.bin, zero bytes. Fantastic. That's what I like to see. Um, actually, it's kind of not what I want to see. I want to see at least a ret. X turn C, void start. What? Um, how do I get that to, um, let's try this. I wanted to complain that it didn't find a start section. Oh, there it is. I need it. I didn't want the underscore. Yeah, here we go. So now that I don't have an underscore, now we have a test.bin, and that should just be a C3, which is a ret. Sweet. So if we were to generate this code, which is an empty function, the JIT for it would be a C3, which is just a ret. Fantastic. Okay, so now um, create the instruction start label. And then here we'll do a program plus equals format uh, inst underscore 018x colon newline um, pc dot zero. So now we have labels in our program. With just one. Ooh. Um, 016x, can I not have a label with nothing? Or is it because it's not indented in? I don't think indents ever matter. Um, I guess it's because I have nothing after it. Which is probably not that big of a deal. Um, program plus equals, um, let's just make up a fake thing. State reg zero is five. I think you just can't have a label that's empty uh, regs. Eh, regs. Um, oh, 
Okay, so that now works. Looks great. What a great program. Okay, now what I want to do is, I guess, start implementing instructions? Question mark. Uh, do we just assume that this is going to work and it's going to be fine and there's going to be no bugs and it's just going to be perfect? Um, okay, LUI program plus equals. Um, see you around, Philip. Glad you had fun. So in RISC-V assembly syntax, an LI, uh, load immediate, is basically an add I that uses the zero register for the source. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's an alias instruction or like pseudo instruction. Format. Um, and then how do I want to handle the zero register? How do I want to handle that? With the zero register, I need it to sync zeros or source. Uh, it needs to sync. It needs to act as dev null when I write to it, and it needs to be uh, zeros when I read from it. Um, Um, I could just write to the zero register. Well, I'd like to write to a local. Maybe I'll just make a zero register um, locally. Reset it to zero after every instruction. I wonder if that would get optimized out. Um, I think it would, but I'm curious if it would in all cases. And I think it would. Because it would provably be zero every time you use it. I could literally, like, the first thing I do is set state zero. But I think it's a little risky. I think I might just make a zero register on the stack. Um, and then I can set that equal to zero. And then I would just write zero to it every time. And then this one would get optimized out in all situations. Why do you even need to generate a dead write? Just to make the code generation easier. Um... I mean, I can make a setter. I can do the same thing I did in my JIT, and I can have a, a getter and a setter. It's probably the easiest way, but it's super YOLO. That is very YOLO, and I'm glad I'm glad you contributed your YOLO ideas, because I fucking love YOLO ideas. Um, but we're going to do it this way. Um... How are we going to do this? Going to make like a sign reg? Can you do... You can't do register shadowing in C++, can you? Or not register shadow, uh Variable shadowing. Not in the same scope. You can in, in different scopes. Because I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to do temporaries. Um, maybe I should just put every instruction in its own scope. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how I want to structure things. How do I want to... 
like, how do I want to set a register? Well, to set a, a register, I need to give it an expression. And to do that, I would need to, like, put it in a temporary and then write it. But I can do that. So I could make a macro rule set reg, and then it would emit C code that would set the reg from an expression. Right? So I could have this, where this would be set reg. And this would take a register. And then an expression. This is a C expression. You can use macros and expressions now. That's procedural macros, right? Could you not use normal? You could use normal macros and expressions before, couldn't you? You definitely could. Could you not? Uh, maybe I've never tried it. Um, maybe I tried it and I just got rid of it from my uh, reper repertoire. Um, program plus equals ref format. And this will be if reg is not equal to register zero. If it's not the zero register, then we will create uh, reg will be equal to this equals, should I just make this a scope? No, it doesn't matter. This will just be the expression. I'm going to try and keep things tabbed in, but that might be hard. I might forget. Um, reg as u size, and then expression. So I'll take a C++ expression. Uh, so this way, if we do a set reg, register 0, uh, write a 5 to it, and then in this case, we'll write a, we can do strings here too for expressions, which is kind of dank, um, 5 plus 32, and we'll write this to uh, the return address. And this should be code. Oops, self. What the fuck did I do self for? Oh, format. Where? Oh, because I was starting to work on that. Uh, whoops, and this is state regs. And can I mark that no alias? Put a semicolon afterwards. Yep. Now we're making C code. So now, when we write, yep, when we write to the zero register, it just doesn't even show up. It just completely eats the line. And then we'll do a get reg. Um, expr reg. If reg is equal to zero, else program plus equals ref formats and then in this case we'll take a, a reg or an x um, the expression will be set equal to a zero otherwise the expert will be equal to state regs Okay, so then let's try those out. Let's try um, get reg. I think I can do autos, can I, in C++ now? Auto temp is equal to uh, auto temp, and then we'll set it equal to register zero. So that will set that to zero. And then if I do this again, this should fail because this is shadowing. But I'd really like to see if this works. Yeah, redefinition. But we can do auto temp2. That'll be nice. Unused variable. You have a fair point. Is that going to cause me optimization problems? Um, one, two, three, four. This is Vim, yes. 
We might have a lot of unused variables. I might have to turn that warning off. It's useful to have, but there's a good chance that we just overgenerate things and we end up pruning them. But okay, here we go. So, yep. Set that and then this. I'm going to just do I'm going to add this quick. I just want it to build, but I might want to remove that because I'm a little bit scared. Because unused variable warnings can sometimes help you detect that you fucked something up pretty bad. Um, this is just going to be a ret, isn't it? No. It's going to write a register, but that's it. It's going to assign a register 37 and ret. So it will be a move. Okay. Yeah. There it is. It just stores that to a register. These get cons propped out. Or these get DCE'd out, which is nice to see. So that's looking really fucking good. That's looking really good. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to temporarily turn off the unused variable because I do want that to yell at me if I don't use a variable because... Sometimes that catches when I fat finger or typo something and just literally don't use a result or assign a result to a register. So stuff like that can be nice. So now we have getters and setters for registers. They operate on expressions that can be strings or whatever the fuck you want them to be. So LUI, this is our first instruction. This is our first instruction, guys. Program. Oh, this is easy. Um, set reg. Um, inst.rd, and then we'll assign it inst.im as i64 as u64. Um, yep, sign extended out, and then write it. And then awe pc. This one, we will take pc, um, let val is equal to this, so we'll take the immediate... We'll sign extend it. We'll then convert it to U64 where we can add it to the PC as U64, or in this case, PC.0 because we have, um, we have it strongly typed as a vert address. And then we do set reg inst rd um, val. And that, I think, is actually the first instruction that we'll see in the binary. Um, starts an AWI PC. And there it is. That is our first instruction. And it just sets GP. And here's the resulting code. It just sets 2C30CC. Uh, two, th two and then we're going to do a bunch of ads. This ad will get uh, uh, potentially... Yeah, this ad will get cons propped. Because this is setting GC to... Uh, GP to a specific value, this will cons prop, and so will this. Yes! That's huge! <laughs> That's huge! Holy shit! <laughs> this is gonna be so cool! Oh my god, I can't wait! Oh my! My, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my! Um. Jump and link. So we compute the ret adder is equal to this, which will be PC.0. I don't know why my Vim's doing this today. Um, we'll compute the re return address. We'll set reg inst.rd to the ret adder. Um, and then we compute the target. This one, for jump and links, I don't think we're going to lift what we're calling into. I think we will treat uh, basically jump and link. All the and links are effectively calls. Although, I think a jump with a link to the zero register is a direct branch. 
So set reg rd with piece uh, with the return address. So set the return address into rd. Then, um, compute the target, which is this pc dot zero dot wrapping add the immediate sign extended, and then as a that, um. Can you do a loop label on a while? I don't think so, but I can do a continue anyways. So I think, let's just try it. Let's, we're just gonna descend. This might end up, this might end up exploring too much code. So we're, we're gonna try it. But we're gonna say um, queued.pushback uh, target. And then here we will do a, um, so we're going to queue that up, so that instruction will get lifted, that, that target. And that means that we can do a um, program plus equals format of go to inst under hex 016x, um, semicolon, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is target. Right? So... Uh, set the return address, and then we jump to wherever we're branching to. Um, okay. Push back. Uh, yes, this is a vert adder. U signs, U64. Sign extend it, then truncate it to a U size. Okay, so that hasn't actually generated anything because we haven't hit it yet, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Then we have a jump and link register. To do this, this one is more dynamic. We're going to set RD uh, to the return address, but we want to do that after so we want to compute the target, and the target will be set reg um, auto target is equal to, and I might just scope every instruction. Maybe. Um. then I have to handle that in a continue case where I close the scope. But if I scope every instruction, then all I have to care about is whether or not I reuse a variable name in the instruction. Um, but let's add that later. So we're going to set auto target and we'll assign it. Um, from register. Ooh, this is going to be, okay, inst.rs1. So we're going to read the rs1 register, put it in the target variable. Then we're going to do a wrapping add, uh, and that's a uint64t, so wrapping adds rs defined behavior. So then we can do a f program plus equals um, target plus equals this. Which is the immediate? Uh, do we need to do ULL on immediates? Do I have to say ULL on these here on set reg? I think so. We'll just say it's an unsigned long long. Um. UL would be fine, but ULL works in 32-bit as well. And ULL is 64-bit on both architectures, 32 and 64-bit. So we're going to plus equals target um, with a... Uh, this is the immediate...
So jump and link register will take, will read RS1, will add the immediate as a U64, will set RD to the return address, um, and then we'll set PC equal to the target. In this case, um, we actually will do that by setting program plus equals one, two, three, four, um, state, and we need that enum now. I'm going to split this again. Um, struct state. So we'll do enum vm exit, and we'll have uh, indirect branch. Okay? And then if we have an indirect branch, come on, Vim, come on, Vim, do your thing. Um, so what we're going to do is set state dot. Um, enum vm exit vm exit and then we'll have a uh, unit 64 exit info we'll have exit info and exit reason okay so we're going to set exit reason equal to indirect branch so we're going to exit Can I tab in it all here? Not really. Um, we're going to set that the reason that we're exiting is due to an indirect branch. And we will say state exit info will be equal to the branch target. Um, or this is the re-enter PC. So, yeah, we'll have a re-enter PC. And a re-enter PC is the PC that we need to execute if we want to resume execution. And in this case, it will be equal to the target. Right? So set, uh, we get the target from RS1. We add the immediate to it. We then store the return address into RD, and then we set that we're exiting, um, and then program plus equals here, um, return. And then we return. So if we hit that instruction, we compute our indirect branch target. We set that as where we would like to re-enter when we enter the JIT again. And then we return, causing us to exit from the JIT. Um, rig as use size. Oh, get reg. Get the RS1 register and set it to the target. Okay. Uh, I need a semi after the enum. But this should build. It's not using any of these instructions yet, so not a big deal yet. Okay. Now, the branches. And this is pretty easy, I think. Um... Let uh, comp op is equal to this, and then we'll just set this equal to literally equals equals. So this is going to be the um, the expression to emit in C plus plus. So then we have B and E not equal. We have BLT which is less than, we have greater than or equal to, mm, BLT, yeah. Uh, branch if greater than or equal to, equal. We have a branch if 
less than unsigned. Um, and then we have a begue branch of greater than or equal to unsigned. So we have a less than, a greater than or equal. So equal, not equal, less than, greater than or equal to, uh, bacon, lettuce, and tomato unsigned, and branch of greater than or equal to unsigned. Okay. Then to handle these, we will have to say um, the type. Compare type and the compare op. Int 64t, int 64t, u int 64t, u int 64t. Okay. Equal. Not equal, less than, greater than or equal to, less than, unsigned, greater than unsigned. Okay, so now to omit these is really hard. Um, we have to um, get reg auto rs1 rs2 so access or fetch those and then we'll just program um, plus equals format uh, type um, rs1 compare operation type rs2 if that then okay and we have um, compare type compare op compare type Um, and now we're in an if statement. Program plus equals format. Uh, let's compute the target, which is target uh, is equal to pc dot zero dot wrapping add inst dot m as i sixty four as u size. Uh, compute branch target. And then what we'll do, uh, jailer will do a continue. That one will do a cont This one doesn't queue up anything to process because it's an indirect branch. Um, and this one will queue up the target and push this. Okay. Program plus equals one, two, three, four, this. Ooh, some new lines. Uh, let's throw a new line on one of these needed one. This one. Okay. Then we close the curly. And then push back the target. Uh, Q exploration of this target. Uh, bink, bink. 2197, semicolon here. Okay. The way you do indirect jumps is a lot cleaner than my current lifter. I just pass a lot of PC to targets and I scrape out the disassembler for indirect calls and jumps. Oh, interesting. Oh yeah, I've got a I've got Raiden like 
Got some ZG raids pretty soon here. Let me set an alarm. We might not finish this before raid, but uh, we'll uh, we'll get back to it very shortly after that. I think the raids will oh, probably only take an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, okay. Um, okay, generate that code. Q exploration of this target. And we will continue here. Because this, in oh, no, this instruction also falls through. The if statement does a go to, but we also want to fall through. So this one we don't want to fall through because we're literally returning. This one we don't want to fall through because we're doing an unconditional go to but this one we want to fall through and keep uh, uh creating instructions after it um okay load bytes we're gonna ignore the loads for a minute i just want to kind of see roughly what this is gonna start doing um so i'm gonna start deleting some of these so we can just Kind of get a test going. Um, okay, ads. Uh, get reg. Get reg assigns it. Okay, so we'll do um, get reg into auto. Um, auto RS1 will get inst.rs1. Then we will do a uh, set reg inst rd will be assigned RS1 plus this immediate. Um, and did we have an immediate up in one of these spots? This. Okay. So we take that and we add ins.m as i64 is u64. And there we go. So we take rs1. Okay. Add i. I think add i was the one I really wanted to see. XOR i is easy. So assign. Oh, I don't need the spaces here. Because assign rs1 to rs1 and then rs1 plus this and no new line. That will be put into an expression, which will be assigned to RD. Same with this one. No semicolon. That's just an expression. Okay. Ori. Now we get to kind of the faster ones, where things start zooming a bit more. And... And then we'll get to those shifts later. I think... Um... Two, three, two, six... Okay. Oh, I want those champs. Okay. This should build. It won't do anything, really. I think we've handled all of the jumps, which is good. So at the end here, after the opcode, um, let next inst is equal to uh, pc.0 dot wrapping add one or four and then we'll do a program plus equals format go to inst underscore 016x semi new line next inst 
And then we have to queue it. Queue.insert vert adder next inst as u size. It's already a u size. Uh, and this is pushback. And then we need to handle if these are already hit. Ooh, ULL. Oh, yeah, we don't want to do that. Um, we have to do this. Kind of sucks. Um, set reg val, same thing, because we use expressions in some spots. And since we use expressions in some spots, we can't generically add the ULL. So this is val. Redefinition of RS1, this is what I was talking about earlier, where we should add a scope to every single thing. We'll just put it after that, and then at the end, we'll put uh, program plus equals um, that'll just end the scope. 2130. Okay, and then we need to also end scopes um, in some spots. We might not hit them yet. Ooh. Target plus equals. Yep. And then we're going to have mis misaligned uh, curly braces. And that's fine. We can, yep, expected that. Perfect. Good. Working as intended. So any place that we do a... a kind of a go-to. Um, or any place that we do a continue. If we do a continue, we have to end the scope. Okay. This should now be valid C++. And it is. And it built... Okay, so what do we do? We load this, how we PC this. Honestly, I might get rid of the spaces. Um, oh, the spaces on the go-tos and the indents maybe. Uh, so go to's will tab in and these will tab in. Go to. I just think this will look a little bit better. Think. Okay. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So look at this. First instruction, set a register, set GP, um, and then we go to 1D0. And here's 1D0. We then auto RS1, so we get RS1 from GP. We add this, which is going to be the negative 228. We add it to that. And we assign it to regs3. So we update regs3 with that. Um, and then we go to D4. D4, we are doing an add again, this time to a different register. So we grab GP, we take this, and then we store it to 10. Um, good. Then we go to D8. D8, we just are loading a PC. Next. We're loading something and adding. Here we can see, here's 1048. We add that to uh, 12. 
we go to E0. Here we do a subtract. We haven't implemented subtract yet, so whatever. Um, then we come to here. This is load immediate A1 with 0, and we literally just load RS1 with 0, and then we're not reading the 0 register. Um, and then we add 0 to that, which we currently emit and add in this situation. So this will get comps propped, and it will just write that out, and that's E8. Um, then we have a, another AUI PC that's loading RA, and then we're doing jump and link register, and here we go. This is, uh, this is, since this is a jump and link and it's a dynamic, this is an indirect jump, so we get regs 1, um, we add the negative 352 to the target, we set the return address to 65776, which I would hazard is 100F0, and then we set an exit reason of indirect branch, we set a target, uh, the reentry PC to a target, and then we return out from the function. And that's valid code. And now we can see what the code generation looks like. Look at that! Look at that! That's so good! Fuck! Literally, we just like, we just write 2C2 FE8, we just write that to GP. We then just write 2CA 4F0 to A2, skip all the middle steps. Uh, we load 2C2 A72 into EAX, which we store. Ooh! So what this is doing, this is loading, this is both zeroing A1 and setting A2 in the register bank in the same instruction because they're at the same location. I, I think that's what it's doing. And then we set 100 F0, which is the return address. And then we set the two uh, return status codes and then we return. That is fucking gorgeous. <laughs> This is so fucking good. <laughs> um, would it be easier for reading this for debugging to output unop unoptimized assembly? I mean, honestly, this is it's more readable cuz unoptimized would make a bunch of locals and set up a bunch of state. Holy shit, this is good. This is so good. This is 10 risk 5 instructions and it turns into 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9. It it is fewer x86 instructions and this is just management shit where I'm setting like return codes. It actually the brunt of it is six instructions. And this you can execute three of these a cycle. So this is one cycle. This is uh, actually, this is one cycle, this whole thing. This is half a cycle, so this is 1.5 cycles. This is um, four cycles. So this is like, uh, this two, that will get rounded up to two. Um, this might actually run in parallel, in speculation, because it's not depending on... Uh, it's depending on XMM. Okay. And then setting these is effectively free because this will get uh, pipeline. This, this like, I think this will be sub-cycle. I think we will run, I think we will literally run, um, I think with this we will literally run risk 5 at under a cycle per instruction. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit, this is nuts! <laughs> that code generation is unreal! We could also maybe build this without um, uh, relocation support. We could build this as a fixed binary so this would resolve and it wouldn't be an indirect branch. That might help us a bit with perf. But anyways, we have to implement sub and a couple other things. We just kind of have to go down the line. Holy fuck. Holy shit, that's good. Um, gel, jump and link register. 
uh, branches, conditional branches, which I'd love to see some conditional branches because we haven't seen them yet. We haven't seen what this code gen looks like yet, and I'm so excited. I'm so fucking excited. Uh, load byte. Um, um, how does generating C++ help? Well, we're leveraging the optimization by the compiler. So the compiler is going to optimize it for us, which is fantastic. Um, holy shit. Dude, this code gen! I can't believe it! I just need to- I just need to do it! I just need to do it. Um, but holy fuck, I just- I want it done so bad, but I like, am just kind of in shock at how fucking awesome this is going to be. Load permissions. So this is calculating the read permission mask. Then we're going to set the size based on this. These are these are good. I like these. Um Okay, so we have um load type which is going to be like unit 8, unit 16, unit 32, unit 64. Um then we're going to have a uh, size of the... Oh, we can use size of. Do we just need the load type? Do we need anything else? Is that enough information for us? I think it is. So this will be uint 8t. Um, and I need to mention how it gets promoted... And that's fine. Um, do I need to give it a promotion thing? I need to say it starts as an int 8. And then it gets promoted. So the read type is an int 8. And the assignment type is an int 64t. And then I'll cast that. So I'll... I'll I'll deref using this. I will cast the result to this, and then I will assign it to where the fuck it's going. I think that's good. I think that's all the information. I have the size and all the other stuff that I need. So this will give me the ability to um, do everything else I need, pretty sure. So this is an int 16, int 32, int 64, and all of those turn into int 64s. And then this is a uint 8, uint 16, and a uint 32, and they turn into uint 64s. And then we'll cast that to uint 64. So then the code that we'll actually generate here will be, um, we'll bounds check the address range. So first we have to compute the address. So um, load or er, get reg into auto adder. We're going to get inst dot uh, however it's done in these inst dot rs1. So we get rs1, and then we're going to program plus equals adder plus equals, and this is a format string, um, ull semi new line, and this is the inst.im as i64 is u64. So we're going to get the address, we're going to, so we're going to get the address, we're going to add the offset to that address, um, UN8T, star UN8T. Casting UN8T to N64 won't cause problems. Um, that's true, because it's based on where it came from, isn't it? So I can just, can I just have all of them just be this, the read type, and then I just cast it to an N64T unconditionally?
Um, yeah, they'll be fine. Okay. So we read them as this, and then we'll cast them all to an int 64, and then we'll cast them to a u int 64 to assign them to the register bank. So this is uh, compute the address of the read. Then uh, check the bounds of the address. And to do this, we will do program plus equals format um, one, two, three, four. If if the memory um, state memory len, if state memory len minus size of the type. I'm going to assume that memory length is greater than, always greater than that. Otherwise, this is going to be wrong, and I don't give a fuck. Um, here, we can do that here. Assert size is greater than or equal to 8. Must, ha must have at least 8 bytes of memory. And now we don't have integer overflows. Um, or underflows in this case size of. So now we can take the memory length, we can subtract off the size, and we can say if the address is greater than this, right, so if, this, if there are 8 bytes, we subtract off the size of that. If the address is greater than or equal to, no, greater than. Um, if memory length is 8 and we're reading a U64, this will be 0. Is 0 greater than 0? It is not. If we did greater than or equal to, this would block things reading at the very end of memory. So that's the correct logic here. And we'll just do this. Um, if the program... Uh, I think this is correct. If the address is greater than the memory length minus size of this. Is that correct, everyone? I think it is. Or times deref type of memory uh, state memory plus adder uh, state permissions. So if... If that is out of bounds, then we're out of bounds of memory, and this deref is not safe. Or if the permissions and the permission mask um, ULL is not equal to the permission mask, um, if that or this, then state dot uh, vm exit read fault write fault. Um, I do need an explicit cast because the regs array is uh, u sixty fours. And the U to a U, and an I sixteen to a U. Would that sign extend? Would an I sixteen to a U sign extend? I might just be explicit just for safety, but I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. Um, state. Uh, exit reason is equal to read fault state um, reenter PC is equal to the PC. Some of these we can hex just for ease of viewing. Um,
re-enter PC is that. Okay. Now we can set the um, the first thing that this takes in is the type, load type. The next thing it takes in is a load type. Then it takes in a um, perm mask and another perm mask. And then finally, a PC.0. Come on, Vim. Come on, Vim. Oh my god, fuck off, Vim. I don't know what the fix is to that. I just checked, it does I to you, do, does do a sign extension. Okay. Emotes when? I think I'm going to do a management stream pretty soon, uh, where I go through and I add Discord channels, and I add emotes, and I figure out kind of all that stuff. 2226. I will need to know the access size at this time. So we'll do eight. Oh, that's four. Um, four, two, one, eight, four. Two, one. And then this is the access size. Okay. Then, um, so that'll check the permissions and it will check the bounds of memory. And the memory boundaries can be checked like once because that can get uh, propagated potentially, which is nice because that's constant, the memory length. Honestly, I could bake in the memory length at compile time, but this adds the ability to reuse some of the generated code. Not that I think we're going to, but we could. Uh, we, can op we can optimize that later if we really want to by making this an actual constant. Um, but I'm pretty sure it, it'll be pretty smart about it. So what do I want to do here? Um, now we want to do, at the end of this, we want to do set reg register um, inst.rd, right? Um, we want to set it into RD. We want to set the expression here. We want to deref memory, and this is an implicit cast, which I think is fine. State memory plus adder. Format. And then the arg that this takes is the, um, this is the, uh, bup, 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 what the fuck is this? The load type. Right? Um, load type. So then that'll just deref memory based on that type. And then that'll get assigned to a register, which is U64. So it'll deref using this type. OK. Um. Think, unfortunately, I gotta go raid quick. This is like the first time I've raided with this guild. Let's make sure I got all my buffs. I think I do.
So, short little break, I guess, here. Oh my god, I have no gold. Oh, fuck yeah, I have gold. Not much, but a little bit. Okay. Um, I'll pause that there. And let's go get some waters. And we need a greater mana potion. Not a terrible price. Just pick them all up. Fuck it. Do I need anything else? I need some Nightfin soups. Let me get some Nightfin. Other than that, I look pretty good on buffs here. It's just uh, two stacks. Okay. Oh, someone had a kid. Okay, we got soups. We're pretty good on buffs. I just need water. Yeah, and I can set this to... Uh... Oh, come on. Please, please be fast. Fuck yeah, let's go. Um, and I think I might go turn in some of these tokens and go get a go get one of the buffs. Okay, it'll be nice to just have the coins. I gotta get in Discord. Du, du, du. Guild is like, where the fuck are you? Okay, nice. All right. Um, best part of the stream is about to start. Random rants about the security industry during the raid? Oh, hell yeah. Have you ever fuzzed the WoW add-on API? I haven't, but um, actually, while writing WoW add-ons, I have found crashes in the game. So, like, that's, a, that's actually a thing. It wasn't intentional. Let me know if the frames are good. I've never really streamed while gaming. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm getting so rewarded. Um... Ooh, I didn't bring any greater healing potions, or superior healing potions. Nah, fuck it. I think I'll be fine. Or, or lips. It's pretty smooth? Okay, hell yeah. I'm gonna hit the head, I'll be right back.
All right. Be kind of nuts if you found a vulnerability in the API. Chant with a vulnerability that allows you to run Lua code and a widely used, widely used add-on. Oh, yeah. Like, I wouldn't really be surprised. Um, let me see if I can go get Zandalar buffs. I want, oh yeah, I can set this to wow temporarily. Um, just doing uh, ZG, healing some ZG, then back to coding. Hi everyone, how's it going? I'm talking to the Discord. <laughs> and how do I get this shit? Um... I'm looking for factions, Zandi, Spirit and Stand by 50. Yeah, that's dank. Where do I get that? Ah. Oh, it looks like we're missing one person per raid. Um, I need an honor token. Hopefully, one of these is the trio. I think I actually have every type of coin, so I should be able to turn these in. And it's just one token, I think. Yeah, just one honor token. I just hope I don't die immediately. <laughs> um, not sure if this is the kind of question for this stream, but how long did it take to get to the point where employers started considering your, uh, you were uh, paying equally to someone who has a college degree? My current employer said um, they're considering me for full time after my contract, but they would have less red team contracts they feel they could market me for, so chances are I'd be paid less. So I actually never had, um, I never actually really had any employer who, um, I never had an employer who didn't, I don't know, who wasn't okay with that. Like, potent potables, yes. And I want Spirit of Sansa. And that's a unique item, so I can't carry multiple, I don't think. Yeah, it's unique. Actually, I could pop it, because it's two hours. I could pop it, and then go and blast another one quick. That's the trick. See? Now I'm thinking. Motto, assisted by Osa Darkheid and T Rares. Hell yeah. I'm so excited. Oops, wrong place. I need to really get my ass over there. I'm like kind of late. Nice, now I got one of those. Okay. Um, let's just go fast. Um, yeah, I, I never really had an issue with employers really taking me seriously. Um, oh, shit. I've never actually heard my guild leader's voice. Right, where's where's honoring at? 
kind of not surprised. I honestly pushed a little bit later than I should have doing that uh, code. Hopefully they're not too pissed. Greed on bijous. I think I can get up here. Oh, come on. Fuck. Fuck. Guess we're going around. Shit. Uh, need on whatever is an upgrade. Need on mount if you want it. Nice. Yeah, I think most people here already have most of the gear. So, I'm probably going to get a lot of upgrades from here since I'm a fresh 60. Um... It's good to hear, uh, three Gamoza, I kind of figured, uh, it might take some time for me to build my resume and other ways if I don't decide to finish. Yeah, it's, it's, sadly, it really varies, it really does, um, it kind of depends on kind of how lucky you are to have good managers from the start, right? If you have a good manager from the start, um they hopefully will vouch for you kind of for the rest of your career. I mean, my early managers would hire me back anytime, like anytime. If I went to ping one of my old managers and I was like, I'd love to come back. They'd be like, holy shit. <laughs> um... Have you ever got offers for illegal jobs? Like, uh, like uh, black hat stuff? Not really. Like, I mean, arguably, ever since I made that Maple Story video, I have like one person a month who comes by and asks me to make cheats for them. And like, some people offer real money. <laughs> like, people offer real money to have cheats made. Obviously, they're people who probably run like gold selling companies or something, and they j they just want bots and cheats. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, I've had people who ask me to, like, find bugs for them, but I, I typically think those people are just, like, noobs and not actually people looking to seriously get their hands on real bugs. Like, I think they just don't understand what they're doing. Um. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Shit. This is my first time doing raids with a new mouse. Uh, I'm kind of scared, actually. Kind of really scared, actually. Kind of legal a gray area, though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's anything illegal about cheating in games, at least in the U.S. I think in China it's illegal. And a, a couple other Asian companies, I think, make it illegal. Um... Get the Swifty Racer Naga. No, I got a, a Logitech uh, MMO mouse with the 50,000 buttons on the side. I used to think they were kind of stupid and tacky and kind of just never really thought I'd get one. And then, to be honest, it's pretty fucking sweet. Like, I can just have so much stuff uh, bound to my mouse and I just, like, shift control to augment everything. So... Hey, I'm actually 60 now. Last time I was here, I was 58. So I was really scared about my aggro radius. Um, okay, and it looks like we're sneaking by. I don't know where we're at. Is this... Yeah, I think everyone's here. Okay. Um, yeah, they're all there. Okay. Thought you were Shadow? Nah. I've never actually played Shadow. I kind of want to try it, but I've never, never tried it. Oh, thank God. We did it. We made it. Um... Okay, I'm in combat. What? 
Oh god, that is not a that is not a great way to start. Holy shit. Where did those fuckers come from? Yikes, aggro and shit on the group. Okay. Alright, we gotta we gotta get warmed up here. Yikes. I didn't even see uh myself entering combat. I must have gotten close to something. Oh, yikes. I got dumpstered. Something hit me. <laughs> Fuck, that's my buff right away. Holy shit. Uh, we have people who can res. Yeah, I'm assuming we're getting a res. Fucking bullshit. If <laughs> fuzzy and you crash. Am I getting a res here? Does no one notice I'm dead? Oh, Burnside died. Okay, I see. Um, pass on Bloodline. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm getting a res here. I don't know if anyone sees that I'm dead. I'm kind of, I'm kind of confused. Um, I think they're running back. Okay, I'll just start running back. I'm I'm kind of confused here, to be honest. I don't know. I don't think we're like super situated yet. He onked. I think. Okay. Welp. I don't know how that aggroed on me. I didn't see entering combat. I actually I wonder if I uh uh Okay. Burnside pulled and you buffed him with Pura Fort and got aggro after he died. Okay. Okay, I was about to say, like, I'm, I'm pretty fucking sure I didn't aggro anything. Like, okay, I, okay, I don't feel too bad about it. Unlucky timing on buffs. That's kind of unfortunate. Let's get the Zanza going, get some buffs going. I guess I don't need int. Did I already fort? No, I didn't. Oh, I probably did. Fuck. I wasted two forts. Oh, well. Not that big of a deal. Alright. Let's, uh... Guess we're gonna see kind of how this goes. I haven't... I haven't actually done this with my guild. Um, so I'm kind of curious. I'm pretty sure this is kind of candy easy. And then, let's see. Just people need spirit buffs, it looks like. Can I get a fort? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We got this. We're going to get some reses going, and then, yeah, we'll get forts on everyone. God, the buffs take so much mana. Woof. All right. Anyone here not have forts? Looks like everyone has forts. I need to give myself spirits. And then I need to heal. Yikes. It's actually been a while since I've played okay I need to pay attention to pats I've only done this uh, I've only done ZG once in vanilla I've done it a couple times in Burning Crusade but in Burning Crusade it's kind of a joke you like go in as five five people like five guildies and you farm coins and stuff 
So, okay. Now, we're all buffed up. Uh, actually, those people need buffs, too. But yeah, it's actually weird. I haven't played in like a week, and I've kind of forgotten some of my keybinds on my mouse. Mainly because the mouse is new, and so I'm still like getting used to it. But let's see. They need spirit. They need spirit. They don't. Okay. I might just give everyone my buff so I can pay attention to... Uh, so I can pay attention to the buffs. Because if I overwrite other people's buffs, I can kind of see them better. And actually, I don't know if anyone else here would be disciplined and have improved power. Actually, most people would probably have improved power by this point. Well, someone here has... Some people have spot forts here, so probably going to buff them in a second. But yeah, let's see how smooth this goes. I'm hoping it'll be nice. Um, okay, let's do this. And one more buff on this group. And I, I think we're ready. All right, that should be everything. Man, those buffs are insane. Like 2,300 mana, I think. Th or 3,000 mana, actually. Holy shit. All right. Got mana back. Got mana. We have buffs. Showing up late to raid. Losing some DKP. Dying right away. Being the first one to die. Not, not great. Okay, he was out of range. All right. We got this. And then I think we just juke those spirit things. Pretty sure it's the... Yeah. Watch the ghosts, they say. Boop. I technically was out of combat there. Holy shit. Yikes. Nice. Dude, it feels good. It feels good to be back. <laughs> My ZKP. More dots. More dots. I'm curious how much I'm going to be able to talk while I'm doing this because I'm still like... um. Sorry, I'm listening to Discord. But yeah, this is going to be kind of interesting because I'm just not like... Ooh. Holy fuck. I actually don't know what's doing that. Like, what's exploding? Are people getting ghosted? I actually have no idea what that mechanic is. Okay. <laughs> Someone in here has a southern accent. Do you run it through wine? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just on wine here. Dude, I can't wait to fucking get this code running. Holy shit, guys. That code gen looks so good. Okay. Uh, there's this new programming language, it's called Rust, you should check it out. Sorry, I only auto-generate C++ now. That's, uh, that's my new thing. Am I gonna get full mana for the first time? Ooh. Solderite? Oh, not that good. Holy shit, I'm gonna have full mana! The dream! The dream! Okay, regen, armor, fort. I think I have all of my buffs. I think I'm happy. 
Have you ever used multi-boot for your OS? I haven't. Uh, well, I mean, I have, but I don't really use it. I'm not a huge fan of multi-boot. Um, I kind of always prefer to do... Um, uh, I don't know. I like VMs a lot more. I just... Multi-boot always seems to end up in, like, fucking wiping out disks and getting weird shit, getting corrupted, or, like... Uh, the Windows boot manager overriding Grub or vice versa, and you end up with this, like, fuck state where nothing works. Like, I guess the last time I tried it, I was, like, 15, and I had no idea what I was doing. And now that, like, I actually kind of understand how computers work, it's probably not that scary anymore. But at least when I was doing it, I just had no idea what I was doing, and it kind of sucked. Okay. So I have no idea. So that's a silence. I don't know how long it lasts, so let's get, I guess I need to know kind of meters. But yeah, this is technically a boss. Oh, he's done pretty fast. So I don't need to be too worried about mana consumption here. Let's make sure the tanks get that off them first. Dude, I fucking love healing. It's so good. I still am not really in my groove, but god damn. Let's get this going. Get some of this. Get a free cast. Pretty much guaranteed crit on this next cast. There we go. Um, hell yeah. Playing some WoW. It's been a nice long while. Fucking love it. Yeah, I'm not even close to being stressed for mana here. Yeah, we'll we'll heal a pet. Do some debuffs. Fuck yeah. Holy shit. Oh, those are boots. Oh, and they're male. Fuck. Um 23 damage and healing to back, meh. Uh and the bracer I already have, so. Just pass on all that shit. I guess I should greed on him for vendoring. <laughs> Ooh, there's heads in there. I forgot, I have a quest. Moise. Um, mind if I roll need? <laughs> the classic. So, yeah, we're just we're just rolling this because none of these upgrades are really a big enough deal for most people here. So, okay, and what do I do? I hug the fuck out of that wall. The problem is I, like, don't know the path yet. I think you just go counterclockwise the whole way, but... Like, I don't know what things people skip yet here, so I, I'm just, like, pretty fucking terrified that I'm just going to pull everything. Okay. Nice. We need a new soup. Wasn't ZG like a catch-up raid? Oh, yeah, it's definitely a, a catch-up raid. Now, the thing is, I just hit 60, so I just have no gear yet. But, uh, so a lot of stuff here will be an upgrade for me. What group am I in? I'm in this group, so I can heal here. Ooh, yeah, I fucking love AoE heals. Bring it. Bring the AoE heals on. That poison's pretty nasty. Yeah, I, I typically like trash more than bosses, just because you have much more, like, splatter damage and shit. It's just super fun to deal with. Do you have any pets, like, in real life? Uh, I do not, actually. Um, I've never had a pet. Well, technically, I have a koi pond, so I have fish. Um, but I've never had pets growing up. My parents were not really into pets. Not really sure why. Uh, so I never really had pets um, growing up or even around. Like, my parents would, like, get mad if someone brought a pet over when they came over or some shit. So... Kind of fucking weird. But understandable. Some people don't like pets. Holy shit. Holy shit. Hot, hot, hot. Holy fuck, this feels hot. 
This feels really hot. I don't know if we're doing something wrong, but this feels like a fuck ton of healing. Um, have you ever fallen in the koi font? Ooh, is that an office reference? In my chat? And you have pet deer? I know, the deer here are so cute! And we have black bears, which are really fun. Um. Alright. <laughs> Dude, I love the office. Actually, there's a podcast on, um... There's a there's a podcast right now on Spotify that's kind of about like the creation and origins of the office and stuff, which is really neat. Um, it's hosted by <sighs> who's the person that hosts it? It's weird because oh, it's uh, uh, Kevin Alone, which is um, fuck. What is his name? Anyways, it's so weird. His voice is so much different than I'm what I'm what I'm used to. Like, <laughs> it's, I'm just so used to him being Kevin Malone, and he, his voice is completely different. It's pretty nuts. Fucking love it, dude. I don't know. Dude, The Office is one of my favorite shows. I, The Office is really good. Um, uh, Mr. Robot, I, like, thought I was gonna cringe through that show, and the first season, I kinda cringed through, but once it started turning into, like, not just a hacking show, and there were, like, some serious drama elements, I fell in love with that fucking, uh, show. I don't really watch any movies, actually. Just mainly shows. I love documentaries and shit. Silicon Valley I haven't watched. I'm assuming that I would just, uh, I would just cry the entire time. Like, not literally, but just, like, emotionally. Or or I would just feel awful because I know it's probably realistic. And probably, uh, that's what I've heard. As a lot of people say it's, like, hits a little too close to home for the computers. Not computer security, but just IT industry in general. Or Silicon Valley, Valley industry, which I like even less. Okay, so he's tanking boss over there. We killed trash. Noise. Dude, I'm just coasting right now. I'm I'm MP5 and Okay, now we got some we got some warmth. So I really wish I had Circle of Healing. Uh which you don't get until Burning Crusade. But Circle of Healing. Um Circle of Healing is really fun. Oh, I gotta dispel that. There we go. Um I actually always forget to dispel bosses and shit. Okay, so Circle of Healing in Burning Crusade is an AoE heal, but it works on the group that you target it on. In uh, Classic, you actually have no heals, no AoE heals. Um, nice. You have no AoE heals in Classic that, uh, let's see, any of these good? Greed, greed. Honestly, that's pretty solid, but... It's not quite right for my build, so I'm going to keep mine. Um, Silicon Valley is uh, full of great programmers. The very best work there. I don't know. I It's just cringe. Bug me that the main character uh, preferred tabs over spaces. So I prefer tabs over spaces. I think tabs are much better than spaces, but I also recognize... Um, did I already get that channeler's head? No, I need to loot it. I'm gonna go loot it quick. Um, oh, did I, did I win that? Shit. I'm looting this item. I'm pretty sure I can, they can heal just fine. <laughs> Unfollowed and unsubbed. I'm, I don't know, man. It's just... The, uh, I don't like how, um, 
I don't like how spaces are lossy. There's some really weird interactions where sometimes you backspace and it just doesn't work as you expect. But people are typically not willing to use tabs correctly and correctly use tabs where they use tabs and spaces where they use spaces. So you get this like mix and hybrid and everything kind of goes to shit. Um, but like, I prefer tabs. It's information loss to use spaces. Um, fucking Discord chat. Dude, this guild's a hoot. Nice. Okay. Uh, tabs are like compressed spaces. See, it saves, it saves memory, you know? If you use, if you use spaces, spaces you're just wasting all sorts of storage and if we if today was any indication rust and gcc or more specifically clang takes so long to parse files that you should really try and save every every byte you can in the input but mainly i like tabs just because it's uh it integrates better with editors and you can kind of backspace better with things um like a lot of editors don't really work super well with uh, tabs. I'm one of those people who do both. Use tabs for indentations, spaces for alignments. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to use tabs for indentation, and then you align with spaces. And that way, it will render the same regardless of your tab stop, because you only use tabs for indentation, which is the same depth as everything else. But the second you start mixing um, at a different depth level is when it starts getting nasty. But a lot of people just are too lazy to kind of put in that, that work. And I am at times too. It's, it's fucking hard to get it right. At least he uses Vim and not Emacs. Can't win them all. You know, you, you, you get what you get. Emacs number one. I've never been convinced on Emacs yet. Maybe I'm missing out, but I don't think I am. Fuck Emacs, unless you use it as an operating system. <laughs> He's just spritz. I I've had some coworkers who you use Emacs, and they're they're. I would say they're passionate about their um their editor decisions. <laughs> <laughs> I have to worry about low B pool. Oh, Izzy is uh Izzy is fifty six. Dank. Where's she at? Is she coming here? I guess we can uh do a little spying. Oh, there's Pats. Fuck. <laughs> no, Emacs. Don't you mean GNU Emacs? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, GNU slash Linux slash GNU Emacs. GNU. Uh, I mean, honestly, everything's GNU. If, it, if it's ever run, if it's been compiled with GCC, is it not GNU? <laughs> Sorry if I'm not as entertaining when I'm playing this. I'm like a little bit focused because I'm not quite like super relaxed here yet. Um, this is hot. Oh yeah, I am getting mana burned. Well, fuck me. I guess I want to use mana then. If I'm getting mana burned, I want to be dumping mana. I feel like people have pretty low health pools here. Okay. Next heal is free and a crit. Well, guess it didn't crit. I think it's like 25% crit or something like that. It's pretty high. 
Gnu Gnu, Stallman Emote One, Slash Richard Stallman. Stallman's an interesting uh, character. To be honest, I don't think you, like, I don't know. Stall Stallman doesn't bother me too much. Uh, same same with all the like the developer drama where they're just a bunch of shitlords who like are just fucking weird. It's just they're just developers. Like you just you have to take everything they say with a grain of salt because they're just typically not the most rounded people in the world. Um. <laughs> He looks like he smells bad. I mean, he definitely does look like he smells bad. Let's see where's he at. Where are we going? Ah, here we go. Um, Stolman is about politics, not only development. Really? I haven't really heard it. Well, the legal side... I mean, if it's if it's not about you know free and open source, I'm not about it. Who who wrote the GPL? Is it like a team of lawyers, or was it um, was it like a team of lawyers, or was it like Stallman himself? That'd be kind of funny if it was actually Stallman. Okay, I think Izzy is here, right? Okay. Where where are we going? Congrats, dude. <laughs> Someone in here has never raided before. Gen 2? <laughs> Alright, what, what's, uh, what distros does everyone use here? Or, what OS do you run if you are a Windows or OS X user? Debbie? Gen 2? Debian's good, unless you mean literally Debbie, and that's like some Debian offshoot that I've never heard of in my life. Windows 10, fuck yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta support Windows, you know? If you're not supporting Windows, you know, what are you, what are you doing with your life? It's only the best operating system in the world. I use Arch. Ooh. I haven't used Arch since like 2010. But. Uh. Win 10, Whistle 2, Debian and Whistle 2. Damn. Dude, Whistle 2 is hot. Like. Being able to use the same directories both inside and outside of the VM makes it so nice to test things. You can have like, you can just up arrow on your Linux terminal and up arrow on your Windows terminal. You don't have to copy files across and you can just check to see if everything builds. Dude, it's sweet. Windows 10 whistle too because I do a lot of Windows bug hunting. Hell yeah. Um... It's just so nice to just grab a file from Windows. Yeah. Just makes it easy to use. It's so good. FreeBSD! Woo! Hell yeah. I've actually never used OpenBSD. Every machine I've ever tried to install OpenBSD on has panicked during the, the boot stage. <laughs> uh, I love FreeBSD. I was a FreeBSD user for like eight years. It's all I would use. Like I was running a four monitor... It, GTX 460, which was, like, top of the line at the time, and I was running fucking FreeBSD. <laughs> Found the neckbeard. 
I don't know. I could probably turn on game sounds or something here. Let's see. If I turn on game sounds, I should probably ask if they're okay with me streaming. Ooh. If you're running Mac OS X, you're basically running FreeBSD. Yeah, so what what is the history be, be, uh, behind OS X? It's uh, BSD... It was like way back when, in like the... Because they forked off BSD 4.6 or whatever, 4.4. Bunch of FreeBSD and Mach, yeah. Mach is a weird fucking kernel, dude. I don't like Mach. The, the amount of different IPC mechanisms you have, and the amount of, like, fuck serialization and deserialization that you end up doing, has led to so many bugs. Like, I don't know, man. Some, sometimes I, uh, sometimes I question that. I don't know. I think IPC is a really big decision to make while making an OS. Oh, we're on a boss. I didn't realize this was a boss. Um, <laughs> I'm just healing. I'm just fucking healing. <laughs> Mock with a BSD personnel. Okay, do you have SIG info in, in OS X? Because if you have SIG info, then I might say it's, it's a good OS. Dude, I love SIG info. You've probably heard me rant about SIG info before. Because it's just so good. That is a dank ring. Yeah, these are nutty drops. Nice. OSX has SIG info. Yeah, control T all day. I just... Dude, I don't understand why Linux is so afraid to add SIG info. Like... I feel like they're afraid of being too much like BSD. Yeah, this place is nuts. Reuse signals, frank, frankly, not nice. Does Sig Info have like a weird history behind it? What do you What do you mean by that? I'm curious. Come on. Where's Izzy? Sorry, uh, said OSX, but it's OSXI? Wait, what? Sig Seg V and Sig Bus are supposed to do something totally different? Yeah, so, what, what, the original intentions was Sig Bus was meant for, like, device things, wasn't it? OSXI slash GNU. They're going to 11 in the next version. Ooh. I think Izzy's healing. Fuck yeah. What? We're doing mind controls? Triangle. Triangle. I'm mind controlling. Holy shit. I'm kind of sketched out by this mind control shift. Okay. <laughs> Fuck, I haven't done a mind control in here. I feel like I'm just going to resist because I have no... Um... Okay, we're mind controlling. Three second cast. Oh, that blood leech. Brutal. What am I doing? Killing skull. Okay, and I'm killing X. Uh, 
Oh, I can uh, redo this. Unless people are just killing it. I think we're just killing it. Oh, code hanger died. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I really should try and get Discord on here because we're just memeing right now. And I recognize it's probably... I mean, honestly, I can probably just put it on. I don't know. I don't, I don't think anyone will care. All right. Okay. Um, to be fair, Apple's ARM cores are way ahead of ARM's ARM cores. Really? I mean, ARM's, ARM doesn't really make too much. They just kind of make the spec. I mean, arguably, they, they do make some things. But they're a lot more focused on the... Um, they're a lot more focused on the spec. Can ARM compete with x86? Ha! I don't think so because the there's not enough money in it yet. Of the blood priest. There's oh. just not quite enough money in it yet. I, I so axe throwers can also be fun too. I'm really skeptical. Um. Oh yeah. Uh, when somebody gets mind control, uh, please just crowd control them. Don't kill them because they might have consumables and buffs and whatever. So. Even though um, it's fun to kill your friends, try not to. I'm here in Discord. Yeah, I turned it on. That's what PvP night is for. Unless it's Drenrish. What? What? <laughs> what? I'd kill Drenrish. What? what? Same. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Use your cooldowns on him. <laughs> I, I, I've been in a raid where just a mage would always pop. Where did he leave? An did he leave arm just before the pile no, he, got opened? Wait, where was he at? He'd get to blow because he was someone. at AMD, and then he Either went. He blows where? him up, or he gets mind control and blows someone else. Left up. Intel. Oh, okay, yeah. That is so evil. Was he so the one behind um, <laughs> Night's Landing? <laughs> It's not fair, I'm just a healer. I don't have cool stuff like that. You have grounding totem. Oh yeah, that'll, yeah. that'll oh, really no. fuck them up. <laughs> you get a huge damn boost, even as a healer. If it actually does like chain lightning into a shock, it can kill someone. Ooh. What is this disease? Um, he left Intel, or he went to Intel then left now really this, quick. Ladies and gents, so is the poopy butt boss? I'm kind of. Uh, we shall see. I don't know. I, I think Intel has been coasting way too fucking long on Skylake, and oh dang, they got them. Gloves. Wow, this is some nice gloves. I remember back at server start when I was trying to gear up my warrior as a tank, and it's like, oh, it was like 100 gold. I don't know. I think they've been riding Skylake for like way nothing. too long, and it's a big mistake. Like, Don't they just haven't made huge progress. These. Pretend that it's, like, worth super expensive. It's a nice... It's pretty... It's a nice defense piece, but it's not like what it was at server start. Like, <laughs> it's thank so God AMD is putting some pressure down. on them. Although AMD's server hardware is still pretty lackluster. It's still like fifteen gold. They just they don't really have the like. Which is more than oh, I am I controlling have. here? I think I'm mind controlling here. <laughs> oh, the disappointment. Yeah. I have twelve no, gold. Normal for her. <laughs> I have two stupid crafting professions. I don't have any gathering profession. Oh shit. I'm gathering hubs for you, so I have to be I can buy. Enchanters don't apparently get tipped properly. Well, no, I mean, also, I'm the, the raid enchanter, so I can't. He left Intel to the family stuff, not for other things? Any oh, guild interesting. in coalitions or guilds that they're okay. friends with, so that doesn't help. <laughs> AMD lacks this IPT stuff? Yeah, Do you I mean, mean uh, P-Trace uh, or Processor Trace? Both Apostate and Brighty Lux, I can say that the, uh, oh, the key to success is uh, having a catch, uh, a catchy catchphrase in trade chat. 
Yeah, usually it's I time to part. Have a good weekend. See you around, crazy. Crazy. <laughs> we'll be back to programming pretty soon here. I am. I think we're like. I am rich in recruits. almost halfway through, so. I don't know. I don't know how to be entertaining when playing a game. I only know how to code. <laughs> That's all I know how to do. Um, I feel like this kind of bugs out in here where it's not actually showing the segments. Alright. Let's go. Um, cool for QA tests and stuff, yeah. I don't know. I, <laughs> That's great publicity. I, Man, I the Ryzen <laughs> stuff, the like most recent Ryzen stuff looks really promising. But I still really want AVX 512, or at least K-Masks. And I would really like to see some uh, multiprocessor scaling supports. Um, and I'd like to see a better tracing API. I do like their, um, I do like their, uh, hypervisor API. I think it's much better than VTX, uh, although it typically right, has much worse support. Little explanation. I've never been here. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's going to come down and he's going to split into two bosses. It's going to be him and his raptor. Uh, we're going to off tank his raptor off to the side and we're not going to worry about him. We do have to, however, worry about this guy. Um, the one ability you do need to worry about is uh, he's uh, occasionally going to call out that he is uh, looking at somebody. Um, if you were that person, you need to you need to immediately stop casting, stop DPSing, stop everything. Because uh, if you're doing anything while he's fo uh, while he's looking at you, he will um, drop target off the tank and he will come and he will just smush you. And he oh, hits like a truck and he will smush you. Got it. Torvald thinks AVX 5 is release, garbage. There's spirits that will resonate. Yeah. Yes. I mean. Okay. Yeah. This guy is. is I don't think Torvald cares about anything except for the most uh, general I mean, purpose should, compute. Uh, keep coming back to the fight so, of course, he doesn't understand ass. something that's like meant for people who do really something other than email in a terminal. More people he kills the stronger he gets. He will shut out Dane. And, and occasionally another boss, when he shouts out Ding, another boss on the other side of the zone will yell out Gratz. It's pretty funny, although it's not as funny when he's whooping your ass. I don't know. I think everyone's yeah, just like so mad really at AVX 512 because of the down clocking, but it's it literally happens with AVX 2 already. It's, it's, it's been a thing for such a long time. I don't know. I think people just are like... People just want to get mad at Intel, which is which is fine. But, like, it's pretty obvious that people are just looking for things to, like, get mad about. I don't know. Feed your souls to Everyone that does, like, high-performance compute, or really any compute, has been praising... Um, it's been praising uh, uh, AVX 512, because it's fantastic. K-Masks give you, like, a 2x speed-up in many situations. Um... The AVX 512 thing I'm mad about is that it's really on no chips. Yeah, it's it's on what? The Xeon W processor, so the workstation processors. It's also on the, um, uh, like, the Skylakes. Like, pretty, I think it's not on the cheapest processor. Well, it's not on the desktop Skylakes. It's on the, like, mid to high end server ones. So I don't actually know if it's on anything cheaper. But I don't know. I mean, arguably you can you you can go get it on uh, on some good old fashioned uh, uh, Xeon Fives. Well, they're looking at you. Better hit escape. You could go <laughs> buy some Xeon Skies. Still also random. For, uh, Xeon Fives for pretty much free. Get mad at software dev for creating so much bloat. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Drugs. I mean, like, What's what is Intel now? supposed to do? Escape solar off. 
Intel has had the fastest single core performance for like two fucking decades, and they're just getting yeah, shit on by like everyone being so mad at them because they literally have been, I mean, they've been price gouging a bit, but like. Yeah, warriors are definitely better on the like, after than the uh, big guy. I don't know. They've been uh, they've been doing kind of the best they can. We haven't really found any way to it. make single core processing faster, oh, and like everyone keeps getting mad at parallelization, well, and then never write okay, software that leverages it. Like that's one of the things I don't get about the arm push because everyone's saying, "Well, Be arm can scale to more friends, cores." You may pull them again, but. Sorry, there's like, no one writes scalable code. No one is writing code that works um, on many cores. So like, what what are you gonna do with your your ARM processors? You're gonna have what? You're gonna have 50 cores? Oh yeah, he has a cleave. You don't want to actually go next to him. And like, what are you gonna do? Intel killed Moore's Law. Come on, that fear is nuts. Okay. Um, and this is a raptor? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nicely done. Ooh! Or a, tanks a are badass. With a capital B. Did you guys hear that? You guys are bad with a capital B. Hey. <laughs> I'm gonna whoop your ass. <laughs> with a capital A? Yeah. People just want a magic bullet. They're excited about ARM because it's different. They think it will solve their software problems. Yeah, so ARM's just going to be even worse for software. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that thing if no one wants it just for just because I like the looks. Like, it's I mean, just... Is that better than... Just going to be worse. Checklist Crusher? Like, it, it's, know, does anyone know It's what just the, like, an architecture uh, that requires a lot more effort to get similar performance to x86. Like, Cisc is pretty much always going to have better perf. If you would like uh, because you can communicate now. better to the pro no like the sys the more cisc the processor the, the more you can communicate it. what you want to do to the like processor really the, more the more risk the processor the more that you thing. beat around the bush and explain what you want to do in as many words as possible and then you hope that the processor can just chug through them but i imagine that proc would also do it as well but I, I love ARM. It's great for low power. I mean, actually, I like MIPS more quite a bit more, seconds, and now RISC V. But the like, on Jekyll is so hard to like. I just evaluate don't think it, RISC will really lot, be successful really in high strong, performance. But... Look at power. Look at fucking thirty years of power development, and it's really <laughs> struggling to get good perf. Like, okay. it is such a cool looking item too. Yeah. What about Minix yeah, in that blood? I don't know enough about yeah, it, it to and really speak to I it. I have uh, I'm all the way in pole arms. But by we the have way, had uh, justice. Freya, the um, ZG purple gear is actually pretty good for um, PvP. I I have three pieces for the um, bonus. It's a uh, it prolongs the frost shock one second, I which know. I use a ton in PvP. I will say I cannot wait to fucking get this code running. It's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so fucking good. Okay. Oh yeah, the next is the tiger boss, I think. That'd be a dank way to get a mount. Is it just get the tiger mount? Uh Bloodlord doesn't have a head, spider does. Well, only the the ones that turn into partial animals have the heads, so the Hexer and the Bloodlord don't have heads. Whoa, I got friends. We were going to have to kill him anyways. <laughs> Phoenix is a microkernel, has a lot of message passing overhead. Um, I mean, I think I like message passing, to be honest. I like message passing uh, as a kernel design. In fact, uh, one of my most recent kernels was message passing. And to be honest, oh I think I'm going to write another one soon. I think Damn I'm going to make another uh, message passing based OS that First has no um, shared memory. Basically, yeah. it'll have, uh, well, yeah. it'll have read only Double shared memory. Uh -oh. But basically, at kernel level, I will enforce Rust permissions. So. If you have mutable access to memory, aka you have write permissions to memory, 
you won't be able to um no one else will have access to it moon can tank um i think i saw a madness collection but there's too too much uh, loot stuff that roll by so i don't know i mean intel's that. management engine which uses that, minix so that's the um madness i've heard someone may have should have one oh yeah i've never really played around with that okay. read write a shared memory and message passing was mox original yeah, sin yeah, why would you have Warlocks, why would you have read write shared memory when you have message passing? Like Isn't that kind of the point to not? Is that the self It may Ackles for memory, I yeah. Know. I don't know. I just I think message Loose passing is just a better concept because be, uh, it scales back. much okay. better. Um okay. You just don't really get good scaling out of uh You don't really get good scaling out of uh shared memory. The, the latencies are just way, 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 way too high um, between cores. And it just ends up killing things because you end up thrashing all of your cache coherency uh, traffic. Nobody knows but 15 years of talk to bugs from it should have taught them better. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Is that a silence? I think that was a sign. Uh, we did a uh, priest mind controlled the imp and tank the void walkers with the imp. It was pretty neat. I know warlocks can. I don't think priest can mind. Maybe a warlock because uh, the warlock can. Oh, enslaved it. I've never seen that before. No terminated strings for life. Okay. Who the fuck came up with the idea for null terminated strings? Like, you know someone was just being a little bit lazy that day, and then we built our entire world around that fucking concept. <laughs> little firebolt hits for like a thousand damage and has a really short cast time with no cooldown. Number of advantages from microkernel comes at a cost, yeah. I don't know. I I think the performance properties of a message passing kernel should be better than a shared memory kernel because you enforce um you can more easily enforce the way that people do um uh, IPC. And you when you can you force can the way people uh, do IPC, blood here. you can. Um they, you? And they can heal people. Like, they can heal the tank with a really powerful heal that huh. also damages them. You have to be careful not to, to do it so much that they kill themselves. Right. Null terminated string was a reaction to Pascal limit of 256 characters. So what, they had one bite for the length of a string? God, what were people doing? <laughs> this shit's crazy. Holy shit, this is hot. Hot, 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 hot. Holy fuck, these do damage. God, this thing is much better for AoE. Holy shit. That's some spice. Um. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. You actually look pretty damn cool with it. I feel like trolls How and old is Pascal? work really well. When, when does Pascal go back to? Like... Trolls look good with everything. They oh. are really the best race. I'm sorry. <laughs> Trolls are just good. Yep. I'm an orc, but I gotta admit. Those imps just blasting. <laughs> That's Dingo indeed. Taking ticks from the flame strike. Whoop de doo. Turbo Pascal? I did that for a while when I was a kid. I don't know if I've ever written Pascal. What, like, what, what machines did it run on? What, uh, what OS's were people using and, and what hardware were people using? Is this, like, 60s? Yeah. Late 1960s. Oh, that's modern, then. Uh, just so you know, Saint, before we do Madness, the... Loot is gonna go to uh, master loot because uh, to do the madness bus, it requires expensive uh, ingredients. So whoever provides those gets the 
special thingy that drops from the boss. Pascal still copies this in Russia? Holy thingies, shit. Which even an, build a trinket, even an academia. Uh, then we can wow. uh, roll on it. But since the item is not What are the modern we have to make sure that only compilers the for it or interpreters one. for it? Like what 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 do you use? Yeah, it wouldn't be as big If a I want to write Pascal right now, what what do I go get? Do I go to pascal.com and get the Pascal official compiler? Do I go buy one or is there like quite a bit of annoyance, so it's just safer to master loot on this boss. God, that's crazy. Oh, it sounds like a good idea. Pascal no chess. No! I don't know why they made this specific item not tradable. It's you can't weird. you can't spell Node.js without no. Cause green is the problem. Cause what? I think they put just a lim a threshold rarity threshold on tradable. Oh, okay. Right, right, I'm gonna switch to flash heals. I'm not getting my heals off. That's tradable blue Some old turbo Pascal's thing or that ABC Pascal. Although they Holy just shit! Free Pascal or, or Delphi? Whew. Yikes! Yikes! <laughs> so, uh, Mato, you have. I think Do we you cleared have all the Let me put you. Yeah. In. Boom! There we go. Mato has the power. All right, Master Loot is on. I see, I so here you summon some what shit. Do. Let's do it. When Tacky put up fairy fire, he's going to vanish, but the fairy fire will make him not disappear. So he'll just teleport behind someone and try to shank him. Well, that's right. He's also got like an AoE gouge. Yes, he does have an AoE gouge. Um, it's wild. It's wild table, too. You can, like. Pascal is for everything. Mainframe to personal. Tank him. What? Where you're what, what games away, have been written in Pascal? <laughs> I'd like to play a Pascal. I'd like to exploit a Pascal game. Or, the is there tiger. memory corruption in Pascal? Or is it one of the early languages where it's like super interpreted and it and I'm it doesn't sure have a bears can do it, memory corruption? Can. I really do wish we like encounter an alien race, and we get to show them our computers, and they're like, really? Like you, you just, you just give yourself arbitrary control of everything on the machine. Like that's yeah. that's actually how you designed your computer systems. Are you fucking kidding me? Because I'm pretty sure someone must have understood how fucked programming was gonna be. Like when when the, when we were writing that good old KNRC, someone had to have realized like the slippery slope. Pascal also used a virtual machine. Oh, nice. Boss is kind of easy, kind of a snooze fest. I guess I say that now, when it's like, before he goes fucking berserk and enrages, like it looks like he just did. Oh yeah, he goes invis. Looks like he goes invis and then randomly re retargets or something. Shit. Some spice. I still have like full mana, I can do whatever I want right now. I can pretty aggro heal, yeah. All That's right, my experience with R2. One. Oh no. <laughs> Look, if it's Segfault, it's only 10% of the time, ship it. Dude, R2's got some, uh. R2. Segfault here or there. I'll say. <laughs> Ooh, fancy. All right, fancy. who wants the, uh, the RP pitchfork? The oh, RP pitchfork. I wish. Pitchfork with Demon Slayer precast on it. I've also heard it's good for hunters who are farming, like, fell cloth or demonic runes. Pascal was invented by Nicholas Wirth, if I remember correctly. Oh, Made the famous joke. Rage on use. Uh, it, it's 30, Nicholas Wirth has jokes that because Europeans great. pronounce his oh, name properly, while Americans yeah, it's, uh, you can use pronounce it, it as Nickel, Nickel's Wirth. He is called by name in Europe and called so by value like in America. Fight with 30 rage oh my like god. Cool down. <laughs> All right, Rabongo, you're the uh, polearm man. It's yours. I guess so. That's a doozy. <laughs> oh, 
want to see you wearing it at the next guild meeting. Absolutely. Farming pitchfork. Yeah, but you can tell us about your latest harvest, whatever that may be. Alright. The W in his name is pronounced as a V. Nicholas Vruth. Ah. Strawberry. What's this? You just aggro all the tigers? Holy shit, that looks that looks spicy. Oh yeah. Blueberry. Blueberry. <laughs> I don't know. What, does everyone call these blueberries? Like, I did this with a, another guild last week, and they also called these blueberries. It also might just be the, this group, because the two guilds kind of, like, intermix quite a bit. We got a coalition. It's pretty, pretty awesome. These guilds are dank. Fucking love this group. Alright. Dude, I like- I- I do not know how to stream a game. Can I get a buff? Yeah, buddy. Uh, this is Burnside, okay. Bink. Bink. That's a plus combat for me. You're doing great, very entertaining. I've try I try my best. I try my best. I gotta get excited. I gotta I gotta get a face cam. I gotta like I don't know. These guys always cause trouble. I don't know all the memes, get but I gotta I gotta do all the meme stuff. Oh yeah, I, I need I need to know memes. Just in general, because I don't know any memes. Um Playing the game and interacting with chat, you're doing it. Oh shit! I'm a I'm a professional streamer. Look at me, mom. I'm quitting my job. I'm gonna play WoW full time. Spend more time thanking thanking uh, viewers for subs and follow. Thank you so much, Ashingi, for the follow. Uh, woo 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 woo. I'm gonna write your name on my whiteboard. Uh. Get up from camera, walk to the whiteboard, write your name on it, draw some fireworks. <laughs> we got Obrick coming in with the two months subscribe. Woo! Whoop whoop! <laughs> Big hype! I'm taking some, uh, taking some axes to the face. Use the word community. Oh, I'm so excited. You guys are the best community. I've never had such. A great following before. I feel like any time I come on here, you guys are all just so supportive. I've got the best chat around. Everyone here is just to do good things. It's just an amazing place for all of us to hang out. I'm so thankful that you're here with us today. Bless up. Uh, th thank you so much for coming by. We're just having a blast here. Hanging out with my friends. Doing some WoW. Playing, playing, hanging out with chat. Melee priest. <laughs> 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 Rusty uh, Golang, yeah. what a fucking name, dude. That's a, that's a juice box right there. Look what Carol Baskin did. <laughs> juicy name. Oh, yeah. Oh, nothing but the juiciest names. I'm t that strawberry looked really good today on uh, on strawberries uh, strawberries icon. I gotta say I got a thing for strawberries. Now there's pretty high variance on strawberries, and I think that's where things can get a little bit risky, because because you get a strawberry and it's just like hard or it has no flavor, and that always sucks. But goddamn, a good strawberry is just the pinnacle of fruits. Like 
I like a good mango. The mangoes are pretty are solid, with the but idol, mangoes are pretty and consistent. They give a pretty neat enchant for some classes. For shaman, it's a. Uh, uh, let's see. Healing and spell damage plus thirteen, and also fifteen intellect. Holy shit! What's that? You also need one if you ever go for the trinket, which requires that madness boss, all four of them. And they only change once every two weeks, so that's a good long two months of going for it. Huh. I'll shoot the guy in the back. Oh no. What is going on with Ramungo? Uh, you, you <laughs> tell me, man. I have no idea. <laughs> Come on, man. Get back up there. Um, you seen the videos of uh, the seen the YouTube videos of people like putting strawberries in salt water and watching the bugs fall. Oh, no, yeah. fuck off. <laughs> it was funny. Get out of here with that shit. There's a a hoodoo pile. Um, they need some of this. They need. Does some any of this. herbalist need the blood scythe? He sees he jurors. I'll need the blood scythe eventually, but my herbalism is only at uh 205 at the moment. What level do you need? I got 300. Take it, because it basically, if there's a herb that you can Good actually night, Casher, take, right. Thanks for stopping by. The blood size made some strawberry simple syrup. Use it with some peanut butter whiskey and made a PB and J meal. Holy shit, that sounds good. Do you have a meal mug? Does anyone else need it, or am I taking? It? You, uh, you know you need a meal mug, if, uh, mule mug, if you're doing that. Uh, if you want the blood What's size, this? roll for it. Yeah, roll for. Oh, they need this buff too. Shit. Darklings. I need buffs. It doesn't really do any. It doesn't do anything else at all except take up spotting your inventory and allow you to get blood right, signs from her inside on buffs DG. It, you, yes, it does take. Your past videos are not available. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, I'll be able to upload them all on on YouTube. I'm curious if they're getting deleted or whatever. I kind of doubt it. Uh, Saint Isabel probably needs one. Maybe they're just too long. Maybe they just cut off after a certain time. Like they they don't store 18 hours of video. <laughs> Yeah, whatever that is. A priest doll? What's that? I don't know if I need it. If uh, Come okay. on, priesties. Don't be shy. Who wants a doll? Ooh, big rolls. Woo! Thanks, can you beat that? Ooh, swing and a miss. Oh, no. Alright, for Tiger Boss. Right. Um, all, all See, what, a, what die, is this uh, shit? Basically around the same time. Where? Uh, what like the fuck is this? Each other. And then which will trigger the second phase of the fight in which he turns into a giant tiger man. So the videos before right now, it says they're temporarily unavailable. Just, uh, maybe a glitch? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, it's just take, the, uh, the the opponent was too good. Thackle, uh, Charis take... Uh, Square Lorcan. I don't know. I haven't gotten any messages uh, or anything. Also take uh, take X. Also uh, also Rabungo stick on X as well. I, I don't think finding an Ode on stream is uh, bannable. Got it. Sometimes happens due to copyright violations because of music. That's why I stay muted permanently. Like I just only stay uh, muted. Kill them all together, and we'll be good to go. Kid. Where's Izzy at? Is she healing? I think she's healing. Yeah, she's been healing. Alright, pulling. Oh shit, here we go. Leroy. Jenkins. <laughs> it's so weird going into Ubers after, uh, like. I feel like the last time I was in there, I, like, didn't know Leroy Jenkins. And goddamn, every time I go in there, get into the whelp, whelp rooms. Holy shit. 
He has mortal strikes? Holy shit, that sucks. Don't know how long that mortal lasts for. Dude, I feel like my greater heals are just too strong right now. I feel like I'm just not being able to get them off. Like, I'm not even having a heal right now. We're like so strong on heals. I'm just like chilling here. I'm at full mana, I'm not doing shit. These fucking shamans are just nuts. Yeah, I think I think this guild might be a little bit too strong for this. <laughs> videos show up on YouTube for me? Yeah. All my videos should be on YouTube. I have them as like destricted as possible for region and I creative commons them so they're often a little bit more accessible to uh, other regions because I know like other countries have issues watching videos in the US sometimes, especially if you put like one song on it. Alright, let's see how people are doing on Get mana. The daggers. Okay. Let's see. Woo! Nice. I should have, uh. I should have used my, uh. uh. inner focus for that. You can believe Leroy Jenkins' uh, meme is like 15 years old? Holy shit. Really? I guess. I mean, WoW Classic was about that time ago. Nice shot. What's that sash? Is that a waist? I think that's waist. Um. Don't be shy to need if anything is an upgrade. Just a reminder. Not back. I like my MP5 more, to be honest. Slicer. The sash is... I'm guessing... The sash is a belt. What is the primal Hakari sash? What is... Uh, that gives you... Uh, you can turn it's it better. in. And it gives you um, a belt. A purple belt. Uh, which is actually pretty good stats. And uh, it can also be good for PvP, usually. Is it okay if I need it? Yes. Yep. If it's your it class, yeah, go for it, definitely. rep to turn in, but it'll also give you some more rep and a bit of gold when you turn it in. Do we have uh, fish? Since you meet music, yeah. here's what you listen to. Someone says I have um, thing. We may need more fish as well. I, I typically listen to, like... Well, there's a pool right here. Uh, punk pop, kind of. Okay, what's going on here? Does anybody want anything from Fish Boss? I mean, I just... I, I'm down to kill anything extra for. Oh yeah, no, Frank has a purple staff. I mean, it does have the staff of strength. It is really good. We're There's greedy bastards, basically, so we'll kill everything. The fuck is two there? <laughs> so the drop? leather eye patch isn't bad. Is up there? Okay. It's kind of it's kind of weird here. I think Mato is over here. No, Mato's over here. Shit. Where's the rest of the gang? Oh, I thought I had company down here with me. Okay, where's Mato? Keep me alive, Solara. Save me. Oh, Mato's down there. Okay. Um, yeah, I mainly listen to like. Punk pop. I've been listening a lot recently to um Vane up here. I've been listening a lot to some recent uh just like cover bands I've really been enjoying. Just random like uh more like rockish cover bands have been really fun. Just covering like modern pop music and shit. Kinda neat. I don't know. But I'm kinda all over the place with my music. I'm not super picky one way or another. Woo. We got here. Oh, these things are fun. Oh, some bee juice. I feel like we're getting a lot of bee juice. I don't know if I've won any of them though. No, I don't think so. Hetty Peg's first Spice Girls in Aqua. Yo, Aqua's pretty solid. I'll, I definitely will go through Aqua phases here and there, like. 
It's pretty, it's pretty fun. It's not ready yet. So I guess you just fish those up. Fucking Aqua. We haven't had... I feel like we haven't had any, like, goofy music like that in a while. It feels like Are all the music recently form? has been pretty serious. Can't fish in the water. Bear form is its own fish. All right, I got everything to summon the boss. Uh, frost resistance and stay over the water because you get knocked up in the air. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Roll. All right, lures down. Dude, I'm excited for this fish boss. I've never done this before. Is, did you do uh, CF? Gazronka. This dude's dank. Kind of excited to try this out, see how this goes. He looks very tank and spanky. I feel like the bigger the boss, the more tank and spanky they look. Drops. Oh, that fishing pole. It doesn't give fishing. Pole arm. Polymorph tome, which is kind of dank. This dude's kind of spicy. I actually got to do some healing this boss. That makes me happy. Got mortal strike? Fuck. Dude, this is dank. I, I like this guy. This reminds me a lot of, um, uh, not Steam Bolt, um, the, the fucking 20 man. Or is it 10 man? In uh, Burning Crusade, where you fish up the boss, the, um, oh boy. Man, I need to go play some more Burning Crusade. It's been a while. Fuck, what is that boss? I just remember, like, how long it took my guild to get that boss down. I don't know, I kinda, kinda, I kinda miss the struggle. I feel like Classic has been a little bit too easy. Like, nothing here has been really difficult to just clear, kinda everything. Which has kinda been a, a snooze fest. Alarm night. What is that shit? 2 BOEs and a pull arm? That is a cool looking pole arm. Yeah, what does it look like? Captain Ahab set. Ooh, that is dope. And it's got that glow. It's pretty cool. What's this thing here? Tackle box? Isn't isn't there gonna be a pirate hat? Uh, I think Narsen's hosting an event when she comes back. There's a, a vein over here. Oh, I gotta go to Nat Paggle for that. This uh, this trash. <laughs> Ooh, a thorn uh, Hikari vein. Nice. Yeah, definitely worth clearing trash for. I don't know. What do y'all normally listen to? Y'all big into music? I should probably move these frames just a smidge. Because I can't see all the debuffs, which kind of sucks. Just a little bit. I, I usually like my frames a little bit more towards the center of the screen. Ooh, bloodvine. Fast on the bloodvine. Chasing star will uh, collect it. If you need a bloodvine set, just provide oh, the other I'm... materials. I accidentally agreed. I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. Just I give it to uh, chasing. Yeah. Rapid hip hop stuff with some uh, metal too. Gear, Interesting. Modern just or provide the other old materials school, and the guild both will provide the blood partial. Folk punk. Holy shit. That's uh that's a uh, that's a genre. Jazz and classic rock. Ooh. You know, I never got too into classic sure rock. I got combat, a little bit can. into Metallica, but I just I will say I've, I I fuck with some like Dio, PVC although habit. Dio and Me yeah, Metallica are long ways, arguably yeah. more like yeah, metal than like rock. I guess I had like an ACDC phase when I was younger. 
Jazz is interesting though. Jazz is just a little bit too difficult for me to get into. I I like it as background noise, but I really struggled to like focus on it. I just don't I guess I don't like understand it well enough. The hoodoo file here too. Um anything without voices so it doesn't interfere with my brain? Live uh and lived with a DJ, so electronic D and B chip tunes and video game I mean, music. Cannot be Ooh. Dude, I fucking love some uh some chip tunes. I, I probably had a solid year. Like, when I first got into security, when I just, like, sat, played fucking CTF, and listened to chip tunes. Oh, okay, well, if you were... I like a lot of EDM, specifically you're, uh, Happy you're Hardcore. What the <laughs> fuck is Happy Hardcore? That sounds dank. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of a pain because they're... Sounds like something I could find like, on, uh... You have one in your bank. Uh, di.fm. <laughs> Digitally oh, imported. And follow. Where shall we drop him? Uh, the water is good. They have fish that are hungry. Mm. Oh, and there's piles of crocodiles. Heart. I've been typing hardcore medieval into Spotify search. Who's he the, following, though? Um, there are pretty good playlists. Hardcore medieval. Is that metal? Is oh, that like? Oh, he's too nice. He'll never do that. I'm I'm Follow I'm picturing some like folk metal, hurdy gurdy, corpaclani, or something. Ooh. Hardcore medieval. What the fuck I does like that the mean? Way you think. Uh, I discovered Urban Terror. I've been ha having a blast playing CTF there. Ooh. God damn. Yeah, I haven't done a <laughs> CTF in probably five years. It's, 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 been a, it's been a hot minute. That's for sure. Dude, Frost Traps are so good. There's a blueberry coming up behind us. Uh-oh. <laughs> Alrighty, now. now it's a party. Um... Dude, that's a real party down there. <laughs> I just realized you aren't talking about the same type of CTF that I am. Yeah... <laughs> yeah, that might be the case. Captain Flags. Hell yeah. What are you doing? Killing the blueberry and the panthers? Easy. I don't know. CTF's just... They eventually got too try-hardy. It eventually went from, like, fun to, like, just try-hard. I don't know. It's, uh... I, I burnt out on it pretty hard. And I didn't even get to do, like, some of the nutty stuff. I'm kind of sad, because, uh... Cause I, I've been on some pretty nutty teams for CTF, but... Everything was, like, winding down when I started joining teams. Which kind of sucked. Mind if I drop a YouTube mix as well as a ch Twitch channel? Yeah, I ain't gonna mind. lie. Baguette is some mighty fine bread. Whew. Oh, hell yeah. I'm a big fan of bread. Bread. Is this like a producer some uh, good old music? I'm not gonna put it on right now because I have the uh, audio enabled, but once I am done and I can mute it, I will give it a listen. Sourdough. Ew, that's just unhappy bread. I like sourdough. Dude, sourdough's <laughs> amazing. What are you talking about? Oh, you need to have good sourdough bread. Uh, uh, Look, I had some olive garden bread. I'll admit that's today. a possibility. <laughs> Alright, good save, Jared. <laughs> DJ producer. I watch, um. Oh my God, sorry, I had a day here. <laughs> I'm, I'm well, trying to, like, it's just learn like voices. when I was in, in Arkansas, and the only bagels there were disgusting, round, doughy things that had nothing to do with bagels. So perhaps I've had the equivalent, but in sourdough. Oh, yeah, America it's doesn't Arkansas. have Arkansas. Okay. Well, New Mar York's got good bagels. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Montreal has amazing bagels. 
<laughs> I've definitely had a handful of pretty good bagels. And they're all in New York, actually. I don't know what it is. Art cans this. Art cans. Yeah. Arkansas. What a emulator do you use to play WoW? Just one. Clearly says Arkansas. <laughs> no, it clearly says the place of horribleness. Yes. <laughs> so is it is it Arkansas and Kansas or Arkansas and Kansas? <laughs> nice. These are the thoughts that kept Drenrush out of the really good schools. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's evil. It's actually kind of oh. difficult to heal with shamans because it's hard to predict uh, chain heal hits. I actually have no idea how that works. Wine is not an emulator. <laughs> Y'all. Which win version one? I have no fucking idea. Thank you, Dren. No fucking idea. Oh, and Dren said you made coffee. Oh, no. I never said that. What? No, <laughs> I never what, Dren? Said that. Whoa, 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 no. whoa. Really? Whoa. Be real. Sweetie, no. Whoa. I Dren, used you're out of the raid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> that's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> No, that really wasn't me. Mm -hmm. Oh, was it? Yeah. Now we're eyeing you suspiciously. No, that was not me. Dude, I have to be able to get on top of that, right? Oh, this side's closer, I think. Fuck. I need to make sure I don't right-click that on accident. Damn. Anyone here play Magic the Gathering? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> like how everyone's like, yes. Asking it, asking oh, WoW nerds if they uh, play Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Ooh, come on. So what is this boss? High Priestess, a rock. Arlock. Okay, okay. Got some panthers here too. If I were a game designer, I'd ensure that jump wouldn't be possible and make it miss by one pit. Well, fuck you. I'd find a way to clip through the wall. I actually do a lot of mountain climbing in the in WoW. I always like trying to find ways into things. I have a really, really good feel for sticky spots. Fight some smell vision for me, because this kit we're fostering just took a shit. <laughs> it feels so bad. <laughs> what is that mark? Can't we don't it. have a warlock for hellfire. Put your back to a wall. People would be lying about making that jump for years, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I've I've never heard of a gamer that lies. Woo, this gets spicy, I like this. I like this. Oh, I guess those cats like enrage and it gets hot. Nice. Like it. Anything to give me more healing. So I feel like I'm kinda not making hard decisions healing right now. I blame Soria for being uh, a strong ass healer. Oh, that's the worst for ya. I guess I'll heal this pet because I'm you bored. You smell everything 3,000 times stronger than normal. Jen's I call it immersion. You can smell popcorn really well. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what's that? Looks like an all yeah, fan. Sure in your pregnancy, Dren. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. 
Good main hand and off hand for yep. healing. Where's the main hand? Weak is still here. That's a good main hand. Stuff? Physical stuff? Probably this not. is pretty much caster boss, it though. It drops an epic physical uh, fist weapon. I don't know. I feel like I like mine more. Part of the set that turns you into a tiger. Ooh. Yeah, I feel like I'm not going to get any upgrades and from here, really. And it works at ranged. So if you have the two fist weapons on as a hunter, oh. it can proc off your bow attacks. Uh, you what? just have to... Uh, I need that You just memes. have to use the strength on the truck. Where's the other... Where's and, the main uh, hand? And you'll find me uh, underneath. The two weapons is... It's, uh, Dude. Boss, the boss. Damn, I I need to play some more single player tiger games because I I definitely have kind of fallen behind on single it's player not games. Best in slot, I feel so. I played Hollow Knight last year, and Hollow Knight it's cool was it's just cool. incredible. What is that? Is that what I have? Oh, that's what I have. Okay, dang. See, when you hit sixty Saintas, you'll be pretty much all geared up. <laughs> Of, to get to 60 faster. Trench just hiding behind a tree there. What a brave hunter. Yeah, I played Hollow Knight last year, and it was fucking amazing. Brave, brave. It's like one of my favorite games I've played in a <laughs> long time. Oh, a head collection. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta finish that, but I didn't loot it off the first boss, so I'll be getting it next, next uh, week when I'm back. Honestly, I got ripped pretty fast here. Like, I'll be exalted pretty soon. It'll take like ten runs to get this, so like. Five weeks or something. Turn in some coins. Probably not gonna buy any coins, although the shoulder enchant will be nice. 30, 33 healing, I think, is what it is. Oh, yeah. That code's just waiting on the other screen. I kind of feel bad, but I kind of can't wait to get back to that code right now. <laughs> I gotta attract everyone back. Although, it's hard to say if I'm losing viewers because of WoW, or if I'm losing viewers because it's uh, fucking late and this is like the worst time to stream. I feel like right now, it, it kind of starts falling off pretty hard, and then at like 2 or 3 in the morning, it starts getting pretty good again because Europe starts waking up. Isn't there a new Hollow Knight in the works? Yes, there is, and it looks fucking amazing. They're they're adding a little bit extra polish to some of the warts of the game. Yeah, probably time zones. Yeah. It's almost 11 EST. Yeah. I mean, that's, like, pretty early, in my opinion, you know? I, can't, I actually can't believe it's already fucking this late. Shit, I've been streaming for 12 hours? It does not- I feel like I just got up. I guess we- we basically just didn't get anything yes. done today. We like, played around with shit for a long time. So I didn't really realize how late it's been. Cause we- we basically threw away code for like, 10 hours. And now we finally got some traction, and then we're in WoW. But I'm pretty sure this emulator is gonna be nuts. I think it'll take uh, like an hour and a half to finish. Um... It'll probably take an hour to do all the instructions, then it'll probably take uh, half an hour to blend it in with the current in, uh, JIT infrastructure, such that it actually uh, lifts code and stuff. Oh, fuck, I need in on that on accident. Whoops. Whoops. Uh, Good news, that's what I want here. Dead gnomes. 
stealing a coin. That's almost 70 silver. Always want dead gnomes. These people are, these are interested because they all dance and shit. It's kind of funny. Ooh. Dude, I love chain lightning. Honestly, all the like shaman spells are so good. Chain lightning is fucking beautiful. Chain healing is super cool. How hard would it be to port to Windows? It should just work on Windows when we finish it up. You'll need to just have Clang in your terminal, but that's that's about it. Or in your um in your path. But uh, I guess we use Obj Copy, but I'll have to look on Windows if an Obj Copy comes with LVM, but it won't really be that hard. So I'm using LVM's linker, so that'll work. Uh, and then I just need Obj Copy. So as long as I have Obj Copy. Clang and LD, L, LLD, uh, Clang and LLD come together. It shouldn't be too difficult. And I don't think anything that we're going to write is going to be uh, architecture specific either. We should probably be able to run this on like ARM. Although we use RDTSC for some stats keeping, but we could maybe, um, uh, we could uh, potentially just disable stats on ARM or use an actual timer or something. Sigwin? Ah, oh, fuck Sigwin. Let's get him. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can do, um... I'm pretty sure you can... I, I think... I think there might be an obj copy that comes with, uh, Clang. Can't wait to ditch Win AFL. I mean... It's not gonna work for Windows applications, but it'll run on Windows, so you can fuzz Unix applications. I mean, arguably, you could fuzz anything you could build for RISC, Risk Five. So if you can build your Windows app or whatever for Risk Five, you'd be fine. Um, although the concepts will port to anything, and quite frankly, this experiment's actually really good because I think this will probably be the way from now on that I write uh, JITs. And like, I know everyone's gonna give me shit, and they're gonna say, "Why aren't you using LVM?" But I bet I will get better performance than directly using LVM because I wouldn't emit the most efficient IR. Uh, emitting IR kind of requires that you emit things that make sense in the first place, and that's uh, not easy. MSYS? Ooh. I feel like MSYS is, like, worse than Sigwin, which is, which is difficult. But it kind of is. <laughs> I don't know. Sigwin's not too bad, to be honest. I don't, I don't mind it too much. Leave none alive. Bink. Bink. I love when I have heals land. What the fuck's happening there? I may or may not be whispering and losing focus. <laughs> but if you die, it's totally not my fault. 100%. It gives me more to do. You've been, you've been hogging all the heals. Oh, okay, well then. I'll go and uh, <laughs> sip the margarita or something. <laughs> no, no. I'm just glad we haven't had any wipes. Is this while running Lutris? Yeah. Oh wow, you can pull all those off the boss? I'm kind of surprised. I kind of would have expected the boss to aggro with that. Oh shit. Uh -oh. shit. No, 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 I was kidding about the dying. Don't die. <laughs> <laughs> That Villa Shadow's brutal. It's a real me. Seventy-five percent healing reduction. It's like probably a solid fifteen or twenty seconds. Pretty nuts. Do you have a sleep schedule? Or do you just go to sleep at random times. Yeah, I mainly just go to sleep at random times. I don't know. Sleep schedules are kind of difficult. Wow, those are interesting. Just resist. Ten to all resist. That's actually kind of cool. A lot of bee juice. 
Uh-oh. What? <laughs> These are mad at someone. I don't know. Sleeping's pretty tough. Looking for heals and rage DPS. Ooh. Someone pugging a ZG? I feel like I would not want to pug this. I feel like it's this is doable with a pug, but it's not. It wouldn't be great. Gentle, thank you so much for the follow. What's up? Yeah, I gotta be more of a hype streamer. I gotta I gotta be uh I gotta I gotta get my hype up. Alright, I am not gonna explain Jindo, just to see you freak out if you get ported in the pit. <laughs> no decurs. What's the decurs do here? Is that a meme? A meme or is the decurs a buff for some reason? Yeah, run into the right. Um. All right, let's roll. Welcome to the Great Shore, friends. Step right up to die. Slay them all. Why do you want to ditch Win AFL? Ooh, that's a good question. To be honest, Win AFL is pretty fucking janky. It's got some serious, serious performance issues. Mainly because they don't have Fork, and that, like, everything's kind of built around Fork. Um... I don't know. I, th I think, uh, I think it's okay, but... Honestly, I don't think AFL really ports well as a concept to really anything other than Linux. It relies too heavily on Fork, and Fork already is not a very good primitive. Right, process memory is basically Fork if you try hard enough. I mean, you have, uh, you have, uh... I don't know what i do with this shit. Uh, okay, I'm just taking damage. Okay. Um... How close are we? Okay, we're pretty close. I think we're fine. Oh, full heal. Fuck yeah. And a crit. Uh... Oh, man. Oh, healing. Oh, that is. That's heal is. That might. Dumb. Am I gonna wear that though? Um, is that better than 3 MP5? Yeah, for sure that's better than 3 MP5. Uh, I lose a little bit of int. I gain a little bit of spirit. So I get like 1.5 MP5 from the spirit. 44 healing. I think that is worth it. Um, what I don't like is that it doesn't do child processes, but I fixed that last week. Oh, interesting. Uh, did some calm and OLE stuff, which is slow. Anyways, yeah, calm is just a fucking shit shit. Congrats. 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 I barely did that at 58, so I don't think that's too bad at 56.
Thomas counted strings? Ooh, gross. That's too much security for my tastes. If you track child processes, it's just getting more slow. Yeah. So, what what does WinAFL use for uh, resetting? What what does it use? Does it use like one of the undocumented things for that? Because you do have get right watch on Windows, which allows you to see what memory has been was modified. Agreed, Thoria. Hold on. That was agreed. Yeah. Plate gauntlets on the boomkin. Oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Haha. -ha. I know how uncharacteristic of me. Well, grats for the whatever the two gold you got. <laughs> <laughs> It's called the Dynamario stuff uh, without tracking chat. Oh, yikes, yikes. Bye bye, perf. Dude, how fast do you, how much faster do you think this JIT's gonna be than our current JIT? Or actually, how fast do you think this new JIT that we're writing is gonna be compared to native code execution? How much of a slowdown is it gonna be compared to native? I do need to look more at WinAffle to see if there's anything I can contribute there. On a Risk Five CPU? No, this is running on XCD6. Well, no, it's comparing comparing the emulator speed versus native XCD6 compiled of the same binary. So, the Risk Five emulator versus the um, the the Risk uh, the, versus native execution. I don't have a Risk Five CPU. I don't know if there are any in silicon yet. I mean, I'm sure they exist, but I don't know if they're like obtainable. Like, I think they're like very proof of concepty. Name pipes can have more instances, uh, but it's implemented using a single instance. Weird. Yeah, w Windows in general just doesn't have the best syscall performance. So, like, doing anything related to um, resets or like changing and forking and resetting memory and reading and writing memory and other processes is just gonna be a shit show side five sells risk v commercially you can custom order your, your micro arc with what with whatever you want in the package really like i mean is that for like a large run or can i do that as an individual of like i would just like this processor please your stuff is much faster. I mean, that's that's my specialty, so it's not really fair to compare. But yeah, I'd say typically my stuff is, I mean, my tooling is is uh, typically pretty fast. Unfortunately, so flare pack on this side. Fifty percent speed in emulation versus native. Fifty percent slower. Or half the speed. Um, ha half performance or 50% slower? That, that actually might come into play here. Oh, nice. Core designer. Okay, that sounds dank. Not that I really have a need for Risk V, but um, I kind of want to buy some risk 5 stuff in the off chance that it dies out and I like own a pretty fucking niche processor in like two decades it's like oh yeah remember risk 5 yeah I've got one of those processors of Let's see. I love collecting hardware uh, get a hibernate on the soul player half performance so twice as long to run ooh that sounds like a challenge <laughs> any custom design you'd like as well can I get um Mind control. Can I design uh, it? Uh, triangle. Ooh. That's a me. Sheath on moon. Um, I gotta actually pay attention here because I'm mind controlling. I should remember and to use my buffs uh, too. Uh, psycho, give me sheath on uh, circle. Wait, the witch doctors have uh. Oh, falling. I'm a DPSer now. Witch doctors just have like a, a hex. They aren't bad at all. Oh, I'm doing big deeps. I was 
Uh, no, just a regular priest, yeah. Uh, trying, trying. That three second fucking cast is brutal. Oh, I got hexed. Dude, mind control the CC is kind of fun. So I got this axe flurry. I got a throw. Okay. I'm like, I'm, I'm doing damage. I'm doing like 300 deeps right now. I'm gonna enrage. Axe flurry. I'll cancel this when our range is up. How much deeps did I do? Holy shit! I was num I was number three deeps for that. What? <laughs> right side back is you. Uh, I'm still collecting heads. I I missed one of the heads, so I think I'm fucked. Right, double soul player. I need the head collection, uh, which is this. One and trap the other. I need one more head, Used. and I missed one off of the um. I missed one off of the spider. Although this one might, I don't know if Hakar has uh, has heads. The circle is yours, Trenner. Dude, I can't wait to see this perf. I'm so fucking excited. I'm also actually really happy to record this gameplay and have it streamed. Because, um... I love watching old footage of, of games. I don't know. It's just a nostalgia to it, which is fun. Dude, Drana, some deeps. I hope a car drops ahead. Not that it really matters. I guess it's rep, which is good. Like at this point, I just want rep so I can get the 22, uh, so I can get the 22, in, or the 20, uh, 33 healing, I think? I can't remember. Damn, these packs are thick. Uh, what is going on? I've been working on implementing my own version of printf, maybe learning Risk V. Holy shit, dude. I remember when I implemented my first printf, and it was a life changer. It made me, A, appreciate uh, print up more and B um, I was using uh, in my in my OS I was using um, like puts for so long and then I'd have to like hex print manually so eventually I ended up writing a print F and it was uh, it was amazing are you just doing bog standard print F or I add in some special sauce and we're just in a WoW raid right now. We're going to be done in... Honestly, we're about to roll up on the final boss here in about... Uh, probably about 30 seconds. And then we will... Um, get back to coding our uh, C-based JIT. Uh, which is probably going to massively improve our performance of our emulator. We're going to get some pretty, pretty cool results, I think. Ooh, Mato's leading pre-made BGs after. Um, just bog standard. Not good enough yet. 
Also finished an old project of mine. Pure Python file server and client. Oh, sounds pretty neat. What, um, are you doing floating point for your printf? Floating point format strings is pretty fucking tough. You have to green green. He does a whole bunch of shit. Good old K printf, you yeah, hope? Uh, as far as mechanics, you need to worry about. Um, not certain yet. Printf on its own is hard enough. Yeah, a uh, formatting not floats so is not probably one of the hardest parts. Uh, he has an ability where he will. Uh, why FrenF was a little custom, I think. I don't think it was compliant with the standard, but I didn't really care. Uh, we'll usually sheep the warriors or, uh, we'll, uh, feed either I had like percent or, uh, P, percent D, percent or, X, uh, or, uh, percent S. Or sleep. I keep an eye out for the dispels once the, uh, the mic control. I had all the precision stuff. Uh, he's gonna put a, uh, you guys know me that I that I really do like my uh, alignment in terminals. So uh, the precision formatter or the precision specifier is honestly what I care about the most out of anything. Percent i sixty four x. Yeah, I actually use the i sixty four syntax. I really like the the Windows uh, printf syntax. Yeah. I think it's much better than the like end quote pricks sixty four open quote. It's just a pain in the ass. So gross. And then when you combine it with like uh, when you combine that with format specifiers, it just turns into a mess. Just learn to read percent a floats. Whereas if we all have it, he will take damage. So will all of this, um, you'll kind of like send the reminders during, right? Oh yeah, we'll call it out. All right, who's on, uh, who's on son of a card duty? We've got a mage, we've got a hunter. Oh, Dran Ridge. Mm hmm. Are you on side of a car duty? No, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> um. Alright, buffs out, everybody ready to roll? Is yes. the same as percent LLX? Is it? I don't think it is. I don't think uh, Long Long works on Windows. Um, or it doesn't work on something. Like, I, I'm i pretty sure the only OS agnostic way of printing a 64-bit value is to use the prick 64. I, I Maybe I'm wrong. Um... I guess long long maybe it just doesn't support long long like I think the LL specifier might not be uh, standardized I'm trying to think huh I don't know why I've had issues with that before corrupted cloud I think I have to be a little bit careful with mana here. I should use my more efficient heals here. Drop down to rank one heals. Angry Bear the sequel. Sorry, Burnside, I'm moving your ass right now. Blood siphon in 35. Pulling up with sun. Sun incoming. Dude, I love these comms. Left side. We have to kill. Right. Ooh. I haven't really used 
green mana. stuff. Everyone needs to get in the green stuff. Oh, I missed the green stuff. Fuck. Welp, I fucked that up. Holy shit, also oh, slapping my shit. Oh, I want to heal so bad! Let go. Yeah, red, so let's try to double down on getting the green stuff. Be probably check one more sun. Why is he not healing? Don't kill me. Oh, he's mind controlled. Fuck. Well, I'm sure. Oh, Yeah, that mind control is kind of interesting. So he is... Yeah, I think the last group, everyone was sheeping, so I kind of got in a rhythm of uh, dispelling the sheeps on the other side of the Pulling sun up now. Keep on Charis. Sun coming up left side. Look to kill the sun. Everyone on sun. In the pool of green. God, that is a long run. Nice. nice. I should be hurting him. Almost there. Am I? Why did my green go away? Yeah, I think mine just ran out. Don't cleanse poison. I didn't. Who would think someone might have? Oh. Mine ran out of time. Etsy spawned before I could get there. Thought I could get cute with the mind control. Just mind control motto. Coming for your solar earth. We can, pretty sure we can kill him in the remaining time. We don't need another sun. Oh yeah, we're good. Hey, faceless. Nice hunter weapon. For the heart, if you haven't gotten it before, a need on it, especially casters and healers. If it's you have gotten it before, please pass. One. I could have gotten it last time, the heart, which I haven't gotten yet. The last time, everyone greeted on it, and I didn't need on it because I just didn't know if anyone yeah, fucking needed it. Run. And yeah, it doesn't look like he drops the thing. I don't think I'm going to get heart here. I think a lot of people need it. Wow, that was really great. There are problems. LX seems to work with POSIX. Interesting. I64 is Windows, LX is Linux, GCC... But if you use GCC on Windows, it uses uh, the MS runtime. Um, so you'd have to know, have eventually uh, use ifdef, yeah. The, uh, 8.30, I'll uh, be starting up invites for uh, BG premades. Stick around. Awesome. Thanks for Hell yeah. Thanks for the great run, everybody. Yeah, super clean. Yeah, thanks. That was a great run. Good job, guys. Oh. Okay. Yeah, first time I ever raid. Oh yeah. shit! How do you like it? Yeah, it's not that hard. <laughs> Easy is a pretty easy one. AQ will be harder. How hard is AQ twenty compared to forty? Uh, AQ twenty is still a catch up raid, and so it's be much closer to ZG than AQ forty. Supposed to be a harder ZG. Yeah, it, it's the next step up ZG, but it's definitely not a 40 man, and it's not like AQ40. It's just full of bugs. <laughs> wow, I hate it already. Bring your bugs, Swatters. 
All right, I guess we can uh, we can do some uh, hackage again. Oh, there's Drenners. See all around. Yep. Okay. Noise. It's just it's just chatting us now. We're back. Uh, premades at eight thirty. Yeah. All right. I think I'm gonna miss this premades. I'll probably be back in a bit. My PVP gear sucks anyway, so there's not much I can do. Okay. So what were we doing? We were writing some. Um, we just finished loads, right? Let's double check. Let's double check. If that, blank that. Okay, good. Equal. Okay, go to. All right, so yeah, let me change my stream info. Um, high performance risk v jit. <laughs> uh, fuzzing with risk v jit. Change this back to science and technology and done. So, what do we do here? Byte, half word, word, double word. Uh, byte, half word, word, one, two, four, eight, one, two, four, eight. Here we generate a mask. We go through, and for every position, we or the permissions uh, in. So we're making this mask that will contain all those permissions. We load RS1 into an address. We add the immediate to it. And then I'll mute the sound as well before I get banned when I turn on my music. Bink. Okay, now we can blast some music. Okay, that's, that's too blasty. Yeah, let's get some, uh, some of this going. Um, okay, so then we add the offsets. We then check if the address is greater than the memory length minus this, and this is correct because if the address was zero, the memory length was eight, and the size was eight, this would be zero. Zero is not greater than zero, which means it would fall to here. It would deref permissions using the type, the load type, and then if the load type is correct, uh, or it'll load the load type off of here, and then it will and it against the mask, and then if it's not equal to the mask, then uh, the permissions don't match, and we do a uh, exit, we set the exit reason, we set re-enter PC, and then we return. We actually weren't doing that. Um, exit reason, re-enter PC, and then return. MD Trodev, thank you so much for the tier one. So, exit reason is read fault, re-enter PC is the PC, then we return, that exits the JIT, and we set the exit reason and the re-entry location, then we set the register into RD with the contents of memory, we deref memory with this type, it'll sign and zero extend accordingly, and we load that into RD. Okay, I think that is correct. So now... Uh, here we compute the address, and then we just have these different types here. And let's grab these from the JIT. I think the JIT has better tables. So we need the access size and the load type. Um, access size, load type, and then... Okay, yep. This this one gets a little bit harder. Um, this is a store byte, uint eight t. This is a uint sixteen t. The uint thirty two t. And this is a uint sixty four t. Okay, eight sixteen thirty two sixty four one two four eight. Then we will generate the flag. So we'll create the permission mask, the right permission mask. And once that is complete, we will compute the address. 
And to do that, we'll do this, which is the same logic as the other one. Uh, load RS1 into address, and then wrapping add the immediate sign extended, converted to U64. Then we want to basically do this same logic, honestly. Very similar to the same logic. Um, bounds and permissions of the address. So this will give us the bounds and permissions. So before we do the write, we're going to check to make sure that it matches the perm mask. This is a store type. Store type. Store type. This is then a write fault. So once again, checking the bounds of the address, loading the permissions, and then checking them against the existing. Then... Um, if we make it this far, then we want to, um, we want to grab the permissions using the store type. So that is checking the permissions, and now we update the copy on write flag. So to do this... Yeah, this is where we might lose perf, is all of these updates and dirty bit updates and stuff can, can hurt us a little bit. Ever hear about Core Wars? I don't know if I have... I, it sounds familiar, but I don't know if I'm too familiar with it. Um, so this is auto perms is equal to this. Oh yeah, let's just do one read. This will be perms. And then, so we load the perms. We... Oop. Oop. We'll just do this. We can't do it before the address check, the bounce check. So load the permissions. And then once the permissions have been loaded, then we can uh, perms and equals. Uh, so we load those permissions. And then we want to and them with the... Um, so that's the perm mask. Uh, compute the write permission mask. The um, and the uh, raw permission mask. So let mute raw mask is OU sixty four raw mask or equals perm raw. So this is gonna update the initialize bit, the read after write bit. And so, whoops. Then, at this point, we will and the permissions that we just read with the raw mask ULL. We can hex it. And this will be, so we need another store type for this deref. Here we need a, uh, a raw mask, and then we then copy this address. So we take the per whoops. We take the permissions. We write to it, and we or it with the perms shift to the right by three. Right. So we load the permissions, we then and them with the raw bit permission field, and then we shift it into place. This is going to take a um, store type. So store type and the permissions to get the raw bit, shift the raw bit by three, which should put the raw bit, um, raw bit, shift one, two, three. That puts it in the read bit, we or that in. So this is, um, Enable reads for memory with raw sets. We do that unconditionally. It'll be cheaper to do it unconditionally than to... Um, I think it's cheaper to do it unconditionally than do it conditionally. Like, the branch would be more expensive than the memory write, if that makes sense. Okay. Check permissions, read fault, update all that. Then... Um, dirty. Okay, so then we need to update 
the dirty bits. And to do this, um, we have uint pointer t dirty. So that's already in a uint pointer t. So what we want to do is if dirty bitmap exceeds um, I think we hard code the length of that when we pass it in. Uh, store word. Oh wait, we can't we can't overflow the dirty bits. It's impossible. So all we have to do here is uh, state dirty state dirty index plus plus equals um is equal to oh this is only if the dirty bit's not set so we'll say if um shit auto bit index is equal to unfortunately we actually have to do this uh bit index is adder divided by 64 auto um Or this is the block index. No, block we want to divide by the block size. So take the address, divide it by the block size. Dirty block shift in this case. Um, so this is the block. Then we want to get the bit index, which is the block divided by 64. Auto um, index and bit. This is block mod 64 and then we want to check that in the dirty this dirty bitmap is actually u u64 so if uh state dirty bitmap index and uh, and then the bit, we'll just shift it in place. If the, if the dirty bitmap and the bit, then if this and bits is zero, then update the dirty thing with the block, and that's it. Dirty index plus plus, update the dirty bitmap. I think that logic is now correct. Um, Core Wars is a 1984 programming game. Two more battle programs warriors compete for control of a virtual computer. Oh, interesting. Huh. Okay, that's actually kind of neat. Some viewer, uh, maybe some viewers may like to implement it as an exercise. Oh, that, yeah, that could be super fun. I'm not very good at game programming, but I think it would be fun. So memory land exercise, if it's above, then it's a fault. And then here we check the permissions. So we load it, we end it with the perm mask, and then we check whether or not it's equal, and then exit with a right fault. Uh, in that to, if a right fault occurs, then we do a right fault. Otherwise, we come through here and we get the raw bit, shift them into place. So we grab the permissions, which we already loaded, and hopefully this will get optimized for us, maybe. Um, and equals this. Shift the perms in to or in those bits. Compute the block by dividing it by block size, which we can get from um, block shift. Dirty block shift is, oops, this is dirty block size. So take the dirty block size, divide it by that. Divide that down by 64 to get the, index and then get 
the bit by doing the mod, and then if it's equal to zero, then add it to the dirty list. And then continue. This might kind of hurt us, perf-wise. I don't know, it's hard to say how expensive this is going to be. But there's not, I don't think there's really a simpler way to do this. Um, okay. So then we have add i. We load rs1, we take rs1, and we add this. Then we have set less than immediate. So we will do this, and then set reg rd to... Can we use a bool? Uh, we can do a turner, ternary operator. So we can see if it's less than unsigned, this will be a long long. This will be unsigned. This will be RS1 in this case will be an int 64T. So we'll take set less than. So compare them one else zero. So if RS1 signed is less than immediate signed, then store one into RD, otherwise store zero into RD. Okay, set less than I U. We'll do this, convert this to a U64, set this to U in 64T, even though it's already that, I just like it explicit here. Auto RS1, load RS1, XOR it with immediate, store it into RD, or that. Uh, shift left logical. Okay, these ones should be relatively easy. These are roughly the same. Um, shift left logical immediate. So we just take this and we shift it to the left by um, the shamped. Uh, so we just shift that to the left by the shift amount. In this case, we shift it to the right by the shift amount, and then in this case, we shift it to the right by that amount, but we int 64t it first. So int 64t, and then we shift it, and then that is a uh, signed shift. And I think everything here should build, okay, uh, 2278, some raw misc shit, put some semicolons, perm raw, okay, let's pull that in. Okay, 2304. Oops. 2304. Expected in format string. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, double curly on this. Okay, it builds. Um, of course, it's not done yet. So, RS1 shift that. Okay, now, here's our type. Get rid of those. Okay, so now we want an add, but this add is slightly more complex because we will grab RS1 and RS2, and then we'll take RS1 and we'll add it to RS2, and uh, we actually don't need format args for this. So load RS1, load RS2, add them together, store them into RD. Subtract, same thing. Uh, shift left logical. Um, I don't know the properties of shifts in C. Um, C shift um, modulo. Undefined behavior if out of bounds. Okay, thank you. Not fucking surprised. So, and this with OB123456. Right? So, RS1, shift it by RS2, which we mask. Oh, we can't do that, can we? Um, that's a 3. That's an F. There's no, there's no B. Maybe there is in 64-bit um, x86. I'm not sure. Or in, uh, sorry, wow. Uh, in C++. Um, 
set less than. Set less than will grab this. If RS1, uh, once again, don't need format strings. If RS1 signed is less than int 64t rs2, okay, one, otherwise zero. This is the unsigned variant, just cast them to uints. Um, XOR, same logic as this. We just XOR. Shift right logical, same as shift left logical, except we shift right. And then shift arithmetic, we take this, and we int 64t this. And I don't think we have to int 64t this, but I'm going to do it anyways, because I'm fucking scared. If it's a nop, it's a nop, and I don't care. If it isn't a nop, then I care, because it's scary. Um, or, and and, and this one we just and the two, this one we just or the two, and this should build, and it does, and that means we're getting close. Now we just have the add w, and friends, so to do add w, we do, um, u in 32 t, u in 32 t, so we do the unsigned arithmetic, rs1, wrapping add, as an i32, and then we sign extend it. So, um, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we just add the two together and then we sign extend it. Um, so should I just do the signed add? Is that fine? If I just do int32, int32, this is the same as uint and then sign extending it. Right? Yeah. Because we add the two together, so we cast them to U32s, we do a U32 addition, and then that gets implicitly cast by sign extension to the um, U64, which is in the register. And then subtract, same thing. Um, SLLW, this is the same logic as this, except we change this to a 1F instead of a 3F. And... Do I need to cast this? Yes, I do. Well, were we not doing that? R shift left. Uh, as long as you cast it at the end, it's fine. But we'll do uh, U and 32T. So, and then shift that over. This one will shift this to the right. And then SRAW. Uh, this will be an int 32t, and we'll make this an int 32t as well, just because we don't know the interactions of those and we're scared. What CPU is this emulating? This is a RISC-V processor. Um, and there are no flags on here. Fence, we truly have to do nothing. E-call, we emit a return similar to this. So e call um, program plus equals uh, ref formats r star okay and then we have to pass in the PC the current PC. So uh, this is an e-call, and we'll have to add that to the list of supported things. And then e-break will do the same thing. This will be an e-break, and the re-entry PC is just the current PC. Now we have to do add IW, and we're basically on the home stretch here. Add IW, we load that, and then we do an int 32t, 
plus um, plus just an int. So in this case, we just want m as i64, right? So int32, we then add an int. In this case, we can just say int32, not that it matters. Um, we take an int32 rs1, we add that, and then we store that into rd, which will get it sign extended. Um, and then there's a shift left logical IW. So let's go grab that. Um, here we go. For this, we get the shift amount, which is now five bits. And then we just shift uh, u int 32 t. We just shift that by the shift amount. Okay. Shift it to the left by that. Then shift right and shift right arithmetic. So this will be a u int 32 shift to the right by that. And then the shift right arithmetic will be an int 32. And I'm pretty sure that is everything implemented. And it builds, okay, RS2, uh, 2468, I think I saw. Yep. Uh, 2535. M equals. Okay. Uh, 2193. Get rid of those. And that's no warnings or errors. And then we need to add e break and e call as possible exit codes. Add a set reg w that adds a cast in 32. I think a few more are missing. Looks like you're missing sign extension on some of the 32 bit shifts. Um, oh, yeah, probably, actually. Um, um, because this is unsigned and it won't get signed, the result won't get sign extended. You are correct. Good fucking eye. Um, we're just going to wrap this in. I think I like this. Um, it's a little bit more verbose, but it's the odds that we fuck it up drop dramatically. So these are now, it doesn't, so we're doing 32 bit adds, right? So these are gonna yield U32s. And then they're identical. We take two U32s, we add them, that produces a U32, and then we sign extend this. So we'll, ca we'll put this in parentheses, cast it to an int32, and then cast that to an int64. Um, okay. So... Any place we do a W, uh, get, 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 set, get, get, set. Um, uh, those are unsigned. Oh, yeah. Am I doing undefined behavior? Am I doing any ads with, un uh, with signed? No, 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 nope, 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 good, good, six, six, and six for those uh, shift amounts, okay, add those, subtract those, shift these to the left, 
cast these, one zero, cast these, one zero, uh, XOR, shift right, shift right arithmetic, and then OR, and, okay, so we have the W's, get W, set W for all of these, and get RS1, RS2, add them, subtract them, shift to the right, or shift to the left, by and 1F, shift to right by and 1F, uh, int32, RS1, shift by, in this case, we're actually fine here. Ah, fuck it, we'll keep it. Um, then, down here, at IW, we now no longer want to do this, and we want this to be as a U32, and this will be unsigned. So take RS1 and add this unsigned uh, constant. In this case, we want to, the shift amount will always fit in there. RS1 is already a U32. Oh, set reg W on all these. Um, RS1, load into a word, shift it to the right, or shift it to the left by shift amount, which is and this. Um, w and W, this one is implied already. And then this one and this one and we can shift those. Okay. Define that behavior. <laughs> um, set reg W, we just have to make those. And I don't think these macros were too large. Yeah, they weren't bad. So we have set reg W and get reg W. And in this case, this will int 32t of this. So wrap wrap whatever the expression was in parentheses and then cast it to an int32 and then assign it to uint64 which will cause it to get sign extended does everyone agree with that um reading the zero register we literally just uh oh actually let's do zero ull and then in this case we'll do zero u so unsigned long long and this is unsigned, so a 30, this is a 32-bit unsigned thing. So when we auto, when we use auto keyword on this, this will be a 32-bit signed thing. And then in this case, this will be a uint 32t of that. Does anyone agree? So read the register and then truncate it to a uint 32. And then that's what that type is, and we can assign that to an auto, and that will get that type. Does everyone agree? Okay, so now we should have a full implementation of this. Um, I honestly think I'm going to change all constants to hex. I think it's more often I want hex than I want decimal, so we're just shipping it. Add I. And then that, I64, that's an LL, not a ULL. Uh, ULLs. Hex, hex, hex. Make this one hex. Uh, make this one hex. Make this one hex. Make this one hex. Make this one hex. And that should be everything. Technically, we could make this OXO. Not that it matters. Um... And we'll make this OXOU. Okay, now the code will be a little bit more consistent. And it did build, right? Yeah, that compiled. So here's the code that we generate for this. Uh, that loads AWI PC. We then load... We subtract uh, 1C, which is very confusing. 
So uh, add that. Okay. Go to 1e0, go to 1e4, go to e8. And then ec gets here. And then this exits because of an indirect branch, and it wants to go to target, and target in this place is uh, a register with an offset added. Um, and so now we can object dump it, or end assassin. Oh my god, that's so good. It's the same as it was before. I think we have a sub in here that we didn't have before. So 2c2 fe8, we just store that into gp. We store 7a7e. 7 7e. Um, into something else. We move 2C to A72. We then update a 0 and that at the same time. We move the 100F0 into something. Uh, I forget what that one's from. Um... Hundred F zero. That's the return. Yeah, that's the return address. So we store the return address. We write a zero to the. Oh, that is the type. This sets the um, exit type. That's the um, a branch or indirect branch type. And then we set the branch target that we want to jump to is one B one F eight eight, which is the mem set location. And then we read out of the code, and then we will observe the type. We'll interpret it as it wants to branch to this. We'll read this type from our Rust side of things, and we will either end up jitting that code or um, uh, continuing to execute. We ever do a rant about Go in comparison to Rust? I don't know Go well enough to really do a rant on it. Why is casting to the unsend long, long unnecessary? I'm not quite sure what I was doing when you asked that, so I can't really answer that for that case. Um, if you mean the ULLs on the integers, uh, integers in C++, or constants in uh, C and C++ by default are int 32s, which means you have to explicitly say they're 64-bit or explicitly say they are uh, signed or unsigned. We you learn Go for a rant? Nah, I, I don't think Go has any use cases in my life. Okay, so now let's look at memset. Memset's a good, a good juicy one. Um, so here's memset, and let's see. Let's just lift it. I'm just going to forcibly set PC temporarily. So we'll hack it in there. I just want to see what memset looks like, because this has conditionals and uh, memory loads and stores, and we haven't seen those yet. There's a chance this doesn't even build because we emit bad C. Um, duplicate queued PC. Okay, sweet. I was expecting that. Um, uh, Q dot, that means we hit our first loop, which is fantastic. Um, but this happens if we do a, a Q dot push back. And we really just want to check that. Um, honestly, do we really need to check here? I was thinking... We would check here so we don't omit the go to, but I think we're doing it anyways. We might as well put the push back and then we can just handle the dupes here. All right? I feel like there's a reason I thought that I wanted to handle it at this location, and I think it was something related to the go to's, but it doesn't matter. Um, if I lifted it, I can queue it, and then I come back around, and then here I can say, if visited, uh, if not this, then, um, re uh, continue, um, already disassembled, uh, already jitted this PC, right? So if not insert, we already jitted it, we just continue and we re reuse that code, we don't re-emit it. Okay. Holy shit, it compiled. Um... So here's what it produces. It built. No warnings, no errors. I kind of want to see what some of these. This is a... I guess this is what a write looks like. Holy shit, this is cool. This is cool. So, yeah, like, look at this. Load immediate is adding 
uh, RS1, and it grabbed RS1 from zero, and, like, I'm doing that. In, in the current stuff, that's, that's, like, actually doing some expensive operations. It's, it's doing an ad when it doesn't have to. So, this is what I really want to look at. We have some locals. Not that big of a deal. Um, we, we directly just store a 15 into T1. We then load... RDI plus 60, so we load RSI and racks. We store A0 into A4. We compare racks, which is A2, and we compare it with T1. We compare it with T1, but we know that T1 is a constant, which is an F. So that got cons propped. Uh, branch of less than or equal to unsigned, which is jump not above. Um, yeah, not above is the same as less than or equal to unsigned. Um, okay, let's continue on here. This is doing a move. We add F, or we and against 15. Um, branch of not equal to zero. So we move here, we do a jump zero based on the result of the and, gorgeous. We do an LEA of this. This is um, a fall through. Uh, branch if not equal to zero, here's the fall through. This is loading 203C. What is this? What is this? Um, compute RCX, multiply it by four and add it to this. And then we store that. Yeah, like there's like, um, Uh, move racks, 78. Read this, write this out. Do this thing. LEA R11. Jump short 7B. Here. Otherwise, do this. Move EAXF, sub this. Move this. I don't know what all these magic LEAs are. I'm confused what these LEAs are. Um, jump if it's zero to here. So this is the f this is the not equal to zero is this. So this is actually the jump path. So this first one is uh, 1B2038. Okay, here we go. Multiply something by 4. Yup. And then add PC to it. Oh, yeah. This is literally in one instruction. We're doing two instructions here. Actually, we're doing three. We are just directly multiplying that by 2. Um determining the PC address, uh, adding that in. One instruction just does everything there. That's fucking sweet. Oh, yeah, because this uses a jump table. So this memset is actually really weird. It uses a jump table for the different alignments. So if you're, like, 15, 14, 13, so on and so forth aligned, it will jump to those, and that... We're going to see a ret in here because of that. Yep. This is doing an indirect jump. So this will return out and it will say, I would like to go to R11, which is dynamically computed at this location. So this contains a table. Um, it's basically dynamically figuring out where to jump here. That's what it's doing. So it's trying to figure out 1B1 FD8 is here. So it's trying to figure out, should I jump 
to here and do 14 bytes to finish up or should I go here whatever 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 and then when I jump to one of those we'd end up relifting and whatever okay here we load constants move that uh, I think we're doing D word loads and stores yeah it looks like we are this is Whoa, where's our return? Um, any place that we set exit reason, we need to return. And we are returning there, and we're returning here. And we're returning there. Okay, so what's going on here? Um, oh, I think this is preparing it with the fault code, maybe? No, or maybe that's just unrelated. Compare, add, so subtract eight. Move, here we're actually reading the memory. Here we're anding it, jumping on zero, if it's zero to seven D, and seven D will be an exit. This will be a return with an error. And it comes from ECX, so it reused that exit path, which is nice. This looks pretty good, actually. This looks pretty fucking good. This is using registers all over the place, so we see a lot of loads and stores to fetch registers, but it looks pretty fucking good. Um, I don't know. I think this might be ready. I think this might be ready. Um, this looks pretty solid. It's not as good as that first instance, but, um, anything that's doing weird jumps and loads and stores like this is going to get a little messy, but no big deal. So we want to duplicate this state structure in our side in Rust, because this will take it in the first argument. Um, that move executing three instructions at a time was impressive. Yeah, like... That's the sort of shit that I think we're going to get from this. So we're ready. This is going to return a vec u8. And the vec u8 will be the um, standard fs read um, test.bin dot unwrap or expect failed to read um, JIT code, right? So we read the JIT and we return that into a vector. Okay, so now we got rid of the test. We can get rid of that. Um, so now we can go and um, so what does this return? This returns a string which then we assemble. So we're gonna change this a little bit. That's the binary. Let temp is equal to, um, uh, test JIT. We can pass it a PC, numblocks and corpus. What's numblocks? Determines if a target is out of bounds. Do we not do that right now? Why do we do that? So we want to check if it's out of bounds of the JIT. If it's out of bounds of the JIT, we would have a fault occur here when we go to fetch it. So I don't think that's a big issue. Okay. Um... PC, so this will take a PC, um, 
insert the program counter into the queue. And what else did it call? Generate JIT. It also took a corpus, and the corpus it used for code coverage updating. We can just do that. Um, actually, we can't do it because we go a little bit ahead of time. So we'll have to figure out a different way of doing code coverage with this model since we disassembled the whole function. Um, and that's okay because I kind of wanted true code coverage anyways. So we'll, uh, we'll look into that. Um, which means test jits will only take the PC. I'll basically say, hello, I would like to, um, this is generate the JIT for this PC. Then that will update the JIT tables with the PC and temp. Uh, add mapping for temp. And then that updates the tables, which also returns the location it was installed into the JIT. Okay. Okay. Now this is not going to work. We're going to get a seg fault because we call into it incorrectly. Um, GDB target release uh, fuzz with emus. Just see what happens. X and I PC. Uh, we jump here and RDI is just fucked. Um, which makes sense. Okay, so we need to use the calling convention, and to make the calling convention work, we need to make this same structure, but in Rust, and we need to reprocee it. Uh, make sure this stays in sync with the JIT, uh, the C++ JIT version of this structure. Do I need to mark a structure as a C structure if I'm using C++? Is that a thing I have to do? U64. Um, U64 for 33. Memory is a mute U8. Permissions is a mute U8. Memory len is a U size. Dirty is a mute, mutable pointer to a U size. Dirty index is a U size, and the dirty bitmap is a mutable pointer to U64s. Okay, same layout, unless they have virtuals. Okay, sweet, thank you. And then exit reason, this is um, an exit reason. And I'm pretty sure if we do repr c, and we take this enum, we can just go up here and go bink, exit reason, and make sure this stays in sync with the C++ JIT. And then this structure, we just want to be where we store registers and all this information. We might have to change some of these things to U sizes for some safety and shit, but uh, we'll see. Okay. I'm happy with that. Now we have to use it. Oh, get rid of semicolons because it's Rust. What's the point of Repr C? It changes the layout of the structure to match uh, Rust's interpretation of it. Um, so this is uh, um, hmm, I don't know, guest state or something like that. And then an emulator where we have registers, we will replace this with state guest state um, JIT compatible storage of registers and other information related to the JIT. Okay, so then this will now fail to build. This will now be, um, oops, and I'll mark this. Honestly, I'm going to change this to U sizes to commit some sins. Uh, 
Um, drive, clone, copy. Okay, guest states. So anywhere that we do dot registers, this will now be state dot clone. Um, so that's when we fork, and then. Um, do, 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 guest state. This is guest state. Uh, drive, oops. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do default, can I? Because, because we have a 33 byte, a 33 array, don't we? Fucking. Uh, fucking hell. No default on this. Copy on that. I'm pretty sure that's not gonna work, but this will be, um, state.regs. It's for tracing. Self.state.registers. Regs. It's the only thing we restore here. Um, self.state.regs, okay. State.regs. Regs. State.regs. Okay, yep, no default for this. What a language. <laughs> Exit reason. Um, let's add a none in there. Okay. Exit reason none. Uh, re-enter PC is a zero. Regs is a zero for 33. Memory is a zero. Um, permissions is a zero. Memory len is a zero. Dirty is a zero. And dirty index is a zero. And dirty bitmap is a zero. Obviously, those are pointers that we'll need to update. This should now build. Sweet. Now, what we need to do is um, call into the JITs, where we currently do assembly. So this is to invoke the JIT, where we do this shit. And now, we just kind of flip this around. And we do similar logic, unsafe again. Invoke the JIT. We have the JIT address. Um, so we want to set all of these flags and stuff. So we'll do self dot state dot reenter. Oh, don't care about that. Um, memory is equal to self dot memory dot whatever. Um, dirty in use. Self dot Dirty index is equal to this. Dirty index, dirty bitmap. Okay, self dot. How do I get dirty bitmap here? Oh, I grab these early. Memory perms dirty and dirty bitmap. Okay. So self. So this is memory. Self dot state dot permissions is perms. Dirty is self dot state dot or er, um, dirty self dot dirty bitmap is dirty bitmap I think so we're basically setting up 
all of the context uh, for JIT execution. And dirty index. Um, so we set up memory, permissions, memory len, memory dot len, memory, memory len, self dot memory dot len. Okay. Self dot state dot memory len is self dot memory dot len. Then we set dirty, dirty bitmap, dirty index. So we're basically setting up the calling convention and all the things that we pass into the JIT. The registers are in place where they are, so there's nothing we have to do about it. So memory, permissions, memory len, dirty, dirty index, dirty bitmap. Then we have a scratch pad, which we're not using anymore. We don't even need it anymore because we have this. Update the PC reentry points. Um and set the dirty states. So all of these things are important. So we're going to set the reentry PC to self dot reenter. Um, update that, and then we set the dirty in use to self dot state dot dirty index, and this is state. And then panic, and I'll panic with the self dot state dot exit reason. So this should give a none here. Let's put a question mark on there. Exit reason debug. Okay. So exited with none, right? Panicked with none because we don't actually execute any JIT yet. But we set up everything correctly. So now I'm going to make a function pointer out of thin air based on the JIT adder. So we'll take the JIT adder as a const uh, ref this as a const function which takes in a mutable reference to guest state. And then we'll deref it. And this should give us a function pointer. Um, and we invoke this with a mutable reference to self.state. So turn that into a uh, I can't maybe go directly there, so I have to do as const u size as this. So JIT address as a constant u size because it is it's a reference to a u size as const fn, and that should panicked with e call. Okay. Uh, one CD FAC lifting one CD F ninety. Why are we starting there? Oh, because um, we have it executing a little bit ahead here, um, so we're gonna get rid of that. This was basically this was running the emulator to a certain point. We're gonna have it run from the very beginning of execution. Here we go. We got an indirect branch exit. So we went to 100 CC and we got an indirect branch exit and the indirect branch <sighs> Holy shit. Um Where's that panic? It's an emulator. Okay, here. Um exit reason and then we can print the hex which is the self.state.reenter PC, see what it says. Let's see where it wants to go. We have an indirect branch and it wants to go to 1B1 F88. Holy shit. So, um, we're gonna put a loop here. Cause we're already a little cozy. I, I don't know, we'll do this, I don't, fuck it. Um, this is set up the JIT state. This is create the JIT args. 
Um, and we can do this outside of the loop. Set up the JIT args, or er, uh, create a function pointer to the JIT, and then update the reentry point. Honestly, we want to have a really fast path. None of this stuff will change. All these things are constants, with the exception of the dirty index, which will change. But we can do that outside of the loop because we own. Um, we only have to set these things up once. So we set up the JIT state, then we do this loop. Uh, we, ha we cast this pointer, this is free. It looks expensive, but it's uh, basically free. Then we call func. We update the P PC reentry point, which we only do if we break out of the loop. And we set the dirty state only if we break out of the loop. Because everything is managed in that, everything's managed in the state structure. So this is the core execution loop here. So this should still work. We're in a loop now, um, and we're going to panic. Call the unsafe function, yeah. So then, this is the hot path. This is where we want to be. So what this is going to do is... Um, when we hit an indirect branch, this is just a very, very fast special case. We're going to say if self.state.exit reason is exit reason um, indirect branch, then uh, JIT adder, is that mute? It is now. Um, if it's an indirect branch, then um, if let sum, and we want to look up in the JIT cache, we want to do a JIT cache lookup. Yeah, let's just get access to that permanently. Let's do that for a, a bit, a hot minute. So we want to get access to the JIT cache, because that unwrap is not necessarily free. We want to look up the self.state dot re-enter PC. Okay. Ent is this. And that can return a none, if I'm not mistaken. And let's make sure that is fast as fuck. Inline. Um, I don't even care about the alignment. Uh, we're going to get that. I guess we can do this. If let sum ent is ent, and we can just do this. Ent is equal to this. Kind of gross. Um, then uh, quickly check. If this is an indirect branch, uh, check if we already know the JIT address of the branch target. And in this case, we are doing a lookup, which is calling this, which is inline. And we're basically just doing a lookup in this array, um, returning none if it's out of bounds, returning none if it's not present, or returning some if it is present. And then at this stage, I can say JIT adder is equal to um, uh, quick re-enter. We can say JIT adder is equal to ent uh, continue quick re-entry, uh, re-enter. Okay, then in all other situations we break. Um, Either it was not an indirect branch, or we need to lift uh, the target, right? So either it was not an indirect branch, or we need to lift the target, so we break out of quick re-enter. Now we're in this path, which we can now be a little bit slower on certain things, and we'll do a match um, exit reason. Uh, self.state.exit 
reason. And then we want to do effectively this logic, but slightly different. So branch decode request. Yeah, we can get rid of that. Um, yeah, so exit reason none unreachable. This is an invalid state. Uh, exit reason e call. This is an exit reason read fault. Exit reason write fault. Exit reason timeout. If you don't have yet, we'll add it. Uh, exit reason break point as well. Okay, and this is exit reason invalid opcode. Okay. Um, e break. This will be uh, VM exit um, software breakpoint, something like that. Or we'll maybe call it e break directly. Um, risk v breakpoint instruction. Okay. Now. I have to make sure exit reason. In um, this, I have to stay in sync. They're now in sync. E break not found in Vim exits. Um, uh, e break a um. Risk V software breakpoint instruction was hit. Uh, one two oh two reentry PC. Um, self dot state dot reenter PC. Self dot state dot reenter PC. Uh, one two one zero. Oh. Exit info. Um. Yeah, we don't have a way of doing this. What? One one five two. We'll have to make a way to do that. Um. Reenter PC. This is U size. One one four seven. No EQ for this. Okay. Um, indirect branch not covered. I agree with that. Um, uh, just fall through to translate to JIT. Here we go. Fuck. It was making progress. But something's wrong. We got to this jailer. So let's see what that did. Oh, am I running threads? No. I'm not. Okay. Okay, let's see what we do here. Not possibly related. I still think there's strict aliasing UB in memory accesses. Do we have F no strict aliasing? Um, where would the aliasing be?
Uh, okay. So, this is executing, it's lifting all this shit, and then we go to 1v1 F88, which is good. So we get a request to lift that. And we lift it. And we're doing shit, and then we get a 1v1 FDC. Ah, yep, because we're jumping to this location to get rid of these bytes. And then 1B204C. Uh, this is the return point from here. So when we do the jump in here, we return from there. That looks good. We have a 10FO. So we return to here. Like, so far, things look like they're doing stuff. If the program stores to memory as U32, then reads back as U8. C compiler can reorder. Um... Because they're different types, and since they're different types, um, since they're different types of accesses, it can reorder them. I mean, I can just give it no strict aliasing and just call it a day, right? Will that just solve that problem? We're now at, what will that change? Okay. So... Okay, we get to there, we're executing, then eventually we get to this jailer, where we call at exit, 1CB874. Looking good, looking good. 1010C. Branch shift equal to zero to start. Ah. Uh, so we branch to here. One bob o o, libc init array. Okay. And then this is where we have problems. X and I PC. Ooh. This is probably an unaligned access. Um. Yeah, this is probably an online access. X10, XG, um, PC, or RIP plus... Oh, well, we know the address. It's this. Yes, that's unaligned. Um, and we need to... We. That's really fucking cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so we need to pad our JIT cache. Um, add mapping. And this is code.len. Copy the code into the JIT. The code is isolated, so we don't have to worry about anything. Update the in use. Okay. Um, align size. Compute the align size of code. Uh, code.len mod. So it's not looking like it's actually a very serious bug. Um, and not OXF. Uh, this ensures we can do aligned um, vector operations because we ensure 16, uh, we ensure alignment of loaded uh, files, of loaded JITs. So this. JIT remain is equal to JIT.len align size um, that one is code len and then this one is align size so then this will basically keep all of the JITs aligned Okay, um, so it's now running pretty fast. Um, let's see, uh, exec null.
Um, so it's hard to see what's going on there. 101.90. JR0. Ooh. Okay. I'm guessing we're not supposed to get to here. Okay. The only place we can hit this is that one spot. Um, show line. Dump lines. Show line. Jump to frame dummy. Beaks. Jump to zero. I mean, that seems correct, um, but why are we getting there? Oh, it's because, um, because we're not Birkin. Because I think we just always return zero from Burke or something like that. Hmm, not quite sure. Um, yeah, we're not seeing any sys calls here. Okay. And why would that happen? Or just exit proc, doing all this shit. Okay, we're about to ret, one bob 10, libsy init array. And question is, why is it getting there? So let's, um, okay. Uh, I think we want to add this code for tracing. So emit, here we go. There's the instruction start label. If enable tracing, then we want to do a, um, Hmm. Trace buffer U size. Well, the trace buffer will have a um, trace index or trace len. Okay. I'm pretty sure trace len. Okay, so then we'll go down to here and we'll make sure that these have those definitions. So we'll have a uint 64t pointer. Which one comes first, the array or the pointer? I think the array. How do I do a pointer to... How do I do a pointer two arrays because I think if I do this this is um an array of pointers Is 
Is there a way to do that? Because, like, I recognize I can do it myself. That's not a problem. Um, but I just wanted it to be strongly typed, but I don't think I can do it. So this is a... Yeah, just star star. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to... Because I want to copy regs into here. But whatever. Um, I wanted to be able to index this by something that would jump by regs 33. But that's not going to happen. So this is the trace buffer. You can type def it? Okay. This is a um, trace buffer. U int 64t times trace buffer 33. I mean, that looks fun. Um. Trace index is a u size. Trace len is a u uh, ha, size t. Jakes. I literally deleted the rust to write rust. Size t trace len. Okay. Uh, guest state. Trace buffer, trace index, trace len. Okay, so then here's my theory. If enable tracing is set, then um, program plus equals ref format. Okay, something like this. Um, if if the cell uh, state trace index is greater than or equal to state trace len built in trap. So if the index exceeds or is equal to the length, then it's a problem. Otherwise, we will do state trace buffer state trace index is equal to state regs. And we'll just see. This assignment will fail if it doesn't allow it. Um, uh... So if the trace index is above or equal to the trace line built in trap, otherwise copy into the trace buffer the register state and then uh, trace index plus plus. Okay. Um, a ray type this is not assignable. Is that true? Can I not assign an array? I feel like it can copy like that. Okay. Mem copy to here from state regs for size of state regs um, and technically we don't need ampersands on those because this will be an array this will be an array 
And this will be a size of an array. Do you need built-in memcopy? Probably. Yeah, that's still going to call memcopy. Um... Okay. This code perf doesn't matter. Go through all of those. Int. Okay. Sigil. Nice. That is my built in trap because it's not happy. I'm guessing, let's try this. Where did we allocate to? Probably like here. I'm guessing that is this built-in trap. If I don't get rid of this, this will seg fault with a null deref. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, so then I just have to set these. Was missing for the mem copy to get the address. Well, an array is already an address. Um and an array index or when you have an array, you don't need to do an ampersand to get a pointer because it's already a pointer as is. And this will be the same speed as a, as a mem copy because it will get optimized to the exact same code. Um, and we can demonstrate that here. Oh, I was doing a lot of those. What the fuck is this doing? Shift up by eight. Okay, I was hoping that would be better code, but apparently it's not. Um, unless this is wrong. I could do um, plus ii times 33. I'm going to do this. Um, and then we'll just make this a pointer to u64s. See if this is better. Okay, it's the same code. Okay, it was doing the same thing. Um, trace index times 33 plus ii, blah, 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 go through all this shit. All right. Now, we can't do memcopy because we don't have uh, memcopy. We don't have access to a memcopy here, sadly. Um, this is the trace buffer. Uh, self dot trace equals 
Yep, trace dot as pointer as u size. Trace index is self dot trace dot len. Self dot state dot trace len is equal to self dot trace dot capacity. Okay, and then we have to update the trace length as well. Update the dirty state, update the trace length, and then this will be uh, self.trace.len. Oh, this is self.state.traceindex. So then we update the length. So this will hopefully panic and produce a trace. There we go. There's explicit panic. And that means I now have a PC trace of everything it executed, which is apparently wrong because the um, PC is wrong. So to do that, we'll just do cell state trace buffer in fact we'll go to 32 we'll go here we'll add 32 to here and then we'll get this directly from a constant which will be pc okay so now i have a pc trace and here i can see 100cc that's where it starts, and this is the trace of execution. Fantastic. Uh, one bob ninety eight. So that's that right there is the reason why I want this in C and not in LLVMIR, because this would have not taken five minutes in LLVMIR. <laughs> it just wouldn't have. It's, it would have sucked. And this is not the only thing that I'm going to end up adding like this. So we have a trace of everything, um, but we also have a trace. And now we can see 1bob98 is where we were. We were doing a ret. And this ret loaded ra. And ra was 0, which was on the stack. C does make it insanely accessible. I like that it's faster and easier than assembly. Yeah, that's that's all it's meant to be. Like, I think it's pretty obvious what it's doing here. Um, okay, I think there's a decent chance that we have a bug in our uh, memory uh, saving and loading because this RA here got fucked. And if we look at the top of this function, one bob oo, the return address on entry of one bob oo, uh, which is what it's going to save, right? So one bob oo, the return address is one one oh one one four, which is correct. One bob oo, and then let's make sure by the time we get to this location where we're saving ra, so at twenty, we get to twenty. And RA is still correct. So then we save RA to SP. Teej, thank you so much for the host. Hell yeah, how's your stream? Was it good? We're going to store that D word into uh, 24 SP. And it's here. RA is here, right? And then we end up getting to the end, and by the end, when we load RA from SP at 1 bob 84, um, we end up, RA is 1 bob 80, and then the value we load is 0. Was a good stream? Did a short bonus stream. Usually don't stream at this time. That's awesome. Going to sleep now? Have a good night? Yeah. See you around. Nice emotes. God, I got to get some fucking emotes. Damn it. So lazy. Okay, let's let's really open our eyes at loads and stores here. 
N8, N16, N32, N64, N8, 16, 32, 1, 2, 4, 8, 1, 2, 4. Okay. Permission mask is this. The perms don't really matter here, to be honest. Um, memory. State memory. Um, and it's a UN8T. Um, and we store it into RD. And, I mean, that looks pretty fucking straightforward. Um, this is likely the last code that we loaded, so let's take a look at it. Um, we should hopefully be able to view this. Mm, no, we just happen to have something else in here. Shit. Well, let's see what a load is. Maybe in here there's a load. 101.84. Frame dummy. That was the last thing we lifted, but I don't think it's the last thing that we actually executed. And there's no loads and stores in this frame dummy. Shit. Um, I'm trying to think what the best way to debug this would be. Um, Reenter PC is where we are. I mean, we deref that memory and then write it into RD. Like, um, okay. So maybe the store fucked up. Maybe the store didn't end up initializing, didn't end up writing to the memory. Um, if the address state is out of bounds or this, then we have a write fault. We didn't ob observe, th observe that. Holy fuck, do we not write to memory? Do we just not write to memory? Uh, <laughs> uh. So, uh, how's everyone's day going? Um, yeah, um, so let's not talk about that one. Uh, so then we'll cast what we're assigning and we assign from, we store from a register. Oh, we can do this. What a tragedy. What an absolute fucking tragedy. Set reg. Um. Uh, or get reg. We want to get... And this is store type. And we want to get from um, inst dot rs2. Ah, come on. Inst dot rs2. And I don't know if that's vim fucking up. I'm pretty sure it's vim fucking up. Okay. So, at the end, uh, write the memory. So, we are going to store 
RS2. We're gonna get the value of RS2 and then we're going to place it into here, into this expression, which is going to set uh, a quality to there. I'm pretty sure that's correct. State memory plus address, which is in an auto. And we use the store type and we just set the store type, deref that, and then we assign inst RS2, which is a U64, but then we only end up writing the, um, the smaller size. Oh, well, that, that was a doozy. Unused variable RS1. The fuck is this? 1A5E8C, this is a NOP. I see. I agree. That is a NOP. Um, I think we just allow this at this point. That's just going to happen sometimes, I think. Now we're chugging. Not expecting Burke. Yes, exactly, because we haven't implemented breakpoints yet. And if we don't have breakpoints, then uh, we're going to hit Burke. So I think we're good now. I think we are clear. Um, breakpoints. Okay. So if... Now the way that I'm going to have to make this work is going to be a little, little gross. And I was kind of dreading this, but... Uh, so we do the trace, and then here, insert breakpoint if needed, and basically we're going to say if PC, if PC has a breakpoint registered for it, then we will emit code that will do, um, uh, um, Uh, just like one of these bad boys. I don't think there's really much I have to do here. Um, this is a breakpoint. And we're just going to do this. We'll use a raw string. Set this. Um, state re-enter PC is equal to uh, the hex PC. It's now a format. And then state, um, uh, we just return. But this is about to get more complex because this will return to its own instruction, which is a little bit of a problem. And since this will return to itself, so this technically would work right now, but it would inf infinitely loop once we had a breakpoint, right? PC.0. So set that we have a breakpoint, and I think we already have the logic for that on the other side. Um, if it is a breakpoint, yep. If the exit reason is a breakpoint, then we get the re-entry PC as the PC. Uh, we look it up in the breakpoint table. If it exists in the breakpoint table, then we invoke the callback. Um, if the PC changed, then we're going to have an issue. If the PC did not change, we're re-executing where we left off. Um, and yeah, so we'll do this. So this will work. We would hit this panic if we enter the breakpoint. If we have a breakpoint where we don't set PC, but all of our breakpoints, we actually end up setting PC. Um, one of those took a long time to compile. OK. 
Okay. I'm curious how big some of these things are. I want to see what program.cpp looks like. So it's 8,000 lines of code here. And I think the reason this is happening is, um, like, I'm pretty sure we are going into calls. So this is a return path. So we get to a return path, and then we're chugging, we're chugging, we're chugging. Um, so the, f the jumps will follow both paths, but I think we'll also include functions when there's a jump and link. So a jump and link, I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to find one. Maybe this function is just big. This function might just be big. Uh, one eighth o oh, three seven eight. Okay. Um, one nine fc twenty four. I see. Okay, so here's one in fc twenty four. Now, this is the jump and link, and this will update the trace. Oh, is it slow because of the trace, or is it actually just that slow to compile these things? Um. Let's turn off tracing. But actually, I do want to look at what a jump and link looks like. So we set the return address. Oh, that's 24. So 24. Whoa. Oh, this is um, setting the trace buffer, setting the current PC. Update the trace index. Then this is setting the... Um, this is setting the next instruction address, and then we go to 90. Yeah, so we are lifting functions when we do a jump and link. Um, and basically, we lifted the inside of FN match into here. And basically, um, we need to avoid that. And to do that, I'm pretty sure, I don't know what a branch is. Um, is that a tab? Tab, branch, tab. Um, what's an... The f oh, it's a J. A J is an unconditional branch. Okay, and let's see if we have a 19FDC0. Um, I can't remember what instruction this is, but it looks maybe different. Um... So, actually, I think an unconditional branch is a branch of zero with, I think an unconditional branch is a branch if, uh, branch of zero where you use the zero register. I didn't know if it was a jump and link where the link register was the zero register, which discards the link and thus doesn't actually do anything. Um, gel. Unconditional jumps. Okay, so that's jail. Jailer. B and E, B L T. Okay. Um. I guess branch of equal to zero. The J instruction has now moved to the U type, and the J instruction has been dropped, being replaced by JAL with an RD of zero. So that is true. So um, you can jump in. So I need to special case that. Okay, I was right. So effectively, um, there can be a jump in link, and a jump in link. If it is a zero, then it's fine. 
Um, so we can say if inst.rd is register zero, then it's a branch, right? So this is a um, unconditional branch is equal to a gel with an rd uh, equals zero, right? So if the destination register is a zero, it's an unconditional branch and we'll treat it as part of the graph. But in this case, this is a, this is a function call because we're doing the link register. And in this case, we will just make sure that function calls terminate a block by um, doing this. So a function call um, treat as an indirect branch to avoid inlining boatloads of uh, function calls into their parents. Right, so we're going to indirect branch is equal to uh, exit reason is indirect branch, and then the reentry the reentry PC is the target which we know. It's a ULL. Um, this is a format bang ref. We're getting there. We're getting there. This is target and then a return. So basically, if it's unconditional, just do the go to and cue the target for exploration. Otherwise, uh, set that it's an indirect branch, set that we want to re-enter at the target PC, and then return from the JIT. State re-enter PC is hex ULL. Okay, and then I'm pretty sure this should be ULL. So all of these should have a ULL after them. Unless they're actually supposed to be longs. Just double checking. We have wearer, so it would probably yell at us if we didn't do that. Okay, so now... Now it won't lift... It won't inline all branches. Ooh... Uh oh. What did we break today? Yes! It's a 16 byte aligned thing that's supposed to be 32 byte aligned. So, oh, thank God it's not a real bug. Um. We're just going to 64 byte align them. We're going to cache line align the fucking jits. That way we can do AVX 512 if it wants to. Come on. Um, we're not still tracing, are we? No. Okay. It's just taking this long to, to generate all the stuff. Um, holy shit. Now it's running. Oh, and it's zipping. Okay, so let's see what we did. Um, lifting this, let's just print it like that. Hell yeah. 
And we can cache this, we can make a cache folder where we cache the hash of the contents because I'm pretty sure it's not expensive to generate the C file. The expensive part is, um, the expensive part is actually invoking the compiler. So I'm pretty sure if we just generate the code and then hash the code and then use that as the cache file name, then we can cache all this shit. I'm pretty sure I was getting like 300 cases before. I can't remember if we did it at the start of the stream. Um, holy shit. Holy shit. We're getting like 2,000 a second. Um... Fourteen sixty a second. Ah. Oh. Um, and we can do this minus one, two, three, four, five. Sixteen seventy seven is the average. That is good. That is one core, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure we were getting 300 a second before. I think AFL got 1900 without ASAN. And we have ASAN. AFL with ASAN would get like 900. This actually is literally fucking faster than AFL. <laughs> when doing the same thing. <laughs> now... We gotta double check some things. We gotta make sure that our, our code gen is still working and everything's fine. We need to make sure that we're doing the same thing. I bet this generates some insane x86 code. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh, from an initial glance that looks really good. We gotta run some tests. I think I wanna compare the trace of the JIT, the emulator, and the... um. Uh, I want to compare the traces of all three and make sure they are identical if any of them are different. See, that's the beauty. We have implemented three different RISC-V emulators. And odds are, one of them is right for something. <laughs> if we have, like, an actual, like, small error, it would show up pretty fast. That being said, this does honestly look accurate. So, um... So let's throw this in tracing mode. This will now panic after the first execution and we'll get a trace. Holy shit! That's insane! Oh my god! And we're doing this like, um, the, the loop thing, this like pump, this quick re-entry, actually, is any code here do we use any assembly? No, we don't. So this is cross-platform, with the exception of our RDTSC. So we could run this on fucking ARM if we wanted to. <laughs> there, nothing about this is OS-specific. Uh, OS-specific or target-specific. So let's just wait for this to finish up. Then we'll get the trace out of it, and then we'll see. We gotta add caching to this. Marking state is restricted would be even faster or better. What does restrict do again? It, it says that uh, it's exclusive uh, access. No one else can modify it while you have it. It says no aliasing. Okay. Do, do, do. It's a bit slower when I'm logging all the traces.
Um, no other pointers can point to it. Okay. So then that means it can assume... Um, it can assume... Let's see. And is this... Do we enable traces? Yeah, we did. Yeah. I think it's just taking a long time because these traces are massive. Unless it's broken. Also, I'm marking all up. Okay, there we go. Explicit panic. And now we should have some big ass files. PC trace and trace. Honestly, that's that looks a little small. This looks a little small. Um make dir um x uh um cjit test move star trace dot text to cjit test okay so we saved those traces and now let's see if i can enable the jit easily um i don't know if i can let's see what happens here I can't remember if I really destroyed anything. Um, well, I could make the emul I could run it in emulation mode. So let's see what happens in that mode. So just disable the JIT. We can also try the other JIT, but uh, this will probably take less time to set up. I don't have tracing set up in this mode. So this is just running right away. Um, yeah, we're getting 50 fuzz cases a second in this state. So if that holds up, if we're truly getting that like 1600, then it's a uh, fucking 28x. That's it. It's just a 28x over this. Well, that's that's sad. Um, so let's make sure these traces line up. Um, so the way that traces work, oh, it's actually really easy, um, uh, fn, uh, run emu, and then here, when we execute an instruction before the breakpoint, right, that's where I do it here, um, yeah, before the breakpoint, I update the trace buffer, it's right after I list it, lift it, okay. So then here, we will do um, if enable tracing, trace push um, uh, self.state.regs. We can just do that because it's Rust. Um, self.trace. So now we should have a trace from this mode too. Explicit panic. Oh! <gasps> Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, a trace is just a superset of PC trace. Um, Well, let's edge. That's identical. Trace is identical. That means the register states, um, the register states between both the emulator and our JITs are identical for every single instruction. So, and that like, honestly, I'm kind of surprised. So I'm removing those files, and we'll run it again, just in case, um, like I'm a little bit concerned, like, I'm honestly shocked. I'm honestly pretty shocked. They're the same. They're identical. Holy fuck. God damn, I'm good. Okay. Uh, so now we can see the performance we're getting 
because we know the number of instructions per case, um, oh yeah, and what was that saying? F 5580? Um, oh yeah, this could potentially be off. I'm going to collect code coverage before breakpoint handling. And then we'll go back to this mode. I just want to see the um, instruction, the coverage count, 5582. That did slightly change it because the breakpoints could hijack execution. So 5582, I should be able to do a um, cat PC trace unique or sorts unique. Uh, WCL, 5582. Cool. So that agrees on the amount of coverage that we have, which is exactly what I want. Then, um, okay, so now we're running, and we know that, oh yeah, and we can do that on the other, um, CJIT test, this, 5582, sweet, they agree. So we know that we have 496,510 instructions being executed per fuzz case. Um, and if we look at this, this is likely an exit syscall. This is where it ends. Yes, there's the exit syscall. So everything lines up. So that's how many instructions we're running per fuzz case. So then we don't have the instruction counts yet on here, the instruction counters. So we let this warm up and get spinning, and then we can determine how many instructions per second we're performing by doing kind of a moving average of this. Um, okay, Python. So this uh, minus one second, two second, three second, four second, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 10 seconds, 1678 per second. Um, and we can make that float. We can take the number of fuzz cases per second and multiply this by 496510. And we are getting ah, 833 million instructions a second. That's meh. Honestly, that's not great. Eight hundred thirty-three million a second. That's like three cycles per instruction. That's about the same as our other jet, isn't it? Hmm. Um. I wonder if it's the. Could try removing uh, no strict aliasing. We'll try it. I don't know if that will really change anything. I mean, ultimately, the bottleneck is, um, we're going to try this, but ultimately, the bottleneck is uh, our permission updating and checking, right? The read after write, the uninitialized memory checking is probably killing us. Do you want to know what I think would improve this significantly? Yeah, what would that be? Hmm. 
Okay. This perf is likely going to be the same. I can't imagine the aliasing stuff would really change anything. One, two, three, four, five. Like, I, I doubt it's even changing a byte of code gen here. Um, okay, that made it faster. Okay, let's... Okay, maybe I'm wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... Yeah, it's a little bit faster. I multiply that by four nine six five ten, eight seventy seven million. Okay, so ultimately, the main issue here is permissions, and these checks are not cheap. Um, so I'm going to disable permission checks temporarily. Just to see how much of it is perm checks versus other shit. It's temporary. Uh, okay, then down here. Um, that just loads the address. And then that does permission checks and updates the dirty mask, which is important. Um, we do need to update the dirty stuff. So... We'll put a comment in here, down to here. So we'll disable the raw bit update, we'll disable the permissions checking, but we'll still do the dirty bitmap update. Um, is branch prediction suffering a lot from having each chunk as a function? Uh, or are the blocks big enough that it doesn't matter? I mean, this lists whole functions. So it shouldn't be too big of an issue. We could also try that inlining of uh, functions, but that might start hurting perf. Honestly, the 64-byte alignment is probably really hurting our, our cache locality in the JIT. But obviously, we can't really run this without these perms checks. But I suspect this will be significantly faster. Um, honestly, the dirty bit update is probably relatively expensive. It is a conditional, um, and I don't know if it'll optimize it to a bit test and set, but anyways, this, go to 49, so this is 10 seconds. In 10 seconds, we did this, yeah, 2848. Now multiply this by 496510, and we're doing 1.4 billion risk 5 instructions per second. Um, it's pretty fucking good. Um, it's pretty good. Um... So, I need the dirty bitmap update, but I do want to see what the code gen looks like for that. So, hopefully, this has, this has a dirty bit update. So, let's take a look at what this looks like here. Um, object jump D test vim dash. Okay. Um, and this... Asm B64 test up in. Um, oh, does this have a breakpoint and it got optimized out? I'm very curious. Like, this is good. That's nice. The dirty update is expensive. Now, accumulating this list is often good, but maybe it's hurting us. So let's see. I'm just going to try and stop it mid-handling something, and hopefully we can get something that does...
a load or a store. Um. Okay. I don't see anything that obviously looks like a loader store here. Move. I'm looking kind of for a double DRAF. Okay, um, I'm looking for like an 808808 pattern, effectively. How are there no loads or stores here? Or did they turn into different things? So, would restrict help get rid of all... So, like the large amount of memory access to get access to registers. Oh yeah, there are no permission checks. Okay, so I would be looking for a I would be looking for, well, there'd definitely be an ink or an add one. Nope. Nope. That has to be a memory access in one of these fucking things. Or it really made them look not like memory accesses. I would expect an add one or add or something. Add byte eight. Shift right. Test. I think this is it. Yeah. So this is a memory access. Okay. Oh, it's not looking great. This, so this is a store, and it looks like we are, um, we already had it in a register. We're adding the offset. We're then making a copy of it. We're dividing it by 64. We then do something else. We then... Oh, we make another copy. We divide that by even more. We move R eight D one. We schlex. We we shift that into place. Yeah, this is nuts. And then this is getting the dirty. Um, this is getting the dirty. Table? Did we not already have this? This is adding one, and this is storing it, right? This is this is incrementing 138 by one. I don't know why it's not doing an add of one on that. I have no idea. Um and then here it's storing the uh result. So this is a store. Add offset. Shift that or divide it down. We're getting the byte and the bit index. We use the uh, byte index here, which is um, we shift left to get the bit index. We test by the bit index. If it's non zero, then we go to A9. Oh, this is actually included too. Then we go to A9. Otherwise, move this, move this, 
Increment the uh, dirty count. Holy shit. Increment the dirty count. Um, store the dirty value. And then we're to the next instruction. Or we're loading something back. This is, this is a single store. This is a 64-bit store. Oh, here's... The, this is the actual... Or maybe this is a... No, this is a store. 1A9. Jump non-zero to 1A9. This is the store. So this is the entire... This is the final where it actually writes to memory. Um... That's that's a bit much for my taste. That's a bit much. So I can do um BTS. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh bit test and set GCC. Um, okay. This, and then a bit index. Return the bit at index blah and set that bit to one. So let's try it. We compute the block. And then we do if bit test and set state dirty bitmap block do this. So use the bit test and set instruction. Um, and then it returns, return the bit at that, and then set it to one. So, and the logic here is A plus B. Yeah. Okay. So this, we need to divide to get the block from the address. And that should be cheap. That should just be a shift. Well, a move, a copy, and a shift. OK. So now, um, let's see how much that gets us. Um. Include m and trend dot h. Now we made it x86 specific. Son of a bitch. What? Let's try this in trend. No, that should be an image trend. The fuck? But we're getting 1.4 billion instructions a second with that sort of shit going on. It's horribly slow. It's not true. It's not true. It has a fucking latency of 1 and a reciprocal throughput of 0. 0.5. Where are you on? Um... Mm. 
Maybe it's an issue with, um... Yeah, Imantrin should basically pull in all the intel shit. Huh. I see, so they made their own, if it's Clang, otherwise return that. I mean, so I can just do this, right? Now it's a competition. Um... What is this? Um. Oh, whoa. Is it that? I don't think so, but still. Okay. Uh So bit test and set, I might just yoink theirs. Might just give it a little uh, yoink. Um, and hopefully this doesn't generate any code, but it shouldn't. Uh, static. And a long is 64 bit in this scenario. So we're okay here. Um, let's do unit sixty four T bit position. Oh, fuck off. Um, we marked it static, so it shouldn't actually get used. Okay. Here we go. Bit test and set, and then set sill. Um... So now, test sill sill. Yeah, I don't want that. I think I might just write it myself. BTS. Okay. So we have a bit position.
clobber condition, I agree. Um, is this where it came from? Retval. Bit test and set. Claw recondition code. Um, and bit base was the argument. Yeah, these are the arguments. So reg or mem. We want it in a reg. Well, that's retval. We actually won't use a retval. Ri, does that mean register or immediate? Um, lock. Block. Block. We'll just say register. Put that shit in a register. Bit test and set. Jump non carry. Uh, jump carry. 2f. 2. Let's just first see if this builds. Okay, bit base. Yep, this is not that. This is um, state dirty bitmap. Ah. Uh... Outputs, inputs, then clobbers, right? I think the plus M, these are just inputs. Inputs, outputs, clobbers. Okay. So now we should have BTSs. Here we go. So we get the address from racks. We shift it right, which we have to do. We divide it by 128. We bit test and set RCX, which was loaded from before. And then if it is carry, then we go to CA, okay. So then, this is the code where we want to add that block. So what we do is we move from the block into the, um, this is the uh, dirty, Plus, oh, and then here we just want it to be um, dirty is memory, which comes from state dirty um, block. Oh, no, not block. Uh, state. Dirty index. Uh, we'll just pass in the dirty index, I think. So we'll pass in dirty index. And we'll pass in... Uh, let's see, is it called dirty index? Probably dirty IDX. Dirty IDX 
And that is memory. So that will pass in the address of the dirty index. Um, move from dirty index into racks. I don't know, we just need to register. Scratch. Um, we'll actually pass this in our register. And then we should be able to do DREF dirty plus mod scratch add one to dirty index. I should have just done Intel syntax because I'm I'm not I'm not too great at uh, the syntax. Oh, uh, scratch, which is an output, and it's just a register. Shit. Got some quotes missing somewhere? Yeah. Uh, we double parent this. So we give the pointer to the dirty index. And expected after asthma operand. Trash. Auto trash. Oh, yeah. Uh u int 64t uh, and we don't have to mark any clobbers there so that'll allocate a register for us oh fuck off um, equals r yeah the new rust uh, assembly syntax is real nice Dirty index, uh, IDX. Okay, this should be close. Fuck. Uh, dirty is, yeah, this is, um, dirty is a register state dirty. So we pass in the pointer to the dirty list, we pass in the dirty index, pass in the block. Okay. Come on. Show me some bit tests. Well, now they don't want to show up. the fuck are they? Oh, volatile. Oh, um, we can set a memory clobber. Because it does, it does depend on memory. Okay. I think that's the issue. Expected what? Did I? What did I change? Oh, 
Oh, it's correct. Okay. I'm surprised it didn't show up until the volatile. Yeah. Did I not rebuild it? The fuck is going on now? Um. Do I need to say move L? The fuck is a real yeah. Oh my god, what a piece of shit. Just relocate it. What the fuck does that mean? Oh, move Q. Yeah, um... I don't know. Nope. Dirty index. It turned into this. Oh, is this not the syntax for adding shit? I think I have to do like one of these, don't I? Or I do like this or some shit? What a piece of shit syntax. Oh, fuck off. Um. Instantiated into this. The fuck? The fuck is that supposed to look like? Where can I find a fucking example of that? Oh, is it just is it just supposed to be this plus this but in these brackets? No, oh, fuck you. Oh, you ah, oh, it's commas. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Thanks, piece of shit syntax. What absolute garbage. Who the fuck designed this and thought it was a good idea? Like, actually? Syntax is absolute ass. Um. Bit test and set. RSI by RDX. Yep. RSI is the bit thing, a bit base, which is memory, which is the dirty bitmap. Jump if carry. Okay, so why is this crashed? Um, move RCX RCX. Um, why was I putting that in a scratch register? Because I wanted to save it before I added to it. Oh, yeah. What the fuck is that? Um, dirty index is memory. Right. 
Requires a pointer operand. Mm-hmm. Do we the do we do that? Now unless I just do this, I just say the memory. I always forget fucking gas syntax. Add three twelve RDI. Okay. Uh, add, do I have to add Q? Because it doesn't know the size of the operation. Yeah, and then do I have to do like a dollar sign or something? Because it's a constant. Yeah, I think I have to do a dollar sign. Some shit like that. I don't know why I didn't just make this Intel syntax. Call it a day. Um, now what's our problem? Bit test and set RDI... Then we read the value at RDI into RCX, and then uh, ah, I see. So I guess so. It's fucking giving me the same register that I'm using. How do I do an um? It, does it do a laid out by default? The fuck? Are you serious? Seriously? Equals overwriting an existing value. Yep, least constraints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Modifiers. It's an early clobber, which is written to before the finish, before the instructions finished using the input operands. Ha ba ba. Do I have to do equals still? Equals and? Yes. What a weird default. Hey, it works now. I'm pretty sure. Yep. So, bit test and set RDX. If carry is set, then we go directly to 1F5. So, this is now the new store. If it is already set, we jump here. Otherwise, uh, read the current index, write the shifted value, write the block address into there, and then add uh, the quad word, or add to the index. So update the dirty block index. Okay, so now we get to see what the perf looks like. Hopefully it's good. BTS... JC, shift right, move, BTS. So can I beat this? Uh, we have to get the pointer to the dirty bit map. We then set the bit in the bitmap. We jump carry. We then have to read the value that is there in the address. And then we move that and then we increment it. Now in theory, I could get rid of some of these loads. Keep in mind, these loads are relatively rare because this is the hot path, is that I just jump past here. The hot path is it's already dirty and you jump past. 
right? You only pay this penalty if the memory hasn't been touched yet. And if the memory hasn't been touched yet, it's already an expensive operation. So all I really care about is how quickly I determine to get the fuck away from there. And I do that pretty fast now. Okay, so it's not, right? Okay. Um Load RSI from that. Unless I'm not supposed to deref that. And that's the problem. Yeah, it just crashes. So that's clearly not right. Holy shit. If this were Rust, it would have been over like an hour ago. But of course, fucking gas. Bit test and set, jump carry, get the dirty index, move the block into there, and add one to the dirty index. I don't see why that's not right. You can change it to Intel syntax, so I'm a little bit sunk cost, but... Um, okay, well, we can peek at it a little bit. Dirty bitmap is directly after dirty index. True. And 130, which is R8, should be dirty. So we get the pointer to that, and we store it there. Add one to RDI plus 138. which is the index. Yeah, because that's definitely dirty. Then the index. Yeah, I don't know why this is wrong. It's got add one, but no eight. Oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Comma eight. That would make sense why it didn't crash as well. Yeah, that's 100% what it is. BTS, JC, okay. So, um, we don't have a great way to reduce some of these operations. So all that matters we are getting, we have to deref this to get the address of the table. And then we do a bit test and set. And that's all we're doing right away in the inline assembly. So we immediately do a bit test and set based on the block. And then if it's carry, jump to 153. And then we just continue. So that's much cheaper now. Here's the actual, um, here's the actual store. I'm getting the memory base. I'm looking up a register, I think, and I'm getting the memory base, and then I'm writing to that. So we are still pretty memory access heavy, and I'd really like to cut down on that. To be honest, this might not be that big of a speed up. The, 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 we might have had so many memory accesses just due to registers. So you said restrict. If I mark, how do I mark the pointer correctly as restrict? Restrict struct, or do I put it like in some place intermingled with the pointer? Because I know it can get really weird with uh, consts. Is it just like this? Or do I have to put it after uh, an asterisk? int star
star restrict. Okay. How much faster is this? Honestly, this could hurt performance, potentially, because... I think that hurt perf. Um, because it can't optimize around that as well as it could before. Right? Wasn't it getting, like, nearly three before? So I think that's hurting it because it can't optimize that out or around. It can't really reason about that code. Okay. Um, set the dirty bitmap, and then we have that restrict keyword. So I'll put restrict here. Um, hints to the compiler for the lifetime of this pointer, only the pointer itself or a value derived from it, such as pointer plus one, will have access to the object, object which it points. Okay, sweet. Um... Under, under. Okay, that's building. What's this? More restrictive. Huh. Okay, how's that looking for perf? This minus 62, 52. Divide by 10. Holy shit. Also try marking as many of the struct fields as possible const. Oh, you're totally right. Um const Wait, does that mean the that means the Pointer is constant, but not what it points to is constant. Right? The pointer itself is content, not constant, not what it points to. This is also const. This is const. That is not const. This is const. This is const. This is const. Const unit 8t means it's pointing to const memory. Are you sure? It means the value can't be changed using, yeah. I call this the cons coin flip. There we go. This is what I want. 
pointer to a constant value. This. To declare a pointer to a constant value. Okay. We can also mark the pointer itself constant. Star const. You're totally right. The const keyboard between the asterisk and the pointer name. Const, 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 const. <laughs> well, now this is a fucking mess. Kind of hard to make this shit line up when you have those. I actually don't even know how I'd want to format that. Um, the regs are not constant. The re-enter PC is not constant. The exit reason is not constant. Um, this, the memory pointer is constant. The permissions pointer is constant. The size of memory is constant. The dirty uh, pointer is constant. The dirty bitmap pointer is constant. The trace buffer is constant. The trace index is not. There's no reason to mark this const, right? Okay. So not constant, not constant. Pointer's constant. Pointer's constant. The memory length is constant. The dirty pointer's constant. The index can change. The bitmap is constant. The trace buffer is constant. Um, the index is not. And the size of the trace uh, buffer is constant. Okay. Y'all happy with that? Also try to restrict on some of the pointers in the struct. Um... And that restrict is only for the lifetime, correct? And if restrict is only for the context of the pointer, the pointer, the lifetime of the pointer goes out of scope when we return, and thus it's not going to not flush something to memory. Um... Okay, that's not really doing anything. I'm not too surprised. So then I can say restrict const memory. And should I just turn this into a restrict as well and get rid of this? These are already restrict because this is restrict, right? The fields are. And then this is saying that what this points to... So what this points to is restrict. The pointer itself is constant, but what it points to is restrict? That's really fucking confusing. Um... Because everything here is exclusive access, right? Every single pointer in here is restrict. Whoa. What? Reg should be restrict. Oh, change it back. It shouldn't matter, though, if it's an array or not, right? But whatever. We'll put this back. Oh, yeah, I made it a pointer. I'm a fucking idiot. Whoops. Um, 
Okay, so what did we change? We made everything restrict now. This is re restrict by nature of the structure being restrict. So restrict, 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 restrict. Okay. Those are some big ass hints. Can we get any stricter than that? Is there anything else we can add? No, uh, these are restrict. Everything in here is restrict. And the constants of all these are restrict. It's pretty dank. Oh, shit. Maybe. Maybe, oh, shit. I'm not sure yet. Now you're writing C++ like it's Rust. <laughs> um, 51705 minus... 47. Okay, it didn't really do anything. But what's our new inst count? Um, uh, times 4, 9, 6, 5, 10. 1. 1.6 billion instructions a second. You could also compile in memory length as a constant to save a bunch of uh, load on bounce checks. Yeah. Um... Yeah, we, we talked about that earlier. It's here, right? Oh, we're not using it right now at all. Um... Um, this is memory length. So we pass in a ULL here. It's probably better in this case. It's probably pretty good. Um, Self.memory.len, right? Uh, same thing here. Self.memory.len. It's the first arg. Probably should use named arguments at this point. Okay. Let's add this back in. Let's add our perms checks. Vim cannot format for shit right now. Like, what the fuck is the fix to this shit? It, like, literally I've had this problem for a decade using Vim. Fix syntax highlighting. Always rescan it from the start. Yeah, bring it. Holy shit, did that, did that fix it? That might be the most important thing ever. I mean, I don't care about the perf loss. I don't give a shit. It's it's a tiny file. It's not like it's going to take time to parse. <laughs> like what? It's not going to be noticeable. Okay, <laughs> so these are some new good numbers. 1800 that's pretty fucking good cuz now we have bounce checks in 496510 932 million instructions a second uh so a little under a billion a second and we're doing 
1800. The fuck is that number? Oh, yeah, we're doing about 1900 fuzz cases a second, single core. So, we can try with AFL to see what perf AFL gets on the exact same binary. So we can go to um, uh, bin utils GDB x86 get status. Okay. So these are on the same git repo. Bin utils gdb git status uh, git diff bfdio. I think this is still fine. Um, oh, I think I cloned it with that set. Git status git log. Um, then BFD, BFDIO. Oh yeah, I think I had it loading into memory. I disabled that. Uh, git commit am don't load entirely into memory. Okay. Bin utils gdb git pull git log. Right. Exact fucking same thing. Make disk clean. Um, CC. Eh, CC. AFL Clang configure. Make J32. So I'll build this with AFL. And then we'll make sure that our binary is the same version too at the same time. Um, so we'll do a get status, make disk clean, cc. Okay. Um Really? I don't have that in my history anymore. Okay, so what did this do? Um when we configured this, let's just make sure we have everything the same. So we'll say this host. So we where we plan to run this is uh, risk v64 unknown elf, and the targets that we want it to be able to do stuff to will be this target, right? So now we're making. The exact same targeted thing. Okay, I think we just have to build it in different spots to get it to work. Um, Oh, that didn't build either. Apparently, Binutils just really doesn't like building. We're trying. Make obj dump. You piece of shit. Oh, path is blah, path. Hey, 
That's building BFD. I think we'll be fine here. Um, make. That's probably fine. Make obj dump. Um. Okay. There's always a solution to that problem. Uh. C flags is w no error. Okay. We got some fancy shit going on here. Form value, current value. Holy shit, was I not building this with optimizations? Is this not an optimized build? Because I, I did this on the last one? Because I, I remember having to do this. Um, arm RF bin utils GDB get clone bin utils GDB x86 bin utils GDB. Okay, let's uh, let's make sure we got some optimizations going. Dash O2. Oh, is that why I didn't have line information? Because I also fucked that up? Okay. It's probably fine. Gets most of it done, then we do this. Oh, CC has changed on this run. Oh, I didn't F sanitize address. Okay. Um. XD6. It's literally the exact same code. And we'll do a configure. And we'll do CC. Uh, C flags is. Dash O two G, which is the same that we're doing in the other. I guess we technically did W no error. Not that it fucking matters, but these are identical flags. This one's building natively. Cloning back and forth. You like that? <laughs> because then it doesn't have all the intermediate objects, which fucking break. Um, and is there an O2 flag here? Yep, O2. Yeah, I think I built this without optimizations. That, that build. Do I have an object dump? No, I don't. Okay, um... Here we go again, because their make disk clean doesn't actually fucking work. So we just do this. Um... Aren't optimizations default if not specified? Well, it doesn't build if I don't give it W no error. You mean for the other one? Yeah, probably. Uh, let's see. And this doesn't build either. Okay. We'll do single threaded make and maybe it'll work now. Um, LD flags is equal to home pleb binutil fuzzing foo.c. And foo.c has the implementation for some of our um, from some of those missing things. But then host target x86 PC GNU O2G W no error. Okay. 
Um, and this just doesn't work either. Hey, we have an object dump. So we have an object dump here. Uh, we're literally like, these builds are so fucking broken, but you know what? Nah, whatever. Good enough. Okay. How do I get to the, how do you get to the point where I would understand uh, anything which is going on here? It's hard to say. Is that build because make will sing single thread or I'm missing something? No, nah, I just did a different ordering and we're just kind of getting lucky with some RNG on the ordering of it that it kind of works in this state. I don't know. It's kind of just up in the air. We do have O2, which is good. That means the one that we're running is not actually an optimized build. That won't give us more inst per second, or ins uh, instructions per second, but it should. Uh, actually, it'll decrease memory accesses by quite a bit. By a serious amount. Because it won't be touch and stack for every access. This might actually be a pretty major improvement. That feeling when the build's probably going to complete for the risk 5 but it didn't succeed... Oh, there we go. Okay, it failed. Um, we have an object dump. Risk v64 statically linked with debug info. Okay. Um, make der AFL AB test. CP obj dump AFL AB test. Obj dump risk v. All right. Does anyone believe that I'm 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 not being fair here? They're literally the exact same code bases with the same flags, but one's native and one's not. And I built the AFL one with instrumentation for uh, coverage, but not ASAN because it doesn't work with ASAN. AFL latest uh, AB test, obj dump x86 64. Okay, so those are identical. And they're pretty close in size, surprisingly. But yeah, two fresh binaries. So now we will copy, uh, remove object dump. I'm going to copy AFL AB test object dump risk V to here. Read elf L object dump risk V. And then here we have to update it to here. You say they're identical, but if you compare SHA ones, they differ. Shit. You caught me. 10, 9, A4. 9, A4. 10, 9, A4. Okay. Now, we have 1,000, and then this is 2, 0, A, 1, B, 8. 2, 0, A, 1, B, 8. And then loading this, or file offset, 2, 0, A, 1B8, uh, we're loading it to 21B1B8, 20A1B8, okay? 1, 2, 3, 8, 3, 3, 2, and then this is an FD98. Read write, read exec, okay. So those look solid, and now we just have to do a couple more. We have to find Malik's and friends. Obj dump. L D Vim dash. That would explain why the line information wasn't showing up in the other one, because we weren't building it optimized. Holy shit, we might get much more perf because we're doing so so many fewer memory allocations because we don't have an unoptimized thing touching stack every single fucking access. Malik R. Um Okay, and keep in mind, we have ASAN, 
AFL does not in this case. Um, so this is actually, we are doing more work than AFL is doing. Now, it's hard to get AFL to not do any fuzzing, but um, we might just have to see how close we can get these things. So this should now run. And it's not actually going to do any fuzzing. It's going to use... Oh, inputs. I deleted all the inputs. Maybe that's why I was getting so many execs a second. Well, now I'm confused. Unless I called it corpus... Um, so, what do I want to do then? So, is this not doing anything? Because the fuzz inputs is we might have deleted the input folder I create inputs and crashes they're empty directories and then we go and we load it and we have nothing in the initial corpus okay so now that's running that's looking great now we can do inputs um, so let's find an input, user bin fc list lsl 14k input file, user bin fc list to inputs, okay, that's our only input file. Um, and then fuzz input dot len. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to here assert fuzz emu dot fuzz input dot len is equal to, we're just going to make sure it's this one, make sure it's that. Now, we can get AFL running. So we're going to go to AFL AB test, copy the fuzz with emus inputs folder to here, and there's the input, the FC list. And we can do an AFL 2.52B AFL fuzz, and we will do quick and dirty mode because fuck the deterministic steps input directory inputs output outputs and make their outputs okay so output to the output directory and then we have to give it a um dot slash obj dump x86 64 and then what arg am I passing? I am passing dash g. I think that's the correct syntax. So this is now doing the same thing that we're doing. Yep, one input. AFL says that's a big input when I think that's l fucking tiny. And then um, we'll just shift this over to here. And then we'll stop it, because I don't know if it did some weird stuff when it was not rendering. Here we go. So we're getting 17, 1800 a second. It's, this is doing fuzzing, so it might be faster, it might be slower, depending on what it's finding, what it's feeding back. But it looks like about 2000. I don't think we can beat that. I think the number that we, that we were seeing uh, wasn't necessarily fair. Oh shit, this is the same input, we're feeding through the same input, and we're in a risk 5 emulator that's doing ASAN. Holy shit. 
Uh, that was 130. Let's go to 120. Divide it by 10. Ho ho! And AFL's doing corruption, arguably. We're like. <laughs> Divide that by AFL. Let's say they're getting 2200. We're about half the speed of AFL. <laughs> and we're doing ASAN. And AFL is not doing ASAN. If AFL is doing ASAN, I'm pretty sure it would get a. Um, pretty sure if AFL was doing ASAN, it would be about a 50% slowdown. So we can. We can be a little bit more fair, and we can turn off our permission checks. Um, get rid of those permission checks. And these permission checks, right? Now this is making it fair, because we are doing the same thing that AFL is doing because AFL doesn't have byte level permissions and we're disabling that, we're relying on the host's MMU for memory protections. So now we get to see a real number and also AFL's doing mutations. I don't know if that's going to speed it up or slow it down, but we might add mutations. Mutations mean you corrupt files and corrupt files mean you have more errors early, which means you exit out of fuzz cases and have early terminations more frequently. So sometimes corruption can speed you up, but also sometimes it can slow you down because you end up doing feedback on inputs that get you deeper into the program. So it's, it's really hard to guess if it slows it down or speeds it up, but I would say on average it probably speeds it up. So now we are going to compare it without having the permission checks, just commented those out, um, so now we are actually at parity of what AFL is doing in terms of the, the safety and protections and stuff. And let's see. Let's see what we're getting. Come on. Give us well, I'm trying. I should really make this cash. There we go. Here come numbers. We'll wait a little bit. I always like excluding the first few because they're typically warming up caches and stuff. Okay, Python. Now we have this. Minus 101, so to 91 here, divided by 10, 1526. Divide that by AFL's 2200, and we are about 30% slower than AFL with a full emulator. <laughs> Would building it for risk v 64G allow it to be faster as well? Well, right now, we are doing soft multiplies. Um, so we, uh, the, the binary that we're running cannot do multiplies or divides. It, it is literally all, it like calls a function to do multiplies and divides. How much slower is it because of that as well? Well, fuck, I don't know. So we were getting 1526.5. And then let's figure out the new instruction count. So I'm going to put it into trace mode. And uh, we'll disable the JIT. And I'll put it into trace mode. And we can see a trace here from our real run. And this is optimized now. So we can see what our instructions per second is. There's no way it's at the one bill it was at before. No fucking way. Um cat pc trace dot text okay control c wcl 628127 python 628127 times 1526.5 okay yeah we're right at about a bill okay that's pretty solid 
All right, you want to see how slow it is due to um, that? We'll do a PC trace, sort, unique, L, unique, C, count, sort, numerical. Okay, so now we can see where we're spending CPU time in the application. Uh, so I can do obj dump L D obj dump risk V. Control D to exit Python. I always forget. 115 EOO. Okay, we are spending most of our time in memset. 115 DO8. And mem move. 119.234. Stir compare. 123.558. VF printf. Honestly, I'm not seeing much of the uh, div mod um, mol di3. I don't know if it's inlining this anywhere, but uh, 11 vim dash. 111CC. We're not actually spending that much time multiplying and dividing. Now, the other thing is AFL is forking from main. We are not. We are launching the application from the start every single time. So now, let's have it run up until it opens the file. Um, so we're going to run up in the application a little bit more and see if we can get a little bit deeper. Uh, let's turn off tracing and turn on the JIT, and then we'll make a JIT cache in like one minute here, once we get this running. Oh, and let's add some corruption. So we'll just do corrupt this shit. We're still always picking the same base input, and then we corrupt up to, I don't know, 128 bytes, probably fair. So corrupt up to 128 bytes in it. Okay. Now we lift in, and this will, basically, this will run until we hit syscall 1024, which is open. This is kludgy, whatever. Basically, it means we will fork from open, which is, like, pretty early on in main, rather than launching the application from the start every time. When we launch the application from the start every time, it actually has to memset the BSS. So the BSS gets zeroed out during the pre-init, our pre-main phase, so we're technically comparing us launching an application from the start every time and AFL forks from uh, the first instruction in main, or like the prologue in main, effectively. So this is a little bit more fair of a comparison. We probably got a slight advantage here, but not much. So now... Come on. Um. We're also getting new coverage now since we're doing mutation. So it might take a little bit longer for it to warm up. But we can cache all of this stuff and it should be nearly instant. I think we're literally bottlenecking on, on Clang here. Let's, uh, come on. It's an, it's an exotic JIT. This also would get threaded and stuff. I can, there's a bunch of stuff I can do to make this a little bit faster. But the caching is the main thing. You just do it once, and then it caches it based on the source contents. So you don't actually really care, um... If you change something in the way code is emit, okay. So it is running, and we're going to wait for it to stabilize and stop finding new code, because it keeps finding new code. Eventually, eventually, it'll stop compiling shit, because it will stop finding new code, eventually. Ooh, I thought it was there for a second. It's just too good at finding new code. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on.
with corruption that's going to go on for a while? Eh, probably not too much. Pretty basic corruption here. It'll be nice to have a cash. I know. Oh, fuck. I just want like 10 seconds of data. It just won't stop finding new fucking code. I'm not even doing feedback. I'm not even feeding back newly found inputs. Oh my god, I thought that was it. Stop! Stop finding new fucking code! No! Oh, now it found a shit ton, didn't it? Oh, you piece of shit. Woo! Okay, that's a spicy one. That's spicy. Um. How much time was this? One, two, three, four, five seconds. One, two, three, four, five seconds. 2208. We. We, my friends, my good, dear friends, we are at parity with AFL in an emulator that we wrote in three days. <laughs> We're actually faster by a small margin. Okay, now... Um, we need to add caching, and I actually want to try it without corruption. But we'll add the fucking cache. With multiple threads, it'll actually speed up because it'll find those different things in different threads. Uh, so some of the things will get sped up a bit. Disable corruption. I'm curious if disabling corruption will help or hurt us. I know that AFL uses, in this case, very minor corruption because it's doing the, like, couple byte flips um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't do that much mutation. So, thank you so much for the 100 bitty crumbs. 100 bitties crumbs. What was the change that uh, resulted in the perf increase last time? Um, we skipped launching the program from under start every single fuzz case. Um, because AFL forks from main. And we we're relaunching the application from init, including like initial burks and initial heap allocation and creation of the initial heap. Um, so we skip and locales, yep. So this might be even better numbers because we're skipping, um, we're not doing mutation anymore, so this will be more stable in terms of uh, cache accesses. So then we have to make a cache, and then we have to make this thread safe. Okay. Yeah, I think the corruption gave us a little bit of perf. Um, okay. This minus, that was 90, minus 80, divided by 10. Yeah, the corruption actually sped it up. We actually didn't get a massive speed up by skipping uh, the init phase. It's just the corruption makes corrupt things that you then skip past. So, and that's what AFL is doing. I think this is a, it's a more fair comparison to compare with corruption than without if corruption is giving a speed up in this case. We're not necessarily doing identical corruption to AFL, but I'm sure it's pretty similar. Okay. So, we have to implement... Um, so, we got to do this. Okay. 
cppfn cpp this will be cppfn um then here we have cppfn dot to stir unwrap and then we need this uh i guess this is going to be like the linked link fn is equal to lunk just for funsies and then here we can do link fn to stir unwrap so invoke clang so write out the program invoke clang do some object copy shit um and this will take the link fn to stir unwrap i hope it's to stir unwrap and then this is the bin fn to stir unwrap And then this is the um, bin fn. Holy shit, first try. Okay, so now we'll no longer have uh, program.cpp. We'll no longer have, uh, we can get rid of start at text, get status, get add ld script, get status git commit am um, early phase of C++ JIT I just need to get this fucking out of here I just I need to make sure I don't lose this the test crashes inputs this none of this stuff needs to be in I should technically have those excluded but uh, test test.bin so we should no longer see those files getting created. Cool. We're not seeing them. Make dir... Uh, we'll do this. Um, okay. This is JIT cache. Uh, create the JIT cache uh, folder. And then hash the program, uh, the uh, C++ file contents. And this will be uh, self. Dot, I think I have this on corpus. So we got to pass corpus into here. Not a big problem. We can do that. Um, corpus. Corpus. Test JIT corpus. So then I can do corpus dot hasher dot hash. Um, ref program, and then let prog hash is equal to this if. And then let um, cache name is equal to path new jit cache dot join format prog hash o thirty two x prog hash Okay, then if cache name dot exists, return um, OK, standard FS read cache name unwrap uh, expect failed to read file from JIT cache. All right hash the program contents, and then that way if we change the way that we do JIT, it doesn't really matter. Um, OK. 
Okay. Uh, as bytes. So I get the bytes, hash the bytes. Expect field to create JIT cache directory. And then create a file, and then it's just the hash of the program. And then if it exists, then we just read it. So this now should be producing things in the cache. Okay, I should probably save the files. Um, standard fs write jit cache. Um, or cache fn, cache name. Um, cache name. And then this will go directly Uh, well, we should do it kind of more atomically. So we'll do a standard FS move or uh, Rust rename file. Standard FS rename. Rename, and then I'm guessing from and to. So we'll rename from the bin FN to the cache name. Expect field to rename. Um, compiled uh, JIT to cache file. Okay, and this is uh, move the compiled output to the cache. And this should all be thread safe. There we go. What's going on now? We're just uh, we're just getting our um, JIT kind of up and running in a nice clean way, and then this lifting stuff. We'll still see lifting in subsequent runs. Um, we're actually going to change this, and I'm going to change this to um, if it's not in the cache, print compiling um, cache for PC. And I don't know if PC is mute. I don't think it is. Yeah, because I used the queue. So the PC is the original. So compiling cache for this. Um, and then we can print the O32X which is the um, prog hash. Okay. So then I'm going to remove just a random thing from here. Uh, JIT cache. We'll remove 605, this one. Fuck it. Here we go. There we go. Loading 605 and we're running. Yes! And if we run this, we won't compile anything from the cache. And if we remove it again, it'll rebuild it. Boom! Boom! <laughs> and we can see the, the doozies in here now. Honestly, none of these are too massive. But... Like, this cache, this cache isn't costing us fucking any storage. Like, it's pretty cheap. Now I just need to hope I don't have a hash collision in my hash function. But yeah, there we go. So now the fuzz cases per second is an accurate number, because it just fucking starts running right away. This starts faster than the other JIT, because we just cache fucking everything. I would say this is now usable... I'm spending 39% of my time resetting. No way.
Really? Really? Um, let me change the block size. So this is a larger block size, which will favor... Ah, yep. These are new because the block size changed. And the block size is used as part of the divide uh, for figuring out which block to use. Which makes sense. Like, oh, 0% of the VM is fine. We don't have the stats for that right now. We're not tracking it. Um, yeah, this works. We changed something that affected the jitted code, and it's recaching shit, because it's new. <laughs> so fucking cool, dude. So fucking cool. It fucking works. It fucking works. And then here we go. Wow, look at the reset times. They got really bad. And that hit or, hurt our ficus. Okay, sweet. Well, good thing this is a tunable number. Let's put it to 32. Actually, 64. Nah, 32. Fuck it. I don't care. Do whatever I want. What hash function are you using? Full cache, my own hash. Can you show the JIT cache code again? Yeah, we basically, we hash the C++ code. We then write the, we create a file with that, or we look at a path for it. So in JIT cache slash the hash, we check if it exists. If it exists, we read the file and we return it out. Otherwise, we go create temporary file names, write out the program to disk, Call Clang on the program, uh, convert the elf to a binary, rename the file, and now it's in the cache in the cache name location, and then a subsequent lookup would just hit this path, and it would skip the entire build process. And as we saw, we're not bottlenecking on reading things from the cache. It's just not even remotely affecting perf. Okay, now we're we getting crashes because of that. What would change here? Why would this be wrong? Okay. Um, do I hard code something? Look at that perf though, yeah. I had no fucking idea. Um, a dirty bitmap, get that. Hash collision, the really fucking unlikely. Possible, extraordinarily unlikely. And I don't think that run could have had a hash collision, actually. Um, set the length. At the end, update the length to the new dirty index. Okay, MMU is who allocates it. Size divided by that. Huh. 
Um, okay, we can put this on. This is this is what we want. That's the good the good stuff right here. Assert that uh, when we reset after a fork, it's identical, and it's not. Sweet. Um, so this is telling us that either we're not resetting correctly. Um, It means we're either not setting the dirty bits correctly, or we're not resetting correctly. Um, if that is zero, stuff the block in the dirty index. Here we have the block. The block comes from dirty block size which is the last format string. I agree with that. I'm not setting the dirty bit. I'm not. Holy shit. Rip my perf. Now, what would that cause, though? Dude, that means I was setting to that list every time, and my resets were so expensive due to that. Holy fuck. You're my hero, 1F9. Holy shit, dude. If it's zero... Update the dirty index and set that. Now, is that the reason why it's crashing? I'm not sure. Um, that definitely would... I think that would cause too many things to end up in there. I don't know if that would actually cause an issue. I think we'd just do duplicate resets. Also increasing the index on every store? Yes. So we could have actually crashed. Maybe we actually caused real memory corruption. Maybe we went out of bounds and actually caused corruption. Because we don't bounds check the index. We imply that the index can never go out of bounds because by the time the dirty bitmap is full, um, the dirty, like, if that makes sense, right? It's impossible for a dirty bit to be clear if it's in bounds. This should be a massive perf increase. Yeah, I was always going down the slow path. Like, this is pretty nuts. And it also means the now the compiler can reason about this and see that this was set on a certain address and not do it in another iteration of a loop or something or on like a local variable. Now it's still not working, and I don't I don't understand why. That's obviously a big issue. Um, so let's let's disable the uh, early run up, right? Let's have it run from the start every time. It's going to get a couple more JIT blocks, but the rest should be cached. Like, a large amount of this should be cached still, I think. Yeah. A hash collision would explain it. Um, okay, so we have a problem there. Now, let's try it with only emulation. And if it repros, then it's like a reset problem and not a reporting problem. Fuck. Fuck. So then this means something is wrong here. Is this one of the restrict? Is this a no alias? Um, uh, oops, uh, rm jitcache star. And I'm just going to have the malloc breakpoints return exit. Basically, I'm going to make it exit very early to kind of tighten down the case. Um, so this is a much tighter fuzz case. Okay. Okay, why do I have that much reset time? That seems off.
Oh, we probably it's probably just this block size is too small. Like 256 would be better. But 256 I don't think is going to have the crash. Um still massive reset time. Okay. Can't wait to figure out what this bug is. Um Dirty list clear, okay. Uh, Prince, dirty list is this. Um, self dot dirty list dot len. Oh, the reset time is slow because we're doing the compare. We're doing this assertion. We're checking that everything is identical for all bytes in memory. Um, that's why it's slow. I've been eating? Yeah, I ate a couple times. Okay. The first one is zero, because the first reset isn't resetting anything. And then dirty list is 991. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Now, the, the, dirty list is 516. Okay. Oh, and this isn't having the problems, though. Um, block is address divided by the dirty block size. The index is block divided by 64. The bit is 1... Shift to the left. Bingo. Fuck this language. Um, it was nine ninety one in the first one, right? When I'm running the emulator, it's 991. Okay. Fuck. Jesus Christ, this fucking language, dude. How? <laughs> that was brutal. But, dude, the dirty bitmap catch is nuts that we weren't setting that bit. Are you fucking kidding me? Um, uh, you guys ready to see some perf? Uh, let's try like 128 to start. Get that JIT enabled. Get everything going here. Get this running initially. Get the JIT cache uh, or whatever the fuck I changed here. Assert here and reset turn this off okay well the the perf the perf might get hurt potentially what's going on here well what's going on here Um, what? What? I'm confused. What did I break? Dirty list is zero. Okay, turn this off. Oh, because this is stopping early. Yeah, yeah, it's not actually, yeah, okay. Because we put this in, so it was stopping early. Holy shit. So now, dirty list should be something. We'll build some caches, not too many. I guess this is just running now. Turn off asserts. Yeah, I know. I'm going to keep them in there for a second. 
And what size are we using on this? So it's hard to say what a good dirty block size is going to be. Have you threaded this yet? Nope. I like edging. So we have that, we have the assertions turned off, and everything should be good here. We should have a dirty list of some, some length. We have the assertions in here, so this will catch if we don't reset fully, um, which is pretty important. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, um, and resets look like they're perfect. We're not having any problems. So let's, I kind of want to comment that out to see what we get in that case, but um, let's go and make sure we get identical results to that dirty list when we have the JIT disabled. So no JIT this time, 912. Fuck. Fuck. Why? Why? What if it's between two blocks? Yeah, that could potentially happen because we don't check the alignment, but um, risk five should never have unaligned accesses. Fuck. I mean, does it matter if the assertions are passing? Because it's clearly resetting them. Right? The assertions pass, which means everything's getting reset. Maybe there's dupes in the... Uh... Maybe we set permissions differently during some part of the emulator. I mean, we, we shouldn't. I want them to be in parallel, but anyways, let's, um, let's turn this prints off. Okay, so now we get new numbers. Yeah, 2,500 fuzz cases a second. Are we doing corruption? Are we doing corruption? Cause I don't think we are. No, we are not. Yeah, now we're gonna hit more shit cause we're doing corruption. But yeah, I should add an alignment check on the both the JIT and the emulators. Cause technically I allow, I allow unaligned accesses when they're technically uh, faults. Okay. I don't know how many things here are getting We're starting to get some cases in. That cash, though. That's a good cash. Reset time looks pretty low. Basically, if reset is over 1%, we should change the block size. That would be my guess. Um, come on. It's getting there. Luckily, we have a cache this time. <laughs> we just keep finding so many new edges, you know? Just got some good code exploring here.
Is it running? It almost feels like there's feedback due to that avalanche, but I think that's just hitting one new path. Okay, almost there. Oh my god. When will it end? I don't think this is hindering performance too much anymore. Um... Okay, let's reset it. Here we go. So, yeah, we'll hit some new shit here and there. Yeah, I guess we want to let that run a little bit more. Um, let's go get the VM time while we let that cache warm up. We are doing 5% reset time, which means the block size might be a little bit large or small. 5% um, reset isn't terrible. But it's not the most amazing thing in the world. Um, okay, what are we doing here? What are we doing? We're adding, um, as generate blocks, run JIT, VM cycles. Okay, and VM cycles is just this. Let let it is already TSC. JIT cycles plus equals already TSC minus it. I might have to deref that. Yeah, I do. Wait. Oh, VM cycles. VM cycles. Yep, and we got deref it. Okay, so basically, we count all of this time as in the VM, so that's the function lookup and uh, all that, which is pretty cheap. 83% VM time, not bad. 5%, and then another like 10% is unaccounted for. Uh, likely, the unaccounted uh, performance is probably in our uh, allocator handler because we put breakpoints on all the allocators and we handle allocations ourselves uh, with soft allocations. What's your PFP? What do you mean by PFP? But yeah, I mean, this is pretty good. So what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this perf? Um, so we can, we're can we getting about 2,700 fuzz cases a second, single core with a RISC-V emulator, and, or 2,800 now. Um, and AFL can get uh, with the exact same input, with the exact same build, exact same code. AFL is natively getting in the 2,000 region, maybe 2,200 when it, when it warms up. So we're faster than AFL with a RISC-V emulator? Sounds pretty fucking good to me. Sounds pretty fucking good to me. <laughs> we're faster than AFL with an emulator. Woo, lad! Why am I not surprised? Okay, now here's the real magic. Fuck, I'm so scared. I'm so fucking scared. I don't know what that number is, to be honest. How much space did I allocate? Did I allocate a lot of space for these? Print. Somewhere I'm printing some shit. Oh, I print a random number. I see. When the thread starts. Okay, so we're gonna, um... Let's see if we can trim down some of the memory size for this. 32 megs should be enough. 
Probably 16 megs. How big's the binary? 11 megs for the binary? Fuck me. Is it that much when loaded, though? Um... Mm. Strip G ob dump risk V. That's better. It's not amazing, but it's better. Does that actually change anything about the load though? FD98, FD98, 8332, 2A1B8. No, that didn't change anything about the load size. Okay. So we have no reason to have the stripped version. And then 16 megs. Ah, 16 megs is probably fine. I should probably have the cores like. Oh, I changed the memory size. I changed the memory size. It makes sense that they're compiling the same blocks. Um, I should probably put a lock on them so they don't compete. Um, but I don't care too much. <laughs> but yeah, uh, let's add that quick. So remove the JIT cache because we changed the program size. So let's set it to 32 megs just so, because uh, the JIT does take a while. Um, okay, and then... How do I want to do this? I think here would be a good place for a mutex. Uh, static. Active. Um, list of active uh, cache. Um, of active compile jobs. And then active... Something like this. Right, active um, jobs is a mutex B tree set containing U128, so hashes is mutex new. And standard sync mutex. So here we'll say list of active compile jobs or list of compile jobs. And then here we can say, um, how do I want to do this? I want to like wait on an object or something. Should I spawn a thread and then join it? Cause I can set it. I can set the prog hash, but how do I? How do I have the threads wait for it to be done? Um. Problem is, I need like a better way of signaling than just a condition variable. I mean, I can just loop. So I could. I could literally do this um let's mute jobs is active jobs.lock could just wrap the whole block in a mutex so i want to gate them based on what they're doing because eventually they'll be fuzzing and they'll be hitting unique code 
Like, they'll be hitting new blocks with their own inputs. For the initial stuff, yes. But eventually, they'll be hitting their own unique stuff where they genuinely will have things that they're not, um, there's not contention for. So I do want an ability to limit them per, per block. So lock.unwrap. And then here I can do um, jobs.insert um, prog hash. And I can say, uh, just return this. Let um, first is equal to this. Uh, check if we're the first core to try to compile this. Um, and we can do the JIT cache shit afterwards. So. Hash the C++ contents. Create the JIT cache folder. Um, create the cache name. So we prog hash first. Then we don't hit compiling until this phase. And then what we do here is um, if not first while cache name dot exists while it doesn't exist standard sleep uh, thread sleep duration from millies this is kind of ass but like eh eh Okay, if we aren't the first to access the cache, uh, idle loop until the first person has compiled the code. And then this is um, if the cache exists, um, read the cache. Going to kernel every 10 milliseconds. It's not that big of a deal. Fine, 100. I also don't want cores to just go sleeping forever. Mutex new, uh, or we can just do default default. Uh, standard thread duration, okay. Hundred millis is fine. Hundred millis is pretty fucking quiet. Um. Okay. Can I not make a mutex in a static? Um. Really? I'm pretty sure I can. I think it's just default I can't do. Oh, B tree set's not stable as a const fn? Well, fuck you. Thoughts, 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 thoughts. We don't need asm anymore. Out with one, in with new. Nah, fuck you. Okay. Um. Fucking bullshit. Um, I could wrap a nun in here. If jobs is none, jobs is some, dear if jobs is some. B tree set new. I don't think I actually need the DRF there, but whatever. 
Uh, as mute, unwrap. What? Fuck you. Uh, we can throw it in the corpus. Active compile jobs. Uh, compile jobs. Mutex. B tree set. U128. Use standard collections, B tree sets. Corpus dot compile jobs. Corpus dot compile jobs. Okay, yep. And then corpus. Here, compile jobs is default, default. We did it. And then we're not using mutex, so let's get rid of some of these. Trans table. Bye bye. Compile JIT. Bye bye. Bye bye. Compile JIT. Compile a uh, JIT function for PC until all paths lead to indirect jumps or calls. Make this pub. Ten ninety one. Mm -hmm. Bingo, no warnings or errors. Let's uh, remove the JIT cache, clear, we're running threaded, cool. So now, they're kind of waiting on whoever's building it. And then it'll eventually speed up once there, once there starts to be some divergence, we'll actually get some parallelization, uh, and we'll get multiple compile jobs happening. Um... Thanks for all the follows, everyone. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, see, now it, now it zooms, right? So now the threads can actually compile in parallel for a lot of the code, right? So we saw that like flying. So now it looks like we're pretty active. And basically, now when it hit blo hits blocks, they're very likely unique to that, um, to that core, right? Could you also paralyze the queue itself? Well, the problem is I can't... I don't actually know what's queued, right? I can't execute anything until the JIT's been lifted. Um, and so there's not much I can do, if that makes sense, right? If, if I put them in a queue, I'm just going to have to block in the thread until the queue handles them anyways. Um, you, I can't continue execution. In theory, I could jump to emulation. I could, like go emulate for a while while things are compiling and then only pull them in once they're compiled and then I could have threads compiling and emulation could kick off new JITs which actually would maybe be a really good idea because then on a single thread when a JIT miss occurs it would go 
basically it would emulate like the JIT would. Although I... You see what I'm saying? It might be hard to find the right JIT entry points. Yeah, I would have to emulate it in the same way. Okay. This looks good. Uh, let's restart it so we can just see the perf. It's looking pretty good. Good VM time. 5% reset time. Looks pretty solid. 205, 208,000 fuzz cases a second and climbing. <laughs> and then those compiling caches don't really matter anymore because they're, it's like one of the 192 threads happens to compile for a couple milliseconds. whoop de doo Once the cache is up, the cache is up. Yeah. But I would have to have emulation run in the same way that JIT does, and it would know, like, the same things to uh, call on. Can you add a cases per second in the stats output? That's this right here. Fuzz cases per second. 230,000. <laughs> it's pretty fucking good. 230,000 fuzz kisses a second. <laughs> yep, and AFL doesn't scale with cores. So we're arguably, we're arguably, AFL gets what? What does AFL get? 2,000 a second? So we're, yeah, we're about uh, like 2,200 a second. Yeah, we're about... I'd, I'd say we're probably about uh, about 100x faster than AFL at this point. <laughs> um, we need to add code coverage. Um, crashes should work. Yeah, it's pretty fucking good. So we need to figure out how I want to implement coverage. Um, is this with corruption turned on? Yeah, corruption is on. their plan to make it into a tool yeah i mean it kind of is i don't know it's hard to say if, if enough people can build stuff for risk five and compile in this environment and fuzz in this environment maybe but i don't think it's very realistic now if i wrote a, a linux emulator rather than this like weird subset of linux emulator um and basically wrote like a like the equivalent of the QMU user stuff, which is like 6,000 lines of code, then I would say, yeah, it's probably a pretty... You could basically just build literally anything for Risk v for Linux and run it in this. As long as you can statically compile it and build it with the Risk v compiler, um, you could just fuzz it in this. So, I don't know how I want to tackle code coverage. Um... Like, I don't know how to best handle code coverage. I could have a bitmap where I just flip a bit in the bitmap. Um, basically, I, I could do it at the start of every instruction. I could set a bit in a bitmap. Uh, and if the bit wasn't set before, then I can report that coverage. The question is, will that be a massive slowdown? Because th that would be a, basically a conditional every instruction. Um, I don't know. It's like hard to say. It's really hard to say. I could also do it per block.
the proof might actually not be that bad for it, to be honest. It's probably not that bad. It's probably bad, but it's probably not that bad. If you see what I'm saying. Um... What else? Um, hmm. What else could I do? Like, how would I do it block level? It's kind of a hard problem. So I could have it at the start of all the JITs. I could have it only on branches. I could basically, I could do it only on, like, taken branches if I really want to narrow it down. I think that's fine. Right? Is there any penalty for doing that? If I only do it on taken conditional branches, is that the same as doing it on all branches and I think the answer is yes maybe not I could just do it on all branches right on taking branches or coverage but Um, I don't know. I actually don't know if an, if an untaken branch is, is coverage. Um, because is it possible to not take a branch without taking a different branch? So you'd go through... And hey, here's the here I'm struggling to describe it, but here's the, here's the weird fucking thing. If the branch is untaken, if the branch is untaken and is covered and we don't record it because it's a non-taken branch then we already have an input that causes that path right in the simple case let's say because if we if we already got there we have an input that got us there Unless, let's say, a bit changed. Yeah, I think in the fall-through case, it's possible. Um. Okay. So... I think there is an edge case in that, which is if you flip a bit and by default it takes the branch case, which means we've recorded the branch case's coverage, and then we flip a bit that causes us to take the non-branch case. Now, if the non-branch case branches directly back unconditionally into the location that the other one falls into then I think we miss it I think but the branch to merge back in would have to be taken or unconditional, and I'm okay with adding coverage on unconditional. If I add coverage on unconditional branches and on taken branches, 
then it is impossible for an untaken branch to not end up branching back and causing coverage to get hit. Right? Now, I should probably just do edges. I should just do a, a hash of the previous, the, the, um, the source and the destination of all branches. Branches are rare. Branches are plenty rare that I can just, every single time I have a branch, I can do a hash and make an edge coverage. And I think that's what I should do. Um... I think that's what I'll do. Um, so I'll make a bitmap and then I'll hash the edges somehow. Somehow I'll hash them. I think if I take the previous edge, if I take the source and XOR that with a random number, and then XOR that with the destination XOR with a random number, I feel like that should be a decent mixture. Maybe do some shuffles in there. Maybe do a, maybe do a, um, mm. cause I need to index a table. And if I'm indexing a table, then Um, hmm. I mean, I can probably do... Uh... What's like a really good cheap ass hash? I can XOR I can XOR the byte swapped targets together. But I need to shift them around because I need to get some of the information. I mean I can just do target. I can do branch target only. But edges are good. Edges are more information because they, they help with indirect calls. Like a call to memcopy from a different location is considered different coverage. Now, how do you get to that memcopy call without... Like, do edges matter? They only matter for indirect branches. Because a direct branch or a conditional branch, you would... Even if you jump to memcopy, you would still have unique code at the location where you went. So only unconditional branches, or only indirect branches, could previously be covered and then hit a new edge and not.